You as a traffic police officer neglecting their duties every day. You turn a blind eye to those who ride without helmets. You catch a dozen law-abiding pedestrians who cross on green lights every day. While your teammates work hard to direct traffic, you, on the other hand, are solely focused on law-abiding citizens. The more innocent they appear, the more they become your targets. All because you have the eyes to see good and evil. With one glance, you can see all the sins others have committed. You were originally a top graduate aspiring to be a detective. But due to offending the powerful, you were forced to be demoted to the traffic police team. However, when you stand at the bustling intersection on duty, you were dumbfounded. Because various types of information appeared over the heads of everyone around you. Lu Ruyan, Sin Value 5. Li Hao, Sin Value 0. Zhang Xiaodong, Sin Value 1. However, at first glance, none of the Sin Values exceed 5 points. Based on your understanding, those rated by the system with a Sin Value of 5 or below are basically those who have committed minor mistakes, not even worthy of criticism or education. You nodded with some relief. The fact proves that most of the ordinary people are law-abiding citizens. However, at that moment, your gaze suddenly focused and locked onto two figures. The two individuals were a man and a woman, walking side by side. The man wore a duckbill cap, had a lean figure, and sharp eyes. The girl, however, looked a little pale, with a hint of fear and unease in her eyes. A thought flashed through your mind, and you immediately activated your moral compass. Suddenly, the man's information appeared, Chen Zichao, Guilt Index 106, charged with kidnapping and murder. Currently holding the victim's child, preparing to escape. Special alert, danger level 3 stars. Seeing this, you immediately tensed up. At this point, the distance between both sides kept getting closer. The little girl noticed you, and tears immediately welled up in her eyes. She slightly opened her mouth and silently said two words, save me. You, however, seemed to have not noticed her at all. You put the whistle hanging from your chest into your mouth and blew it urgently. Hurry up, the red light is coming soon, you still looked like you were directing the flow of people. But no one knew that you were extremely nervous at this moment. The kidnapper and murderer came closer again, and was now less than 5 meters away from you. Both sides were about to pass by each other. You glanced at the little girl without looking directly, then continued to urge the people behind with a few words. Both sides finally brushed past each other. And in that instant, you saw the kidnapper, one hand in the right pocket, seemingly holding something inside, aimed at the girl's lower back. You suddenly restrained your mind upon realizing there was a weapon. Was it a knife or a gun? At this point, you already had the intention to retreat. But if we let the other party leave, the little girl will undoubtedly be in more danger. The situation is extremely urgent, and in an instant, you made a decision. When you brushed past the criminal, your eyes were wild. Suddenly used your body to push the girl away. At the same time, you reached out and grabbed the right arm of the kidnapper. Then suddenly leaned back and fiercely butted the other person's head with your own. Click, you twisted the other person's arm behind their back and forcefully pushed them towards the ground. In less than two seconds, you had the criminal on the ground. The surrounding crowd was stunned by this scene, not understanding why you, a traffic police officer, suddenly started fighting. Some people also noticed the girl who was knocked down and immediately went to help her up. You had a slight headache, and your eyes were extremely serious. The kidnapper's hand tightly gripped a sharp boning knife, the scarred handle wrapped in adhesive tape, not easy to remove. Seeing this scene, you couldn't help but be shocked, truly a desperado. At this time, Captain Jiaobuodong had already noticed the commotion and immediately ran over. But when he pushed through the crowd, he was dumbfounded, especially when he saw. The other person's boning knife wrapped in adhesive tape, his eyes filled with seriousness. You don't even look up, using all your strength to control the suspect, Zhao, said. Quickly take his knife away. Upon hearing this, Zhao Guodong immediately bent down and struggled to take the knife away. Wait, don't move. Let me make a call first. After saying this, he dialed a number. Hello, Lao Su, send someone over immediately. We've caught a suspect who committed a public assault. Hurry up and come over. Wait, what's going on? Your traffic police caught someone committing an assault in public, the person on the phone said. A middle-aged policeman furrowed his brow in surprise. His name is Su Qingshan. He and Zhao Guodong were high school classmates and he is now the director of the Longhua Road Police Station. Okay, I'll bring people over right now. After hanging up, Su Qingshan immediately set off with the police. After Zhao Guodong hung up the phone, his heart was filled with mixed feelings. This kid, he's clearly a traffic cop, why is he doing the work of a detective? Soon, Su Qingshan and his team arrived at the scene. At this moment, you are still holding onto the kidnapper tightly. Uncle, he killed my dad, my dad, the little girl next to her had a look of despair on her face. 
Seeing this scene, Su Qingshan immediately ordered the two police officers behind him to handcuff the person. Lao Zhao, what's going on? He shouted at Zhao Guodong. The latter pointed to the little girl and said he is the victim, but has been greatly frightened. Take him back and arrange for some psychological counseling. Xing Xuxian nodded and immediately arranged for a female police officer. But the little girl stood timidly by your side, holding onto your sleeve tightly. I'm not leaving. I want to stay with my brother. I'm not going anywhere. The sudden turn of events caught everyone off guard. Especially you, don't understand when you became his reliance. The little girl is obedient. Brother is still working. You go to the police station with this lady, explain what happened, and rest assured, I'll come to see you after I finish my work. Can only patiently comfort brother. The little girl, with tear streaks on her face, looked at you without deceit. You smiled and nodded, I'm not lying. I am a police officer. Okay, then I'll go with this lady. The little girl nodded and returned to the female police officer's side. When the little girl was taken to the police car, Su Qingshan then asked, what exactly happened? Zhao Buodong looked at you, the implication was clear, you explain. When I was on duty just now, I saw this little girl calling for help. I felt something was amiss, but you calmly gave the most reasonable explanation. Zhao Buodong was so alarmed by what he heard. Even Su Qingshan felt his blood boiling, this kid is really not afraid of death. What if the other party is hiding a gun instead of a knife, just thinking about it is scary. Zhao Guodong couldn't help but step forward and give you a punch to check. Don't worry, Captain Zhao, I'm fine, you said with a smile. But before you could finish speaking, you were interrupted. You little rascal, you're really lucky, Zhao Guodong exclaimed in shock. Then he pulled up your reflector in one go. You hesitated, and looked down, and found that the clothes had been slashed horizontally, a foot long, but the police uniform inside was not pierced. But even so, it still scared you into a cold sweat. Su Qingshan's face was also full of surprise. In an instant, that was a sharp bone-cutting knife. It could easily cut even tendons. It's easy to slash open the belly. He looked deeply at you and said, Bro, do you want to come to our police station? If you are willing, I will report to the higher-ups now. When you heard this, it's not true that you weren't moved. After all, you studied criminal investigation. But you are not willing to leave like this, no matter who is suppressing you. You must seek justice. And if you agree now, you may not be able to transfer, but instead will involve Su Qingshan. So it's not the right time yet. You made a decision in your heart, immediately shook your head and said, Sorry, the organization arranged for me to be in the traffic police team, so I will be in the traffic police team. I won't go anywhere. Su Qingshan was stunned. He never expected you to refuse. Even Zhao Buadong was stunned. Su Qingshan started to dig into his people and he didn't stop him because you showed him with your actions that you are cut out for criminal investigation. But who would have thought that you would actually refuse? It's just that tone of refusal, seemingly hiding a hint of anger. Why did Zhao Buodong and Su Qingshan almost speak at the same time? You smiled and said, why so many whys? The instructors at the police academy taught us to strictly obey orders from superiors. Su Qingshan noticed something fishy and moved his mouth slightly. In the end, he didn't speak again. Zhao Guodong's expression changed, and he stopped asking questions. The more you are like this, the more they like you. At this point, they are already thinking of finding some connections to investigate. What on earth happened? Then Su Qingshan left with his people. Next, you and Zhao Guodong continue to carry out traffic control and traffic guidance tasks. Zhao Guodong thought, I should be able to get through today safely. But who would have thought that in less than 10 minutes, you caught another canned food? Several cell phones were found on the person as well as a considerable amount of cash and jewelry. Oh man, Zhao Guodong felt it was necessary to tell you what our police are for, but he didn't get a chance to say it. About seven or eight minutes later, you made your move again. The guy caught this time is suspected of multiple provocations, troublemaking, and assault cases, all of which are probably over five years. One after another, here comes another one. It wasn't until 10 o'clock in the morning that, at Zhao Guodong's invitation, you finally stopped working, still feeling reluctant. The previous community police officer, somewhat numb, looked at this scene. You caught eight people in one morning. Who on earth are you? Not even a criminal investigation expert is this amazing. You, on the other hand, had a big smile on your face, tapping your own achievement. Congratulations, the host has captured criminals, accumulating 1,000 points, and can participate in special skill draws. Hearing the voice of the system in your mind, you unhesitatingly gave the command to the system to open the blind box. Instantly, a beam of light appeared on the system interface. Congratulations, the host has obtained the brand new skill King of Close Combat, an ultra-powerful close combat fighting ability that gives the host absolute power to crush criminals. 
Then, countless combat scenes suddenly appeared in your mind. At the same time, you also sensed that your strength was increasing. The feeling of being overpowered is really awesome. You clenched your fists, feeling the earth-shattering change within yourself at this moment. Even if those world champion fighters stood in front of you, they might not fare well. Ancestors, can we go back? Suddenly, Zhao Guodong's voice came from beside me. You turned your head awkwardly to look. At this moment, the captain's face was full of sorrow. The morning rush hour was delayed for nearly an hour. The deputy director received a lot of complaints. I already called and scolded him. To be honest, it's a bit unfair. He looked deeply at you and suddenly felt that his subordinates were too outstanding. It's not a good thing either. The two quickly got into the car and left the Long Hua Road intersection. Meanwhile, in the traffic police squadron, Deputy Captain Lu Zhaozheng, who had already returned, and a group of his subordinates were watching the video. Each of their faces showed shock. Deputy, are you sure this kid is the new recruit in our team? Pointing at the figure on the phone with a shocked face. The video of you subduing the kidnapper and murderer this morning has gone viral online. Various headlines are spreading rapidly. The strongest traffic police in history is born, murderer captured, traffic police hero, brave and fearless, traffic police are also police. You get rewarded when something happens. In a moment, you became the most handsome traffic police officer, the spokesperson for the entire traffic police force. But at this moment, you didn't know that you would become famous. Instead, you came with Zhao Guodong to the Longhua Road police station in the Dachiao district. You promised that girl to visit him after the task was over. The moment that little girl laid eyes on you, she immediately ran into your arms. Brother, father has been killed, grandpa has no one left, she sobbed, her crying echoing like blood. Everyone in the reception room fell silent. You let out a sigh and patted the little girl's back. You waited until the crying gradually subsided. Before you knew it, the little girl fell asleep in your arms. Then, you and Zhao Guodong went together to the office of Director Su Qingshan. Director Su Qingshan personally brewed a cup of good tea. Xiao Su, I have already reported to the higher-ups about the case of the street murder and put in a good word for you. In addition, I have also applied for a cash bonus for you. Thank you, and you didn't refuse. It just so happens that I'm short of money myself. I should be thanking you. If it weren't for you restraining that maniac, all of us at Longhua Police Station will be disciplined. It would have been fine if it hadn't happened, but since it did, we have to handle it. Traffic police are also police, responsible for protecting the lives and property of the people. Well said, Su Qingshan slapped his thigh and continued, Oh, by the way, Xiao Su, you're famous now. Now the entire internet is filled with news about you. Even if there's a hidden hand behind you, they won't be able to suppress your determination. After saying this, he looked at me with a pleasing expression. Xiao Su, if you resign from the traffic police department at that time, come to me right away, and I will reserve the position of deputy for you. Upon hearing this, Zhao Guodong immediately became anxious, Su Qingshan, that's enough. Poaching in front of me. Upon hearing this, you immediately felt something was wrong. If everyone knew about it, wouldn't all the criminals avoid you? Then how can we catch people and earn points? But there's no way. You don't have the ability to influence public opinion. You can't influence public opinion, but someone has that ability. The office of the deputy principal of the police school. Lin Zhengha had a gloomy expression. As the deputy head of the police school himself, my daughter was actually rejected by a graduate without any background. I definitely cannot let such an ignorant guy have a chance to turn things around, but just as he was about to make a move, Principal Tang Nian suddenly burst into the office, his face full of anger, Lao Lin, what's going on? How could Su Lin be at the traffic police team? Give me an explanation. He only just found out from the video on the internet. He knows about you. You performed extremely well in school, with excellent grades in all subjects, and even received a third-class merit during your time at school. Why would such a talent go to the traffic police team? When Lin Jingha saw him, Tang Yan immediately stood up and said, Principal Tang, why did you come in person? Aren't you in the sanatorium? Tang Yan waved his hand at Lin Jingha, don't try to fool me. I won't bring up those old matters, but Su Lin, you must give me an explanation for this matter. When Lin Jingha heard this, he didn't show any signs of nervousness. Instead, he raised a slight smile and said, Principal Tang, what kind of explanation do you want? His tone still carried a hint of disdain. Then he continued, By the way, regarding the previous matter with the young master, I am currently finding people to resolve it. I believe it won't take long before he has no troubles at all. Two lives, Zs. If we don't handle this properly, he might end up being shot if caught. Upon hearing this, Tang Nian's face changed drastically. After a while, he still didn't curse. He slumped onto the sofa in despair. Forget it. 
I don't care anymore. You deal with it yourself. As Tang Yin spoke, he walked outside. In reality, his authority had long been usurped by Lin Zhengha. Because his son caused a car accident that resulted in the death of two people and then fled the scene. Later, fearing that the other person would wake up and accuse him, he went back and ran over them again. The level of depravity was simply outrageous. But just as he was taking his son to surrender, Lin Jingha found out. This guy immediately said he could help them resolve it. From that moment on, he was constantly coerced. Finally, he had no choice but to claim illness and go on sick leave, out of sight, out of mind. As soon as Tang Yan left, Lin Jingha immediately picked up the phone on the table and said, Hello, Mayor Li. I'm Lin Jingha. Here's the situation. Then, in less than 10 minutes, all the video messages about you on the internet disappeared. In the traffic police office, Lu Zhao and his subordinates were discussing the video of you, when suddenly the video went offline. They couldn't find the deputy chief no matter how hard they tried. What's going on? One of the traffic police officers asked with wide eyes. Wen Yen, Lu Zhao thought for a moment and replied, it should be the higher-ups taking action. After all, the case involving Su Lin is not trivial. What if their relatives and friends seek revenge? It has to be said that Lin Zhang and their reasoning is indeed logical and compelling, making it hard to refuse. Even Lu Zhao had the same thought. But you are completely indifferent to these, and lowering your exposure actually helps with your plan to catch thieves and advance. In the afternoon, after finishing lunch, you immediately arrived at the informant location. You stood at the intersection, continuously scanning the pedestrians with your gaze. Unconsciously, you activated the eye of good and evil. Good, the good and evil value has increased by three points. Praising the good and evil value for one or two hundred years. Good and evil value 47, the total amount involved in the theft case is 540,000 yuan. Your gaze hardened, feeling like you were about to get distracted from your work again. You walked over quickly. In the panic-stricken eyes of the other person, you directly reached out and grabbed the other person's arm. After a series of moves, that little thief was pressed down to the ground. The surrounding crowd was a bit confused. You searched the little thief and found nearly 20 mobile phones on him. Yang Wei twitched his mouth and said to you, Su Lin, with so many onlookers, don't you think the traffic is getting more congested? Wen Yen, you smirked and said, Captain Yang is a sly one, we have to catch him. You won. Yang Wei gave a thumbs up, then took out the police communicator to contact. Because the area you are on duty this time belongs to the jurisdiction of the Zhanxian police station. So, the one who rushed over was Zhang Wangue, the director of the Zhanxian police station, and his police brothers. Captain Zhao Buadong also arrived at the scene later. At this time, there were already three criminals squatting at the intersection checkpoint. He looked at Zhang Wangue helplessly and said, I'll leave it to you, you take them back. We need to direct the traffic at the scene. With so many onlookers, I'm afraid there will be trouble. Okay, thank you, Captain Zhao, Zhang Wangue said. Then he looked at you again and said, Comrade Xiao Su did a good job. I'll apply for a bonus for you later. Thank you, Director Zhang, you said with a smile and nodded. Then Zhang Wangue prepared to leave. But before leaving, he was stopped by Zhao Buadong, Director Zhang, why don't you send a car? And send two more police officers. What do you mean? Zhang Wangue was a little puzzled. It's nothing. It's just that this kid in our team is very capable. You don't know. He already caught eight people at the no. Two subway station on Longhua Street this morning. Really? When this was said, Zhang Wangue was startled. He can catch so many? What is he doing at the traffic police station? Believe in my policy, said Zhao Guodong. Then I'll send a car to pick you up. It will be parked at the intersection behind, said Zhang Wangue. Did you take the person away? After 10 minutes, a police car stopped at the front intersection. Two plainclothes police officers got out of the car. One of them, upon seeing you, immediately ran over with a happy face, Su Lin, what are you doing here? You, who were scanning the crowd, were suddenly startled by the voice behind you. Seeing that it was your police academy classmate Zhang Changning, you couldn't help but smile, on duty, Lao Zhang? You're at the police station in front of the station. Yes, today is my first day at work. Zhang Chao nodded, somewhat excitedly, Lao Su, you've arrived. I heard from our station chief that a very skilled expert came here today and caught three little thieves in one go. The chief asked us to come and learn from him. Let me tell you, but he didn't finish his sentence. But you dashed out like a cheetah. What's going on? He instinctively turned around. At this moment, you arrived in front of a middle-aged man who looked honest. Without waiting for the other person to speak, you immediately grabbed his arm. What are you doing? The middle-aged man immediately shouted loudly, Help, someone come quick. The traffic police are beating someone. 
Upon hearing this, the surrounding crowd immediately gathered around, occasionally pointing and gesturing. Zhang Chao was a bit bewildered and quickly said, Lao Su, are you crazy? Let go quickly. You remained calm and patted the middle-aged man. In the next moment, you found wallets, phones, jewelry, and other dirty items one by one. Zhang Chao widened his eyes in disbelief and looked at you in shock. You, on the other hand, smiled calmly and said, Old Zhang, what are you waiting for? Hurry and take the people and the dirty items away. Zhang Chao and another police officer immediately stepped forward and subdued the dejected little thief. Then he couldn't help but ask, Old Su, the master that Zhang mentioned, could it be you? You smiled and said, it's no surprise, it should be me. Awesome. I knew you were great. You shine wherever you go, Zhang Chao praised emphatically. Then, you took the little thief and left. Zhao Guodong watched the scene and gave a thumbs up. Feeling proud but also a little helpless, ah, always getting into trouble, he thought. The afternoon quickly passed by. However, Zhang Chao was completely shocked by your actions. In just three short hours, nine little thieves who passed by you were all caught. Moreover, during the peak time of theft near dusk, not a single report of theft was received. Clearly, the little thieves got wind of it. All right, old Su, this van is almost full. Let's call it a day, Zhang Chao waved to you. Zhang Chao waved his hand to bid you farewell. Then he drove away in the police car. You looked at the system panel with over 1,300 points, already ecstatic, and managed to reach the number for another lottery draw. Not knowing what the surprise might be this time, hurry home to draw the lottery. Thinking of this, you plan to leave on the motorcycle. However, the next moment, your gaze suddenly focused. An inexplicable sense of familiarity swept over you. There was a man standing at the intersection ahead, wearing black framed glasses and holding a magazine. He looked like a typical office worker. You took a closer look, and that sense of familiarity grew stronger. Without further thought, you directly activated the eye of good and evil. Wang Wangping, the murderer and dismemberer, is an immediate wanted criminal. Special alert, danger level 3 stars. Damn, your heart suddenly raced. You unexpectedly encountered a tough character, and as you stared at the other party, the other party's calm eyes also looked at you. Your heart skipped a beat, and this look of yours would definitely arouse suspicion in the other party. Sure enough, Wang Wangping took a slight step back. Seeing this, your heart sank, and you immediately sprung into action. In an instant, you sprinted forward. As you ran, you shouted loudly into the police radio to report the wanted criminal Wang Wangping. D-level wanted criminal Wang Wangping spotted. Upon hearing this, Wang Wangping's expression changed drastically, and he immediately turned and ran towards the street behind. Yang Wei suddenly heard a shout, and hesitated for a moment. Then he suddenly realized, and his face changed abruptly. At this moment, you were already chasing after someone towards the corner of the street. After an exclamation of surprise, Yang Wei immediately chased after, while running, he took out his police communicator and contacted the headquarters, we have found the class B wanted criminal, Wang Guangping, currently in pursuit on Dongming Road, requesting backup, requesting backup. At this moment, Zhao Guodong, who was directing traffic, suddenly heard the message on the police communicator. His expression immediately changed, drastically. Immediately put out an arrest warrant for the criminal Wang Wangping. He is an extremely dangerous and brutal criminal. Thinking of his subordinates who might be in danger, without saying a word, he picked up the police communicator and shouted, Attention all teams, immediately surround Dongming Road. As soon as you see him, surround him. Second team acknowledges. Third team received, the on-duty traffic police quickly began to act. Zhao Guodong then got into the car and made a call to Su Qingshan. He immediately drove towards Dongming Road. You were very fast, in less than 5 minutes, you had already closed the distance with Wang Guangping to less than 10 meters. Seeing you pursue him relentlessly, Wang Guangping's face suddenly changed. He looked at a residential area ahead and without hesitation, he rushed in. The security guard at the door tried to stop him, but he pushed past him. You didn't hesitate to chase into the residential area when you saw this. The residential area is lush with greenery, and there are several elderly people and children playing under the shade of the trees. Seeing this, you immediately became anxious. But Wang Guangping showed a ferocious expression. He pulled out a sharp knife. He headed straight for an elderly couple and a child. You rushed forward to stop him, yelling and throwing yourself at him with all your strength. Just as Wang Wangping was about to put the knife to the child's neck. You grabbed his arm and forcefully tackled him to the ground. But Wang Guangping was extremely strong, and he managed to twist his wrist and stab you in the chest. Seeing this, you quickly rolled over. But your chest was still torn open, blood gushing out. Go to hell! Wang Guangping's face showed a ferocious expression as he charged at you madly. Your face darkened as you prepared to strike. 
Suddenly, a wine red luxury car rushed out from the side. Oomph, Wang Guangping was sent flying five or six meters and crashed heavily to the ground. Seeing this, you immediately breathed a sigh of relief. Then you walked up and quickly turned over Wang Guangping, searching him thoroughly. After making sure there were no other weapons, he tied him up, avoiding the fugitive. This is a third class merit. After doing all this, you stood up. But with this movement, you suddenly felt a severe pain in your chest. There was a wound about 10 centimeters long, and blood was flowing out. Fortunately, you dodged in time. You waved to the frightened old man and child, telling them to leave. You then sat down on a nearby chair. Are you okay? At that moment, a voice with a lazy, unique tone sounded. You immediately looked up at the other person. A woman in a black professional suit stood in front of you. Her face was delicate and beautiful. I'm fine, you smiled and shook your head, then thanked her just now. After a brief moment of absent-mindedness, your eyes became very clear. Now you just want to catch thieves and earn points. But the woman would only affect your speed in drawing the gun. No need for help, Uncle Policeman. It's my duty, the woman smiled charmingly, outshining all others. You were taken aback at her words. Sister, I'm only 22. It's not appropriate for you to call me uncle. As my teacher taught, the woman glanced at your almost perfect physique. A faint blush appeared on her cheeks. She quickly looked away and said, since there's nothing else, I'll leave. All right, goodbye. You nod. The woman, wearing high-heeled sandals, got back into the car. You watched her get into the car, only then did you notice that the front of the luxury car had a large dent, and even the headlight was shattered. You were about to speak, but the car had already driven far away. Forget it, I'll check it later. Anyway, I have to thank him. You muttered to yourself, silently noting down the license plate, and as soon as you finished speaking, a dozen police cars drove into the neighborhood, sirens blaring. All the members of the traffic police squadron, except for two on duty and administrative staff, were all present. In addition, the director of the Longhua Road Police Station, Su Qingshan, also brought a few colleagues. Zhao Guodong got out of the car and saw you injured, his face changed instantly. Captain Zhao, I'm fine. It's just a scratch, a minor injury, you quickly said. You are really my ancestor. I really want to kick you out, so I won't be tortured into madness by you later. Zhao Guodong is really afraid that something will happen to you. If it's a minor injury, it's okay, but if it's a serious injury, or even sacrificing yourself, will this captain still continue? At this time, Su Qingshan stepped forward, smiling and nodding. It should be nothing. This bit of blood is at most a 10 centimeter wound. Li Wenyan raised his thumb, indeed worthy of an old policeman. The wound can be seen from one's own bleeding. Su Qingshan smiled and raised his thumb at you. Just wait. Sooner or later I will bring you to our office. I'll save the position of the deputy for you. After speaking, he strode towards the unconscious Wang Guangping lying on the ground. After careful identification, he immediately said it was the main culprit. Take him to the car after the exam. Xiao Zhou, Xiao Yan, you are responsible for taking him to the hospital for examination. Remember to keep an eye on him at all times. Two experienced police officers immediately took the person to the car. Then Su Qingshan returned to you, Xiao Su, one yesterday, and another one today, these two criminals, two third-class merits. I will report it all to you. As for those thieves, I will apply for a reward for you, and give it to you together later. Thank you, Su Sua, you smiled and saluted him. All right, let's go to the hospital. Although the wound is small, it still needs to be treated, Su Qingshan said, waving his hand. Then he got in the car and left. But immediately after, his phone rang. He took it out and saw that it prominently displayed the two words Guizhu. Guizhu hurriedly answered the call. Su Qingshan, I heard that the entire Dachau district was very lively today. The traffic police from one district are all surrounding a class B wanted criminal. Unfortunately, none of our police officers are there. Zs, it looks like I have to go with you tomorrow to manage the traffic. Hand over all the work to the traffic police. At this time, in the municipal office, a middle-aged man was already extremely angry. Upon hearing this, Su Qingshan immediately became nervous. Wei Ju, please listen to my explanation, but he didn't finish his sentence. Once again, there was a barrage of harsh scolding. And at this moment, you have been forced to come to the hospital. Lying on the hospital bed, you feel no pain at all, but instead, excitement fills your face. Because you can finally draw the lottery again. As the system draws the lottery, you silently recite in your heart. Congratulations to the host for obtaining a card to enhance physical fitness, comprehensively improving strength and speed, giving the host a body that makes mature women go crazy. An overwhelming and powerful body that captivates the soul, commonly known as a cougar killer. You couldn't help but twitch the corner of your mouth. This system is a bit unscrupulous. 
But since there's such a good thing, just use it and be done with it. The moment you use it, you feel a surge of special energy flowing into your body. After nearly 10 minutes have passed, when all the anomalies have dissipated, you look at yourself. You are immediately shocked. The muscles on your body are not explosive like a bodybuilder's, but rather filled with a sense of power in their flexible lines. Eight pack abs, muscular arms and waist, this body is simply perfect to the extreme. And the nurses who are treating your wounds at this moment are also completely captivated. How did you train this body? It's too perfect. What should I do? I can't stand much longer. You originally wanted to rest a little longer, but you couldn't bear those harsh words, so you escaped from the hospital in embarrassment. In the following days, Zhao Guodong kept a close eye on you, not letting you go anywhere, fearing you might catch another criminal or something. Your wound definitely won't heal by then. So you had to stay in the office every day, answering calls, which drove you crazy. In the blink of an eye, a week passed, and on that day, as soon as you arrived at the office, you found Zhao Gudong. Zhao, help me look up a license plate. Zhao looked at the license plate with suspicion and said, Kid, don't get involved in those shady things. I'm not that kind of person. I can't handle it. He thought you were trying to get him to bend the rules and help with traffic violations, something he never stooped to, not even for his own wife. You knew he misunderstood, so you immediately said, Zhao, you've got it wrong. This is the car that hit Wang Wangping that day. It's that car. I'll look it up now. You should thank me for this. Without saying a word, Zhao Bodong immediately opened the system. Soon, the registration information for the vehicle appeared. Lu Ruyan, female, 29 years old, phone number 13, home address, Hongwan Villa, no. One Zhongjiang, Jiangyun City. Seeing the information, Zhao Bodong's face showed a look of surprise. Zhao, do you know Li Wenyan? Asked Li Wenyan. Lu Ruyan is a well-known female entrepreneur in Jiangyun. Two years ago, she took over the family business and used ruthless methods to suppress all opposition. She single-handedly controls a billion-dollar consortium. Isn't that impressive? Wen Yen, you were stunned. It really is impressive. I heard that she's single. What do you think, Xiao Xu? Can you help us shine in the traffic police force? Take down the beautiful female president in one fell swoop. Captain Zhao, forget it. With this kind of identity, I'll have to avoid you in the future. Jokes aside, did you give the other party a call? In the spacious and bright office, Lu Ruyan twirled the pen in her hand as she answered a strange call. Upon hearing you reveal your identity, his mind immediately conjured up that perfect physique, causing his face to blush. That's it, Miss Lu. On behalf of our traffic police team, I want to thank you. At the same time, we will also cover the cost of repairing your car. Your voice rang out again. No, it's okay. I'll fix the car myself. Well, then how should we meet? Unable to contain the excitement in her heart, Lu Ruyan reluctantly agreed. You were also stunned over there. Didn't you already refuse? Why did you suddenly agree? But you didn't have time to think about it. Because just now, after you persuaded and pleaded, Captain Zhao finally agreed to let you go on an external mission. At this moment, you, Yang Wei, and Fang Wei are driving straight towards the sand mining plant in Xia Wantang district. This super large-scale sand mining plant called Jiangwo has almost captured 70% of the market in Jiangyun City. By monopolizing the price of sand, they have made a fortune. When your car arrived outside the Jiangwo sand mining plant, you saw sand trucks racing along the main road, raising clouds of dust, not to mention the environmental pollution. Those sand trucks are still very fast, at least 70 to 80 yards or more. Some even surged to over 100 yards. Yang Wei looked at this scene with a hint of resentment in his eyes. These bastards are pulling dozens of tons of sand, once there's a vehicle in front. They simply can't stop. They are playing with people's lives and property safety. He laughed and fiercely slapped the steering wheel. Fang Wei, sitting in the passenger seat, also sighed deeply. Three people were killed on this road last year, one of them was not even 10 years old. But they just settled it with money, and afterwards, they continued to act recklessly. There's nothing we can do. It is said that their boss Wang Jiangwo has connections, and no one can touch him. You look at the sand truck speeding towards us, your face is very ugly. Even seeing your police car parked on the side, they still speed. What is this? It's provocation, provocation of law enforcement, provocation of traffic regulations authority. Thinking of this, a surge of anger rose in my heart. Yang, go to the entrance of the sand market, let's block the road directly. Yang Wei shuddered at these words, you are crazy, kid. If they keep doing this, something will happen sooner or later. We clearly saw it, but did nothing. That is negligence. How do the people see us? Don't you feel guilty in your hearts? At this moment, you are sitting in the back seat, a face full of indignation. 
Upon hearing this, Yan Wei and Fang Wei both showed a hint of bitterness on their faces. They had originally intended to come for patrol and warning today, after all, no matter what, there's no way to avoid stepping on this sand field. But your words are like a warning bell, striking heavily in their minds. Fang Wei looked uncertainly at Yang Wei, after all, he was the captain of the squad. Yang Wei raised his head, your words completely awakened him. Blood awakened, he growled softly, shifted gears, stepped on the gas, and prepared to charge forward. Sitting in the back seat, you patted his shoulder and said, Captain Yang, stop here for a moment and take pictures of all the speeding vehicles. Yang Wei was stunned for a moment, then nodded in understanding. Enforcing the law must be done correctly. In the next short 10 minutes, at least close to 100 sand trucks passed by, every single one speeding, and some drivers didn't even pay attention to the police car parked on the side of the road. You see, we've collected enough. You immediately patted Yang Wei's shoulder. Saying this, Yang Wei didn't say a word, stepped on the gas, and drove straight to the entrance of the sand mining plant. Soon, you arrived at the entrance of the sand mining plant. At this time, several security guards of the sand mining plant immediately walked out upon seeing you. Unexpectedly, Yang Wei spun the car around and parked it sideways at the entrance. You and Fang Wei then got out of the car. Without saying a word, he pulled out a tire iron and placed it across the entrance of the sand factory. What are you doing? A security guard rushed forward trying to stop them. Fang Wei acted quickly, standing in front of him and loudly reprimanding the traffic police. Law enforcement, step aside. To hell with law enforcement. Do you know where you are? Move, or don't blame us for being impolite, brothers. The security guard shouted loudly. One by one, figures began to appear around, each wearing short sleeves, with dragon and phoenix tattoos, and fierce expressions, not even flinching in the face of the traffic police. Some even looked eager to try. Yang Wei's face changed as he saw this scene, and he loudly shouted, What are you doing? Step back, he said. He quickly took out two police batons from the trunk of the police car. You narrowed your eyes and looked coldly over. The few people standing at the front. Gua Hang, also known as De Gua, a fugitive wanted for murder, evading the law for 11 years, now working for the construction group. Yu Shue, also known as Lao Shue, a fugitive wanted for a major criminal case causing two deaths and six injuries, with serious implications, now working for the construction group. Zhang Daik, also known as Lao Yu. Your gaze swept over more than 20 people, and at least 10 of them are fugitives. This is simply a hideout for criminals. In addition, you also noticed that there are two people in the crowd who are core members of the Jin Gong group. They also bear heavy responsibilities, none of which are simple. These 20-plus people facing you all have a look of disdain on their faces. Walking at the forefront is a young man wearing a black short-sleeved shirt. His lower body is clad in floral shorts, and at this moment, he is pointing at Yang Wei's nose and reprimanding him. His pupils slightly contract, and in his mind, the information about this guy appears. Wang Jianchang, the younger brother of Wang Jiangwo, from the Jin Gong group. Suspected of provocation, kidnapping, intentional murder, and intentional injury. A dense criminal record appears in your mind, and a surge of anger wells up in your heart. This kind of person is a criminal, and it's intolerable. Relying on being Wang Jiangwo's brother, Wang Jiancheng has caused harm to countless people. At least 10 people, directly or indirectly, have died at his hands. He also lends money at exorbitant interest rates, forcing those female college students who borrowed money to take special photos. Then he gradually lures them into the abyss, selling their bodies to repay the interest. But the interest keeps accumulating, and even if they sell themselves to death, they still can't repay it. In addition, this guy also uses drugs to control those women. According to the system's prompt, the sand mining plant is a den of iniquity. Wang Jiancheng, under the instructions of his brother Wang Jiangwo, controls those female students here. To win people over, these scoundrels usually make the female students serve the people under their control. If the service is not satisfactory, it's just using fists and kicks. Even threatening their family members, under such coercion, several female students committed suicide here. The bodies were all buried underground in the sand and gravel yard. Seeing that information, the phrase shocking case immediately came to mind. Once this case is uncovered, the entire Jiang Yun city will experience a major earthquake. I'll give you one more chance, get out, or don't blame me for being rude. Wang Jiancheng looked at you fiercely. He dialed a number on his phone at the time, hello, big brother, the traffic police have visitors again. It was his older brother Wang Jiangwo, the founder of Jiangwo Group. Upon hearing his brother's words, Wang Jiangwo, who was bathing with a few women, suddenly sat up from the bathtub. What do they want? Can't they let go of even a small matter? The sand and gravel plant cannot be exposed. Under no circumstances can they be allowed in. Get people to throw them out. If they die, 
I'll take responsibility. Hearing this, Wang Jiancheng immediately became confident. He put the phone back in his pocket and coldly said, Big wave. Make it clear to me. Brothers, beat them up as per Wang Jiancheng's orders. The leader shouted and rushed towards Yang Wei and Fang Wei. The two of them immediately changed their expressions. They never expected that. These lunatics, who are truly lawless and insane, really dare to act. Suddenly, several people came at them with fists flying. They immediately wielded their police batons and fought back. But outnumbered, they soon took several hits. Out of nowhere, a metal rod came down and struck Yang Wei on the head. His head started bleeding profusely in that instant. A figure like a cheetah charged into the crowd, possessing the skills of a close combat king. With overall enhanced physical abilities, your combat power is now terrifying. Like a fierce beast, a heavy punch landed on the cheek of the nearest person. Then, you kicked another guy and sent him flying. You also knocked down several others. But this was just the beginning. At the next moment, you suddenly grabbed a burly man of at least 200 pounds. You fiercely smashed him into the people in front, knocking down seven or eight more after a few rounds. Over 20 people, except for Wang Jiancheng and the three or four people beside him, were all taken down. Each person was seriously injured. Yang Wei and Fang Wei were completely stunned when they saw this scene. This Su Lin, is he really this fierce? Is he really this fierce? Wang Jiancheng across from them also looked horrified at this point. Lao Shuei and Lao Yu sat him down, and Wang Jiancheng hurriedly pulled the two of them, blocking them in front of him, and began to shout hysterically at you. Hearing this, Lao Shuei and Lao Yu both took out two daggers from their own bodies. Gritting their teeth, they rushed towards you. Seeing this, you directly swung the baton and smashed it towards one of them. With a crack, the sound of the dagger hitting the ground was heard. At this time, the other person's dagger had already come in front of you, less than 20 centimeters away from piercing your body. Su Linxiao, Yang Wei shouted loudly, with a star at his throat. But the next moment, you grabbed the other person's hand like lightning, and then fiercely, then fiercely struck the other person's head. Lao you didn't even have time to scream before falling to the ground. Yang Wei finally let go of his suspended heart, quickly called the captain for support. At this point, he finally thought of calling for backup. At this point, you regain some calm in your eyes, and turn to say, call the police and report that someone is violently protesting with a weapon multiple casualties at the scene. Upon hearing this, Yang Wei's expression changed. This guy clearly thinks the situation isn't big enough. Once it's really reported like that, not to mention the police station, even the special police of the city bureau will be mobilized. But this is indeed the most effective method. If it's a regular alarm, these people will still resist. There must be a big problem with this sand stomping. You can tell from their crazy behavior. I called my classmate in the special police team. Fang Wei immediately took out his phone to make a call. F asterisk 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 often die, when he heard Fang Wei was going to call the special police, Wang Jiancheng, who was scared and kept retreating, showed fear in his eyes. He reached into his pocket in a frenzy and felt around. When he took it out again, there was suddenly a pistol. Your hair stood on end instantly. At the critical moment, you swung and fiercely smashed the expandable baton in your hand. The expandable baton hit accurately. Wang Jiancheng's pistol went off, and the shot hit the ground. Then the pistol also fell to the ground. Wang Jiancheng, in pain, was about to pick up the gun. You took a big step forward and kicked hard, kicking Wang Jiancheng and sending him flying two to three meters. Then you immediately picked up the pistol from the ground, breathing a sigh of relief. Wang Jiancheng has a gun. No one had anticipated this. At the moment when the sound of the gunshot echoed, Yang Wei and Fang Wei both had their mouths wide open, staring in shock at the gun you picked up. Fang Wei was still on the phone, talking to his classmate, the captain of the special police squadron. Just a few seconds ago, he had just made the call. The other party simply didn't believe it. What era is this? Still resorting to violence against the law. But as the sound of gunfire rang out, the other end of the phone exploded. Lao Fong, Lao Fong, are you okay? How can there be gunfire? He asked in shock. Resorting to armed resistance against the law. It's armed resistance against the law. If Lao Sui doesn't come soon, just prepare to collect my body. Fang Wei shouted loudly. Get ready to assemble at the first squadron immediately. Hurry up and assemble. The phone hadn't even been hung up when an urgent assembly command came through. Fang Wei breathed a sigh of relief and hung up the phone. Immediately after, he dialed a call to the squadron leader, Zhao Guodong. Upon hearing about their encounter with armed resistance against the law, Zhao Guodong wasted no time and ordered the entire team to assemble. Outside the traffic police squadron, a luxury car slowly came to a stop. Lu Rian got out of the car and dialed that number on her phone, but after the phone rang for a while, 
it directly gave an unreachable prompt. She couldn't help but furrow her brow slightly. He can't be standing her up like this. There was a hint of coldness in her expression. But at that moment, a voice urged, hurry up. Lao Lu, what's going on at the sand field in Ziawantang? Armed resistance against the law. Those guys even have guns. What? A group of traffic police got in the car and quickly left. Lu Ruyan looked somewhat bewildered, her eyes full of curiosity. Armed resistance against the law, and even guns. What are the traffic police involved in? Suddenly, he remembered a week ago, when that young traffic cop caught a fugitive. Could it be a special task force? Watching a group of traffic cops leave in a hurry. Leo Ruyan is really at a loss. Unable to reach anyone on the phone and unable to find the person, he can only helplessly get into the car and leave. At this moment, at Xia Wantang Sand Field, Wang Jinsheng, who was hiding in the corner, was already very scared. Trembling, he held the phone and pleaded, Brother, save me. You idiot, I said don't let them in. Why did you attack them proactively? They were just checking your speeding issue. As long as you cooperate, they won't do anything. They won't lay a finger on you. Wang Jiangong, sitting in the office of Jiangong Construction Group's headquarters, roared through gritted teeth. You fool, why don't you just die? Wang Jiangong's voice turned extremely cold by the end. Upon hearing this, Wang Jiancheng felt like he was suffocating. Brother, I'm your only younger brother. Mom passed away early, and dad is gone too. You're my only family. By now, his tears had already fallen to the ground. But Wang Jiangong's heart finally softened, and he asked, Where are you now? I'm inside the sand mining plant, and there's a traffic cop chasing me from behind. Upon hearing this, Wang Jiangong immediately said, Damn it, just a traffic cop. Is he trying to test his luck? Lao Air, go to the green tiled house on the right immediately. Someone will be there to assist. Don't worry about anything else. When Wang Jiancheng heard this, he was instantly delighted. Without saying a word, he ran towards the blue tiled house. The blue tiled house is a special building in the sand mining plant, surrounded by walls. Only when Wang Jiangwo comes in person will it open. Even Wang Jiancheng doesn't dare to approach it easily at ordinary times. Because Wang Jiangwo warned him that entering without his permission would mean certain death. At this moment, you chased into the sand mining plant, so Wang Jiancheng, and ran towards a blue walled house without hesitation, immediately catching up. And when Wang Jiancheng ran to the door of the blue tiled house, a figure had already opened the door for him. She was already there, understanding that once she sent him away, she wouldn't owe you anything. She was a cold woman, wearing a tight leather outfit, with a very hot figure. She held a phone in one hand, coldly watching Wang Jiancheng run in. Then her gaze converged on a figure sprinting more than 10 meters away. She raised the gun. Bang, 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 the pistol instantly fired several bullets. Seeing this, I quickly threw myself to the side. But the opponent's marksmanship was as if it was part of her. A bullet still hit your shoulder. Watching the blood gush from your shoulder, your face turned extremely ugly. But at this moment, you've already hidden behind a wall, and the other party has lost the shooting angle. This is too arrogant. I am a systematic person. You injured me, and you think you can still run? You shouted in celebration, then darted out like a cheetah. The woman's face changed instantly, and she turned to raise the gun. But you raised your hand and scattered sand all over her face. The woman instinctively closed her eyes, but the gun in her hand still pulled the trigger. At the moment the gunshot rang out, he suddenly flew up and crashed heavily into the wall behind him. The wall instantly cracked, and the woman felt as if she had been hit by a speeding truck, with pain all over her body. Wang Jiancheng, who was watching this scene from the side, turned pale. However, at this moment, you were already standing in front of him. Before this guy could turn and run, you grabbed his neck and threw him outside. With a thud, Wang Jiancheng fell to the ground and passed out. Then you looked again at that woman. Although she's a woman, she gave you an extremely dangerous feeling. At that moment when you scattered sand, she calmly fired three shots. One of the shots even hit your thigh. If you hadn't reacted quickly, it might have been a fatal hit. This woman is definitely not simple. As you think about this, in your mind, the eye of good and evil opens, and the information about the other party instantly appears in your mind. Jean Megui helps people, a mercenary assassin, because she was captured in a battle and later rescued by Wang Jiangwo, she promised to help Wang Jiangwo three times. Sure enough, this woman is a perfect viper beauty. You grit your teeth, enduring the intense pain, and take step by step forward. Jean Megui, you shouldn't have come to the building. You directly revealed the other party's name. Jean Megui's face instantly changed dramatically. Who are you and how do you know my identity? It's impossible for Wang Jiangwo to betray me. A faint smirk appeared at the corner of the mouth, without saying anything. At the moment the other party was distracted, 
she pounced directly. However, Jean Megue's reaction speed was also very fast. An elbow strike was blocked. In an instant, she lifted her leg for a flying kick. Jean Megue dodged and the two sides exchanged more than 10 moves in the blink of an eye. You fought more and more fiercely. Jean Megue, on the other hand, was gradually retreating. In his heart, a storm had already been stirred up. Your methods can be considered top-notch in the mercenary organization. Damn, after Jean Megue stubbornly endured your punch, her figure suddenly retreated into the blue-tiled house, just about to catch up, but suddenly saw the barrel of a gun. Scared, you immediately stepped back, but after waiting for a few seconds, the other party didn't even shoot. You immediately realized something was wrong, rushed in to take a look. As a result, you found that there was a wide river behind the house. Damn it, they actually ran away. And at that moment, the door was suddenly kicked open by someone. Then, one by one, fully armed special police officers rushed in. You finally breathed a sigh of relief, and then your head tilted and you fell into a deep sleep. Find the wounded and quickly take them to the hospital. The captain of the special police shouted loudly. Then, several police officers lifted you and ran outside. After that, they began to inspect every inch of the Qinghua house. Sui Dong glanced at the crushed Wang Jiancheng, a trace of coldness in his eyes. Openly defying the law, attacking law enforcement officers with a gun, this guy is finished. Take everyone away, and regroup under the command of Sui Dong. The criminal investigation and the supporting police officers from the police station here have also completed their work. Hundreds of people were brought out from the sand mining factory. In addition, the criminal investigation team also contacted their brothers in the drug control department. Because they found over a kilogram of ice in a basement at the sand factory. In addition to the ice, they also found several female students who had been tortured and were in an inhuman state. Those bastards deserve to die after seeing the pitiful state of those girls. Bei Dong wishes he could shoot Wang Jiancheng directly. The captain who does drugs nodded and said, he deserves to die, not to mention other charges. Just one kilogram of bullets is enough for us to shoot him several times. Hearing their words, the leading captain of the criminal investigation team immediately said anxiously, line up and follow the team. I think you should hand the person over to us first, for interrogation. I believe there is definitely more to him than meets the eye. Just now, when we brought out those few girls, they said a few more sisters were beaten to death. Sui Dong nodded in response to the words, regardless, we must dig out all their crimes. Give the victims the justice they deserve. I agree, said Yi, the anti-drug team leader, nodding. By the way, I heard that this operation was led by a traffic police officer. Suddenly, Yi raised his head and asked. Sui Dong nodded and said, that young man was shot twice. I've just taken him to the hospital. Shooting incidents, we must investigate thoroughly. As he spoke, he said to the captain of the criminal investigation team, right, those few people lying at the entrance of the sand plant need to be checked. I think there's something fishy about them. In this day and age, only desperados dare to attack the police. I understand, nodded in agreement. On the other side, outside the operating room of the No. One hospital in Jianyun City, Zhao Buadong was shot twice. His eyes flickered with shock and fear, and more than that, he couldn't help but want to give you a good beating. If he had known at noon today, he definitely wouldn't have let you go. This little brat is really something. Zhao Buadong said in a low and hoarse voice, then shook his head with a bitter smile. Beside him, Deputy Captain Lu Zhao also sighed deeply. Lao Zhao, it seems that this time we really might not be able to keep him. Zhao Guodong was stunned for a moment, nodded with a wry smile, such outstanding talent, the higher-ups definitely won't leave him alone. Even if suppressed, there will come a day when he will soar. Hearing this, Lu Zhao's mouth twitched fiercely. On the first morning of the report, they caught eight criminals, and in the afternoon, they caught twelve. A few days ago, they caught a must-convict. Today, they even directly took down a gang-related den, arrested nearly 20 people, including some serious criminals. Where did he come to be a traffic police officer? He came to give them a funeral procession. I don't know where this kid's next unit will be. Just as Zhao Buodong and Lu Zhao were discussing, it was a time to think about where you would go next. In a luxurious villa in Jiangyun City, several people sat in a dim room, quietly drinking tea. Wang Jiancheng, if you can't stay, you must shut up. Suddenly, the voice of a middle-aged man rang out. I agree too. If Wang Jiancheng stays, our whole group will be destroyed. Another slightly elderly man also spoke. I agree with Mr. Hong. I suggest getting someone to take action inside, then another man's voice agreed. This is a middle-aged man sitting in the corner, suddenly stepping forward and saying, but that's my brother, Wang Jiangwo. No one knows about my younger brother. Inside Wang Jiangwo's interest group, who knows how many there are. But what can be confirmed is that in this group, 
there are definitely several highly influential figures. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to easily say something to make Wang Jiancheng shut up. You should know that Wang Jiancheng has already been taken to the detention center. No one is allowed to visit. To make a person like this shut up forever, it seems to require extraordinary abilities. At this moment, I woke up on the other side and found myself lying in the hospital. It seems my luck is still holding, and I couldn't help but smile. But what's even more exciting for you is that this time, you've accumulated 3730 points, enough to open three blind boxes. You muttered to yourself and immediately chose to draw a skill. Congratulations, host, for obtaining the skill Mute Communicator with the Corpse, the ultimate skill for forensic experts. Congratulations, host, for obtaining the skill Enhancement Card plus one. Congratulations, host, for obtaining the skill Tracking, pursuing the culprit for a thousand miles, the ultimate skill for criminal investigation. The vast amount of knowledge almost made your head explode. You couldn't help but let out a cry of pain. This feeling is simply unbearable. Suddenly, two people rushed in. It was Yang Wei and Fong Wei. Yang Wei anxiously shouted, La Fong, you watch him, I'll go call the doctor. What, call and Lin? Yes, yes, and Lin. No need, just as the two of them were in a flurry, you had already recovered. Are you okay, kid? Fong Wei asked with concern. You smiled and said, it's nothing, I just slept too long. By the way, how long was I unconscious? It's been two days. You don't know how scary it was the day before yesterday when you came, covered in blood, Fong Wei said. Suddenly, a phone rang in Yang Wei's pocket. He took it out and found it was Captain Zhao Guodong, so he answered immediately. Captain Zhao Guodong on the other end said a sentence. Yang Wei's face instantly became extremely embarrassed. What's wrong? A bad feeling arose in your heart. Yang Wei spoke, that Wang Jiancheng is dead. After a medical examination, it was determined that he died from a severe blow to the back of the head. They suspect you're involved and want to take you back for questioning. Upon hearing this, your face immediately darkened, framed for something? Fang Wei stood up suddenly, gritting his teeth, it's so despicable. It was a miracle we didn't die in that situation. They resisted the law with weapons and even openly shot at us. Is it wrong for us to resist? They can question all they want. Damn them, I'll go reason with them. Yang Wei put down the phone and was about to walk outside. Captain Yang, you called out to stop Yang Wei when he was about to leave. Are you sure you didn't use excessive force on Wang Jiancheng? This means the root of the fatal injury is not with you. So what exactly happened? The more I think about it, the more chilling it feels. It's as if there is a huge palm covering myself and Yang Wei. The more they want to resist, the more it makes people feel a hint of despair. You shook your head inside, it is indeed troublesome, not only do we have to guard against the enemy, but also against our own people. However, the more it is like this, the more you feel rebellious. If they want to suppress it, then I will just go against their wishes, you said through gritted teeth. Don't do anything, just wait for them to come. That's not enough, how can that be enough? Even if there's no what if, you shook your head and said we can't do anything about this matter. After all, our body cameras and police communication devices were broken at that time, there is no evidence, and secondly, we didn't have the right to arrest the criminals. You should be clearer about this than me. Hearing this, the two of them suddenly fell silent. What you said is right, and the ward fell silent for a moment. After about an hour, footsteps were heard outside the ward. Then a team of people walked into the ward, and at the forefront was none other than the criminal investigation team leader who had been at the scene before. His name is Hu Gang. Seeing this, Yang Wei and Fang Wei immediately stood up and blocked in front of you. Hu Gang couldn't help but frown when he saw this scene. Brothers, don't be nervous. We are just taking him to understand the situation at that time. To be honest, he also doesn't understand why Shang Ming wants to pursue this. After all, the situation at that time was beyond your control. It's making a mountain out of a molehill. But the higher-up said that Wang Jiancheng is the mastermind, and he has a big secret on him. The reasons also make it impossible for them to ignore it. Understand the situation. It's enough to understand it here. Didn't you see that Xiao Su was injured? A low voice sounded from the doorway, and Zhao Bodong, wearing a traffic police uniform, came in aggressively. Captain Zhao is very sorry. I received the order to take Su Lin back. Hu Gang shook his head with a bitter smile, waiting for Zhao Guodong to leave two words. Then he took out his phone and dialed a number. Soon the call was connected, and the voice of a middle-aged man came from the other side. Lao Zhao, if you are here to plead for that intern traffic police officer, then I have no way. It's what the higher-ups have asked for. We can only obey orders. As soon as this was said, Zhao Guodong's original intention was completely thwarted. He gritted his teeth and asked Lao Huang, whose order is it in the end? Vice Mayor Li. 
The person on the phone said, I understand. Zhao Guodong put down the phone weakly. Even the one in charge of political and legal affairs has stepped in. It's almost a foregone conclusion that he has been taken away. He was full of anger. What's going on? Clearly, he is the greatest contributor, but he was taken away for investigation because a criminal died. Aren't they afraid of disappointing their brothers below? Just as he was feeling indignant and about to erupt, Zhao suddenly spoke up, it's okay, I'll go with them. I believe there is still justice and fairness in this world. Upon hearing this, Hu Gang and several of his subordinates from the criminal investigation team hung their heads in shame. Their current roles were truly disgraceful. Zhao Buodong nodded and said, wait here, I'll get you a wheelchair and then personally accompany you. Thank you, Captain Zhao, for not refusing. Meanwhile, in the office of Jiang Yun Police Academy's principal, Lin Zheng hung up the phone with a smile, just at that moment. His daughter Lin Su walked into the office and said, Dad, I heard that scumbag Su Lin has received credit. What's going on? You can't even handle such a small matter? You even let him get credit, he complained with a full face. Lin Zheng chuckled at his words, credit? Ha, I think he's about to die. Don't worry, Su. I said I would crush him, so he won't have a chance to turn things around. Really? That's great, Dad. When the time comes, you must tell me. I want to see him act all high and mighty in front of me. Humph, if I, Lin Su, can't get it, I will definitely ruin him. Then, with Yunshu Criminal Investigation Detachment leaning on a wheelchair, led by Zhao Guodong, they entered a meeting room. In front of the meeting room, there were four middle-aged men sitting. You looked calmly at the review, then come in. You are Su Lin. Suddenly, a surprised voice sounded, and another middle-aged man walked in through the door. After seeing the other party, he also hesitated slightly. Wei Ju, according to your own memory, finally found the information about the other party. Wu Liang and Jiang Yun are the directors of the Dongcheng District Bureau. They are also the executive office of the Municipal Bureau. You two met when you were studying at the police academy. Xiao Su, it's really you. How could a criminal investigation major from the police academy become a traffic police officer? It shouldn't be. You saved my sister once back then. The higher-ups in the police academy jointly awarded you a third-class merit. Wu Liang couldn't help feeling puzzled. Third-class merit, Wei Ju, you're not joking. A middle-aged man with a cold expression said. Then, a second-level police supervisor also looked surprised. Wei Ju, what's going on? A criminal investigation major from the police academy who was awarded a third-class merit, but was assigned to the traffic police team. How is that possible? That was two years ago. Wu Liang fell into memories. The scene from back then resurfaced before his eyes. At the time, Wu Liang encountered a fugitive on his way home from work. So he contacted the bureau for support and then tracked the fugitive alone, entering a slum area. Unexpectedly, he was discovered by the fugitive during the tracking. Two extremely vicious guys cornered him in a dead-end alley, pulled out a weapon, and stabbed him twice, directly injuring his internal organs. At the critical moment, you happened to pass by there. Without saying a word, you picked up a weapon and took care of one from behind. Then, disregarding the weapon in the other person's hand, you knocked down another with a brick. Making sure there was no danger, you immediately tied up the two criminals with hemp rope and called the police. Finally, you carried Guo Liang, who had lost a lot of blood, and ran 500 meters to call for a car to take him to the hospital. After Guo Liang woke up in the emergency room, he reported directly to the higher-ups. The leaders of the municipal bureau paid great attention, especially after learning about your identity as a top student at the police academy, they praised you even more. Through a vote at the meeting, you were unanimously awarded the third-class merit. The second-level police officer suddenly realized when he heard this, recalling that there seemed to be such a thing. It caused quite a stir back then. You wrote a report for me, saying that our city had a teenage hero. At this moment, after hearing Guo Liang's account, Zhao Guodong was wide-eyed, his face full of disbelief. Then he suddenly thought of something and said, Wait, Wei Ju, are you mistaken? I've seen Su Lin's file, and there's no record of a third-class merit. It's impossible. I personally awarded him the medal at the time. Guo Liang said earnestly, Zhao Guodong still shook his head in denial, No, I just looked at his file. It's confirmed that there's no such honor. As soon as these words were spoken, the faces of the two leaders sitting in the middle looked somewhat unpleasant. Especially in Xiao Weihai's eyes, there is a strong sense of anger, a third-class merit student at the police academy, saying there's none just like that. Absolutely audacious, the angry voice rings out from Xiao Weihai's mouth. His eyes seem to almost spew out flames. Xiao Su, you have to believe in the organization, we will definitely give you justice. Xiao Weihai couldn't help but feel emotional. 
But unexpectedly, the next moment, you smiled and said, the director was joking. I really didn't take it to heart, no matter where. Can shine and be passionate anywhere. Just because you became a traffic police officer doesn't mean you can't serve the people. Traffic police are also police officers. Hearing this, Xia Weihai couldn't help but clap and laugh. Well, what you said is right, isn't it? Suddenly, Wu Liang spoke again. His face was full of surprise as he circled around you and said, Xiao Su, the traffic police officer who captured the kidnapper and murderer of Yu Haojiang a few days ago, was that you? You nodded slightly at the words. It really is you. I thought it looked a bit like you. I didn't recognize you for a while. Wu Liang looked surprised. Xia Wei was suddenly shocked. This is another third-class merit story. At this time, Zhao Guodong couldn't help but speak, saying that a few days ago, the B-level fugitive, Wang Guangping, was also caught by Xiao Su, and he was injured for it. As soon as these words were spoken, both Xiao Weihai and Guo Liang took a sharp breath. A traffic police officer being able to achieve such earth-shattering feats. They've already taken out most of the members of the criminal investigation detachment. Let's get down to business next, just as everyone was shocked. A calm voice of reason emerged, surprisingly from the middle-aged man in the suit who had been silent all along. Xiao Weihai was stunned at the words, then said with an unpleasant expression. Vice Mayor Li is right, we should start. He put away all expressions and said to Huang Weihan beside him, Xiao Huang, you take the lead. Okay. Huang Weihan nodded and calmly said, Su Lin, why don't you start by telling us why you forcefully entered the construction site sandpit? You should be very clear about it. As traffic police, although they have the power to enforce the law, they do not have the right to arrest. As soon as this was said, Zhao Guodong behind you changed his expression. This matter is not easy to explain. But you smiled and said, you're right, we don't have that right. But that doesn't prevent us from acting bravely for justice, does it? This retort almost got Zhao Guodong excited, and he slapped his thigh. Fantastic. We don't have the right to arrest, but acting bravely for justice is always okay. Hearing this, Huang Weihan suddenly revealed a subtle smile on his face, obviously very satisfied with this response. Excellent. Xiao Weihai couldn't help but applaud on the side. Review? What a load of rubbish. This was Xiao Weihai's first reaction upon receiving the notice. Three traffic police officers dared to fight against a group of armed criminals. The fearless and heroic spirit itself is worthy of promotion. Do you really need to review it? Are they joking with me? While they were secretly applauding you at Xavier C., suddenly the table was slammed hard. Deputy Mayor Lee looked at you coldly and said, Watch your attitude. Now, we're not talking about your heroism. We want to know why you wanted to kill Wang Jiancheng. As far as we know, he didn't have any weapons. And he was the ringleader. Why did he end up dead? These two questions immediately made everyone take notice. It's obvious that this person is nitpicking. You looked up at the other person, without any fear at all. I didn't kill Wang Jiancheng. Whether you killed someone or not is not for you to decide. Moreover, as far as we know, there was another person present at the time. Where is that person? Deputy Mayor Li asked again. Your expression darkened, Wen Yen. It seems that someone saw the golden rose. It's a pity you didn't catch that woman, otherwise. This question is very easy to explain. You took a deep breath and said, that person was very strong. I was injured at the time. He got away from me. Deputy Mayor Li's mouth curved into a cold smile. As far as I know, that person was a woman, right? You, a man, were outrun by a woman. Do you think I would believe he was a master? That's just your word. Wen Yen, you became somewhat indignant and said, if I killed someone, that's also just your word. We don't have evidence, but Captain Suedong from the special police saw you throw Wang Jianqing out, and he didn't move after hitting the ground. After Vice Mayor Li finished speaking, he slammed the table again and said, Su Lin, in the face of solid evidence, your sophistry is useless. Do you know the consequences of defying the law? Where is the solid evidence? You looked at him deeply and said, I haven't killed anyone except the gunman. Then tell us, who killed him? Vice Mayor Li said with a grim expression. I don't know, but I can find out, you replied calmly. Upon hearing your words, Shi Weihai's eyes flashed with a hint of curiosity. Since Wang Jianqing's death, the criminal investigation team has been fully mobilized. So far, there are no leads at all. He died in the detention center, and there was indeed a wound on the back of his head. According to the forensic examination, the wound was indeed inflicted three days ago. Everything points to you. Wang Jianqing's identity is there, so it needs to be investigated from above. They have no way to defend themselves. Vice Mayor Cha Li showed a cold smile and said, Su Lin, who do you think you are? Want to investigate me? Let me tell you, from today onwards, everything you do must be under our strict surveillance. 
As this was said, Xiao Weihai suddenly brightened up and immediately slapped the table, saying, Vice Mayor Li, since this kid doesn't admit it, I suggest taking him directly to the detention center. Don't worry, if it's really his doing, we won't go easy on him. No mercy. Suddenly hearing this sentence, whether it's Huang Weihan or Guo Liang, even Vice Mayor Li looked at him with some astonishment. Under the table, Guo Liang subtly kicked Xiao Weihai and others. The latter completely ignored it, instead saying to Vice Mayor Li, leave it to us, we guarantee. We won't let any troublemaker off the hook. When this was said, Guo Liang and Huang Weihan instantly understood. Troublemaker, who is he talking about? Vice Mayor Li then smiled slightly, Chief Xia, I'll leave this matter to you. I hope you can give me. And the leaders above a satisfactory answer. I understand, Xia Weihai nodded. Vice Mayor Li glanced at you, a faint smirk at the corner of his mouth. He stood up and left the meeting room with his secretary. Li Mingyu really thinks he can control everything, Zhao Budong sneered, looking very displeased. Although he is in charge of political and legal affairs, he can't directly intervene in the case. Su Lin is not a criminal, why should he be monitored, as well as Xia Ju and others? Thinking of this, Zhao Buodong glared fiercely at the people in front of him. He was determined, even if he lost his position as captain, he had to seek justice for you. Xiao Weihai glanced at Zhao Buodong, then smiled and walked to your side, asking, Are you sure you can find out who killed Wang Jianchun? Li Wenyan smiled and nodded, I will do as I promised. How Xiao Wei, Director Jin Guang asked if you can still work now. Absolutely no problem. You showed a happy smile. It feels great to be trusted by your own people. Xiao Wei Hai raised his head and glanced at Guo Liang and Huang Wei Han, nodded slightly, then set off to investigate thoroughly. At this time, in a black sedan, Li Mingyu dialed a number. Hey, the person will be sent to the detention center. I'll hand it over to you. He only said a word, then hung up on the driver. He exchanged a glance with the secretary, didn't say anything. They are all relatives of Li Mingyu. As long as it's something he orders, no matter what, they will do it. Outside the municipal bureau meeting room, Zhao Guodong looked worried, watching two approaching criminal police officers. He wanted to insist on accompanying you, but was pulled aside by Huang Weihan. Lao Wang, what exactly do you mean? He gritted his teeth and looked at Huang Weihan. They were high school classmates with a very good relationship. Huang Weihan smiled at Lao Zhao, what's the rush? Could it be that I could harm your disciple? He's not my disciple, but close enough, Zhao Guodong thought. He personally took you out on a mission on the first day, so it's considered half a disciple. He didn't bother explaining in this regard. He stared at Huang Weihan and asked, Lao Huang, give me some insight. What exactly are you going to do? Will this kid Su Lin encounter any danger? If there's no danger, then it's not handling a case. Suddenly, Wu Liang's voice sounded. He and Xiao Wei Hai came up behind them. The latter looked at you and said, Xiao Su, I might have to trouble you next. You smiled and nodded. This bit of trouble is nothing. As long as it can help Jiang Yun create a bright future, a little sacrifice is nothing. How Xiao Weihai patted your shoulder, looked at Huang Weihan, and said, Take him to the detention center. At this moment, you suddenly asked, Wait, is Wang Jianqing's body still in the detention center? After the incident, I had people guarding it 24-7. Except for our own forensic doctor, no one else has been able to approach, Huang Weihan said. You nodded and said, I want to see the forensic report. Huang Weihan didn't say anything unnecessary. He chose to believe you now. After speaking, he leaned down in front of you and said in a low voice, The inspection team will be at our Zhang Yun soon. You can work confidently. I've got your back, he said. Your eyes lit up, very excited. The inspection team is a sharp weapon of Dasha. Since they're coming, it's going to be interesting. Let's go, Huang Weihan waved his hand. Two detective brothers immediately pushed your wheelchair and headed outside. Before long, you arrived at the innermost cell of the detention center. As you walked, you noticed many familiar figures, including a few. They were subordinates of Wang Jiancheng whom you had beaten up two days ago. When those guys saw you, they all glared at you menacingly. Sorry to trouble you, brother, a detective brother said to you. A colleague placed a stack of documents on your lap. As the two of them left, you were about to open the file bag in your hand. From the next room, a cold voice came through, you corrupt cop, you're as good as dead. Even if you catch us, so what? Believe it or not, it won't be long before we all get out. By then, it won't just be you. Your family and friends, we will also settle scores with them one by one. The threatening voice continued to come from the next room. You paid no attention and instead opened the file bag directly. You pulled out the autopsy report from inside. Blunt force trauma to the back of the head, resulting in a small amount of intracranial bleeding. Due to the late discovery, resuscitation was ineffective, resulting in death. 
you carefully looked at every word. Suddenly, you noticed the last paragraph, which mentioned a large amount of pollen residue found in the victim's body, with the pollen components being bohemia and night-blooming jasmine. You furrowed your brow slightly. Although Jianyun City is also known for its floriculture, these two flowers, bohemia and night-blooming jasmine, are somewhat niche, aside from the flower market. They are rarely cultivated on a large scale elsewhere. Just as you were wondering, your expression suddenly changed. A faint floral scent wafted through the air. Countless pieces of information in your mind instantly came together, forming two names, Golden Bohemia and Night Blooming Jasmine. This was the ability bestowed by your tracking skills. At this moment, in the detention center's control room, Wang Weihan sat in front of the monitor, staring fixedly at the screen showing you. There were two other people beside him. One is the captain of the criminal investigation team too, Wu Gang, who supported you last time. The other person is Captain Chen Hua of the criminal investigation support team 3. Huang Weihan looked for a moment, then raised his head and asked, Where is Du Zhichi? Du Zhichi is the captain of the first team among the three teams under the criminal investigation support team. Upon hearing this, Captain Chen Hua spoke up, Captain Du went out, saying it was in the south of the city. They found a trace of a suspected B-level wanted criminal. Huang Weihan, upon hearing about the suspected B-level wanted criminal, didn't say anything further, but from his expression, it was clear that he was somewhat displeased at the moment. Chen Hua changed the subject, pointing to the surveillance screen and asking Huang Ji, can he really find out? Can he really find out? Hu Gang also looked curious. After all, he had just graduated from the police academy. Even we are somewhat at a loss in this case. Can he investigate it? Chen Hua added, time is tight, we can't afford to waste it. Hu Gang felt the same, Huang Ji, even if he can find out, it may take a week or even longer. We can't wait. Wang Weihan smiled and said, I don't know if he can find out or not, but I know he's no worse than you guys. This kid is brave and resourceful, a talent. Xia Ju sees potential in him, and I think it's most appropriate for him to take over. Even if he can't find out, someone else will come forward. By then, we will still be able to achieve a complete victory. At this, both captains were stunned. Hu Gang was the first to react, saying your highness, you and Xia Jushi are using him as a pawn, or to be more precise. It's bait, it's just bait, Huang Weihan admitted very bluntly. He knew that as soon as he entered the detention center, he became bait. Wouldn't that mean there's always a danger, Chen Hua also realized. There was some anxiety on his face. Huang Weihan spoke up upon hearing this, we have full surveillance. Even if there's danger, we can avoid it in time. And I don't think that kid is so weak. He could take down a group of ruthless criminals, let alone these guys. The two team leaders were slightly stunned upon hearing this, then couldn't help but nod. However, at this moment, in the surveillance footage, you suddenly raised your head and made a gesture. Seeing this, the three of them were all stunned. What did the gesture mean? Did they discover Chen Hua? Come with me, Huang Weihan suddenly stood up and walked directly outside. Chen Hua was shocked and immediately followed. It's only been 15 minutes. They were just saying you would need at least a week. This is really surprising. Hu Gang stayed in the monitoring room, looking incredulously at the surveillance footage of you. Could it be that they really discovered something? Suddenly, he saw in the surveillance footage a figure approaching the cell where you were. Duden saw the person, and Hu Gang's expression changed. Captain Du is the most senior captain in their criminal investigation team. Everyone believes that Captain Du will take over the position of the old team leader. Who would have thought that Huang Ji would airdrop into Jiang Yun City and forcefully take away the command of the support team from him? Huang stared at the surveillance video, Wu Gang called Huang Weihan, Huang's team went to Su Lin's prison cell, and as Huang Weihan was walking downstairs, he heard this and his face changed. Immediately rushed towards the direction of the prison with Chen Hua. Soon they saw the guard at the door. When they saw the two approaching, the guard's expression changed instantly. Huang Weihan didn't even give them a chance to speak, and said to Chen Hua to immediately seal off this place and take them downstairs. Chen Hua immediately pulled out his gun and pointed it at the two guards. With the situation suddenly changing, the two guards didn't dare to resist at all. They could only surrender with their hands up. Huang Weihan quickly opened the door and walked in. Chen Hua used the walkie-talkie to call for backup. In less than a minute, more than 10 people arrived at the scene and secured the exit. Then he quickly walked inside with four people. In the surveillance footage of the detention center, Du Shichi, the captain of the criminal investigation support team, stood in front of the cell. His face looked a bit unpleasant because his sudden arrival didn't cause any panic to the other party. On the contrary, a faint smile appeared on that person's face. You smile and say you shouldn't have come. Hearing this, Du Shichi's face suddenly sank, and he suddenly had a bad premonition, as if this place was like a trap. 
I just came to see who was so brave, able to single-handedly take down a den of iniquity, Du Shichi said in a deep voice, Wen Yen, your words are useless. No matter how you explain, it's useless. Your scent is very distinctive. I smelled your scent in this cell. Ha, huh, it's a joke. Isn't it normal for a criminal investigation captain to come in and interrogate prisoners? Du Shichi became even more flustered. It's very normal, but the problem is, I heard that after you came here yesterday at noon, you did not interrogate Wang Jiancheng, and he died yesterday afternoon. In the same cell, you were the last person to see Wang Jiancheng, am I right? Du Zhichi's eyes flashed with gloom. When I left, he was still very clear-headed. Yes, very clear-headed, because there was a problem with his wound. You continue to smile, looking straight into my eyes, as if seeing through everything. Now Du Zhichi was completely panicked. He suddenly raised his hand, and there was something like a syringe in his hand, but before he could make any move, stop, Lao Du, Huang Weihan suddenly appeared, pointing a gun at Du Zhichi, with an extremely cold and fierce look in his eyes. Betrayal has always been the most hated thing in their team. Du Zhichi turned his head, his face instantly turned ashen. He knew he was finished. Even his own family might be looked down upon, or worse, they might be silenced. At this point, he almost hesitated for a moment and plunged the syringe into his own neck. The potion was injected into his neck in an instant. Huang Weihan went crazy and immediately rushed up. But it was too late. Du Zhichi's face turned blue the next moment. His lips turned purple. Lao Du, why did you do this? Huang Weihan looked distressed. Lao Huang, I can't turn back. I regret my mistake. In just a few seconds, Du Zhichi lost her breath. It seems that the situation is much more serious than we imagined. Chen Shang, it's hard to imagine making a captain of the criminal investigation team willing to die. How powerful must be the mastermind behind them? Bastard! Huang Weihan roared and kicked the wall fiercely. You spoke up, now is not the time to vent anger, Wang Ji. They want our lives, so we have to take the initiative and bring them down. Huang Weihan came to his senses, looked at you, and asked, what should we do? Wen Yen, you snorted coldly, although the murderer is dead, we can still find the accomplice. Accomplice? Huang Weihan's expression changed. Who is the accomplice? Captain Huang, can you smell the floral scent in the air? You asked inexplicably. Huang Weihan nodded and said, but at this critical moment, why are you talking to me about floral scents? At this point, you spoke again, saying that you had seen Wang Jianqing's autopsy report. There was a wound at the back of his head, but such a wound absolutely couldn't have caused extensive intracranial bleeding in just one day. I've reviewed his medical records, he had asthma and high blood pressure. Ha <laughs> he had both conditions, and if he had really pulled through, I would have been surprised. What do you mean? Huang Weihan listened in a fog, completely not understanding what you meant. You explained that at night, the night-blooming jasmine emits a large amount of odor particles that can cause dizziness in patients with high blood pressure and heart disease when inhaled. In large quantities, it can directly lead to hypertensive syncope. Inhaling a large amount of bohemia can directly trigger asthma, causing difficulty in breathing. The heart beats violently and blood circulation is at least three times the normal rate. Asthma, high blood pressure, accelerated blood circulation, plus the wound on the head. What do you think the result would be? You looked at Huang Weihan as you said this. At this moment, the latter opened his mouth wide, completely bewildered. He understood every word, but when they were put together, it felt like a fantasy. Flowers can kill people? You must be joking. But looking at your serious expression, Huang Weihan was already convinced. At this point, you spoke again, saying that if you guessed correctly, a large amount of bohemia and night-blooming jasmine should have just been moved near the detention center. Huang Weihan nodded with a serious face, saying that a few days ago, a farmer from a farm a few hundred meters away brought in a large quantity of bohemia and night-blooming jasmine. After finishing speaking, he suddenly lifted his head and rushed forward without a word. Soon, the family of the flower farmer was brought to the interrogation room. Soon the results came out. The flower farmer confessed that someone wanted to buy the flowers he had previously planted. They found a new place for him, and the price offered was quite high. So, without hesitation, the flower farmer moved all the flowers over. He was planting bohemia and night-blooming jasmine. When asked about the appearance of the other party, the flower farmer said he had forgotten, as the other person was wearing a hat and sunglasses, making it difficult to see their specific features. Huang Weihan sneered at the words, indicating that this matter couldn't possibly stump him. He immediately organized his criminal investigation team to monitor the surroundings of the flower farmer's original farm, and conducted a careful screening. Finally, they discovered a target. When you saw the enlarged photo, a look of surprise appeared on your face. 
Lin Zhang and the person who went to find the flower farmer turned out to be the vice principal of the police academy. Lin Zhang and Huang Weihan looked surprised and asked, Do you know him? Very well, you nodded with a smile. Then he explained to Huang Weihan why he had been assigned to the traffic police team. He slammed his fist hard on the table and Huang Weihan cursed loudly, Traitor! You smiled and pointed to the surveillance screen, saying, Huang Ji, I think he is our breakthrough. There is definitely more to him than meets the eye, and his daughter, from what I know, is also up to no good. Leave it to me, Huang Weihan said, about to lead the team to arrest Lin Zhang and the woman. Upon hearing this, you immediately said, take me with you to arrest the two of them. How can I not be there? I promised to personally catch them. All right, I'll indulge you, Huang Weihan said with a smile. He is completely relaxed now. We've found the breakthrough, so the next steps will be easy. On the way, Huang Weihan called Xiao Weihai. After hearing this, Xiao Weihai was so shocked that he almost dropped the teacup in his hand. What are you saying? You found the breakthrough in just 15 minutes? With this kind of investigation technique, all of you in criminal investigation will be out of a job, Huang Weihan. After hanging up Huang Weihan's call, Xiao Weihai smiled and looked across at the middle-aged man in a black suit, with a gentle smile but a glint of gold in his eyes. Chief Ma, sorry to interrupt, but there's something to report, said the subordinate. Ma Jenhua across from him furrowed his brow, not understanding the intentions of his old comrade before him. As the head of the inspection team, he was tasked with investigating some cases in Jiangyun City. But as soon as he arrived, he was assigned to Xiao Weihai's side. He couldn't understand what was going on, because he had absolute trust in Xiao Weihai. However, from the moment he arrived, he noticed that this old Xia seemed to be unwell and he had a feeling that his mental state was off. He was assigned to Xiao Weihai's side, and he didn't understand what this meant, because he had absolute trust in Xiao Weihai. However, from the moment he arrived, he noticed that this old Xia seemed to be unwell, and he had a feeling that his mental state was off. Could it be that my old comrade has been driven crazy by this case? He couldn't help but ask, Lao Xia, can you tell me the truth? Is it too much pressure? I know Jiang Yun City is in the southwest, and crime rates are already high. If there's anything wrong with your health, you should go to the hospital for a checkup in time. Upon hearing this, Xiao Weihai's face instantly darkened, and he scolded, You're the one who's sick. La Ma, can't you hope for me to be okay? Well, it looks normal now. Ma Jenhua smiled. Clearing his throat, Xiao Weihai spoke, La Ma, your inspection team can start, but we need to take action on our end as well. What do you mean? Ma Jenhua looked puzzled. You'll find out soon enough. Xiao Weihai chuckled. Just then, Huo Liang suddenly pushed the door open. He approached Xiao Weihai, took out two commendation reports, and in addition, a stack of bonus application forms. All of these were submitted by the following people, he said. Zhang Wengue from the Zhanxian police station. And also, there are two third-class merits for Su Qingshan from the Longhua police station, and nearly 20,000 yuan in bonuses. Xiao Weihai's face instantly lit up with a smile. Good, very good indeed. Without saying another word, he directly signed on top of them without even looking at the content. Seeing this, team leader Ma's face immediately darkened. He reached out and held the stack of documents, saying, Lao Xia, you signed without even looking at them. This is not in line with the rules. This is not proper. Xiao Wei Hai smiled and said, rest assured, I have a plan in mind. Lao Ma, your inspection team's visit to our Jiang Yun city this time. I guarantee it will be the easiest inspection job in your career. Ma Jianhuo frowned again. Without saying much, Zhou Xiao Wei Hai took out the documents and handed them to Guo Liang. By the way, let the traffic police department award a medal on their own. We won't show up. After this operation is over, that kid should come to us. Guo Liang nodded in understanding and then left. What does this mean? It's still someone from the traffic police department. Ma Jianhuo was even more puzzled. Two different systems, and yet the police department has been involved. Has Zhu Zhang Yun City become this dark already? Thinking of this, Ma Jenua's face became even more grim. Lao Xia, I feel that the system in your Jiangyun city is very chaotic. Including you, everyone needs to be investigated. You can investigate as you please, I don't care, Xiao Wei Hai said, then rubbed his chin and asked Lao Ma, at what stage is your inspection team now? Ma Jenua, upon hearing this, solemnly said, the people under my command are still investigating. Even if I knew, I couldn't tell you. Have you forgotten about organizational discipline? Then let's compare speeds, how about that? Xiao Wei Hai smiled. Compare what speed? Ma Jinhua frowned. With a sly smile, Xiao Wei Hai said, let's just compare who can solve the problem first. All right, let's compare, Ma Jinhua narrowed his eyes. He had a gut feeling that something was off with his old comrade, but he didn't know if it was good or bad. 
On the other side, in a magnificent club in Jiangyun City, Wang Jiangwo's face was very dark. Two liters, according to your plan, my brother is dead, but that, traffic cop is still alive. You said you would make him bury my brother. So, Xiao Wang, don't be in a hurry. Some things need to take time. We failed this time. But there is a more sophisticated move, a voice of an old man sounded. The man was in a neat suit, exuding a sense of dignity. Zhang Lao, don't deceive me. Now, you are also in danger, right? Wang Jiangwo coldly smiled, I heard that the inspection team has already arrived. It probably won't be long before our ship sinks. In that case, I might as well just take care of that traffic cop myself, and then make a quick getaway. The table was slammed loudly. Li Mingyu pointed at Wang Jiangwo's nose and scolded, Wang Jiangwo, how dare you talk to me, your superior, like that? Are you asking for trouble? Wang Jiangwo smirked coldly, Li Mingyu, you still can't scare me. I come from a rough background. I don't know how many times I've narrowly escaped death. You're still a little green. Hearing this arrogant tone, Li Mingyu's face became extremely unpleasant. But just as he was about to speak, the old man spoke again, I have already had someone report that young traffic cop. Just watch, he will soon be taken care of by the inspection team. And as for my long stay in Jiangyun City, don't you think I have made some arrangements? Xiao Wang, when looking at problems, you can't just look at the surface. Some things are more terrifying than you can imagine. If you act impulsively, it won't just be you who dies, it might also bring trouble to your family. I heard you sent your wife and children to Hongchang. Sorry, but I also have a few friends there. Upon hearing this, Wang Jiangwo's face changed drastically. Calm down a bit. Just as I said, things can't be judged by appearances. Do you think this is a crisis? Maybe it could even create an opportunity for me. You should know that this time, my report is not just about that little traffic cop. And our old leader in Jiangyun City, if he falls, who can take over his position? Hearing this, Wang Jiangwo no longer had the same confidence as before. Sorry, Mr. Zhang, I know what to do now. Alright, now that we've finished the formalities, Xiao Wang, I heard that two foreign language teachers have arrived here. Mr. Zhang said with a smile, his face slightly flushed. Yes, I'll arrange it for you right away. Wang Jiangwo cursed inwardly, but he didn't dare to refuse. He immediately got up and left. After he left, Mr. Zhang narrowed his eyes, a hint of ruthlessness flashing in his gaze. On the other side, Ma Jinua came out of Xiao Weihai's office, immediately returned to the task force's office. Just as he entered, two young men in their thirties came up to him. Chen Shua, Yang Jing, both of you immediately helped me with the investigation. Xiao Weihai said directly to the two. Both of them were stunned, Captain Ma, isn't Xiao Weihai your old comrade? Could he also have a problem? Hard to say. But I want to know what that guy is up to, Ma Jenawa said. The two nodded. Then, a man named Yang Jing handed over a document. Captain Ma, someone reported a traffic police officer by name, accusing him of using violence, injuring multiple people, and even ran over the victim with his car. It's outrageous. Hearing this, Ma Jenawa's face turned red with anger. What's the name of that traffic police officer? Su Lin and Yang Jing immediately answered. Ma Jenawa frowned slightly suddenly feeling that this name was somewhat familiar. The next moment, he remembered, as if he had seen this name in the document signed by Xiao Weihai. He saw this name. Investigate thoroughly, he said coldly. The two then left upon hearing this. Ma Jenua shook his head and sighed, Old Xia, please don't do anything foolish. Just when the inspection team is preparing to investigate you, you are out with the criminal investigation detachment brothers to arrest Lin Su. Why does Xiao Su want to arrest Lin Su first? Huang Weihan was somewhat puzzled. Shouldn't it be Lin Zhengha first? You said that Huang Ji caught Lin Zhengha. As long as he withstands the interrogation, it will be difficult for us to find evidence. But if we break through Ling Su, we may directly obtain some evidence of Lin Zhengha's crime. It will be easier to launch a surprise attack at that time. Huang Weihan's eyes lit up and he laughed. You really think further ahead than me. I must help you finish the branches later. The position of the captain is definitely reserved for you then I won't be polite. You grinned as if Huang Weihan was joking. You will soon take rapid action to implement it. Why do you have the right to arrest me? My dad is Lin Zhengha, and he will definitely make you pay for this. When the woman was brought to the interrogation room, she was still making a scene. Long time no see, Lin Su. When Lin Su saw your familiar face, her face suddenly became grim. So it's you, Su Lin. Lin Su's eyes suddenly sharpened, and she sneered, even if you arrest me, so what? I haven't broken the law, and you have no evidence. You can only detain me for 24 hours at most, then you have to let me go. Wen Yen, you smirked, oh, so Miss Lin understands the law, but you seem to be quite forgetful. 
Let me help you remember. Wang Ziyu, Li Xiaoxiao, Zhang Xiner, Liang Yu, as you casually mentioned each name. Lin Su's face instantly turned pale, and her body began to tremble. I said I would personally arrest you. After reciting a list of names, Su Lin looked at Lin Su indifferently and said, Not only will I personally arrest you, but I can also testify against you. With just a few words, Su Lin broke through Lin Su's psychological defense. To be honest, Su Lin had no respect for women like Lin Su. It's not her fault for being ugly, but it's her fault for being intimidating. As for her harming so many students, she deserved no sympathy. But no matter what, he represented the law enforcement, and he couldn't abuse his power. Before this, he didn't bother Lin Su not because he forgot about her evil deeds, but because he didn't have the authority. And now, he had Xia Wei Hai's authorization, so it was not a problem at all. An hour ago, Huang Weihan had already sent his men to bring the victims and their families to the criminal investigation detachment to conduct a comprehensive investigation and gather evidence of Lin Su's crimes. Lin Su, she can no longer walk out of here. Under the interrogation of Huang Weihan, many dark secrets of the Lin family were uncovered, including Lin Jingha's collusion with leaders in the city, corruption, and harm to police academy students, among others. Even a series of intentional injury and murder cases all came to light. Huang Weihan quickly took action, and in less than 20 minutes, Lin Jingha was brought to the criminal investigation detachment. When he was handcuffed and walked into the criminal investigation detachment, although Lin Jingha was nervous, he still held on to hope. Behind him were Li Mingyu and Zhang Jingsheng. If they knew they had been caught, they would definitely find a way to help him escape punishment. Walking into the interrogation room, when Lin Jingha saw Su Lin sitting in a wheelchair, his eyes suddenly froze, revealing a hint of panic. Although they hadn't met many times, he had always tried to find ways to ruin Su Lin and completely crush him. So when Su Lin appeared in the interrogation room facing him, his panic and confusion burst forth instantly. Huan, shouldn't this person be here? Taking a deep breath, Lin Jinghao looked at Su Lin with a cold gaze and said to Huang Weihan, who was presiding over the interrogation. Huang Weihan smiled and said, Vice Principal Lin, I'm sorry, but Su Lin is a party involved in this case, a victim. At the same time, he is also fully responsible for this case. Nonsense, where did you learn your laws? As a party involved, he should avoid suspicion. Don't you know such a simple rule? Lin Jing has said sternly, although in the eyes of outsiders, his sternness lacked justice. Vice Principal Lin, I'm sorry, although I am a party involved, your case is too big, so I cannot avoid it. Please continue, see if you can find a reason for me to leave. Su Lin smiled and raised his hand. You. Lin Jingha's face turned pale. Su Lin smiled and said, let me show you a video. As he finished speaking, Huang Weihan immediately turned his laptop around, pointing the screen at Lin Jingha, and started playing the footage of Lin Su. It's all my father, my father did it. I actually wanted to apologize to them and compensate them. But my father helped me clear my name and warned those people not to speak. Also, Tang Nian's son killed someone with a car, and my father used his connections to settle it. He has a relationship with Li Mingyu in the city. Hearing Lin Su blurt out all his questions like a machine gun, Lin Zhengha's face became increasingly pale. Do you feel like a failure? This is the person you've been protecting, even risking your life for. In the end, she sold you out without hesitation. Su Lin's mouth curled into a mocking smile and continued, I'm not doing this for myself, but for the students and families who have been harmed by you, to seek justice. After speaking, he pushed his wheelchair and turned to walk towards the door of the interrogation room. Huang Weihan watched Su Lin's departing figure, feeling somewhat shocked. This kid really understands human nature. Starting with Lin Su, first of all, she is a woman, and secondly, in the face of a series of evidence, she has no way to deny it. After breaking through the opponent's defense, it is equivalent to breaking through Lin Jingha's defense. Neither the father nor the daughter can escape now. Continue the interrogation, Huang Weihan said to Hu Gang. Lin Su started talking, but Lin Jingha remained silent, believing that this old man must have many secrets. Just as Su Lin had left the interrogation room, he saw Chen Hua and two young men in suits, with a righteous look on their faces, walking towards him. Chen Hua's expression was somewhat unpleasant. He came to Su Lin's side and said, Su Lin, these two comrades from the inspection team are looking for you. Inspection team? Coincidentally, at this moment, Huang Weihan also walked out of the interrogation room and saw those two people. His brows furrowed tightly. What's going on? He asked in a deep voice. Chen Shua looked at Su Lin, who was sitting in a wheelchair, and frowned. He said, someone has reported you for using excessive force, causing physical harm to others, and even causing a fatal car accident. Now, we want to understand the situation from you. Su Lin was stunned. Excessive force, he didn't deny that, 
he did use violence once or twice, but it was also because of the circumstances. But to say that he caused physical harm to others, caused a fatal car accident, that's nonsense. Huang Weihan looked at Su Lin and coldly said, Who said that? Bring the informant here, I want to see the report. It's ridiculous. Su Lin has only been working for less than 10 days. Where did he use excessive force, cause physical harm, or cause a fatal car accident? Who said that? Let me tell you, in these less than 10 days, he has arrested more than 20 criminals, including a class B wanted criminal. Do you know what a class B wanted criminal is? With these words, Chen Shua suddenly laughed. He said, Captain Huang Weihan, right? I know everything you just said. Just half an hour ago, we have already investigated all of Su Lin's files, including his records in the police academy. We also learned from some of his classmates and juniors. Of course, we don't believe that Su Lin is that kind of person. But personally, I think it's best for him to live under our protection for now. Because someone wants to harm him. The investigation by the inspection team was very powerful. In less than an hour, they almost exposed all of Su Lin's secrets. When Ma Genoa saw Su Lin's information, his mouth opened wide. Damn it, I'd been tricked by Lao Xia. This kid is Lao Xia's trump card. Suddenly realizing this, Ma Genoa couldn't sit still. They made a bet, and even though they didn't have to pay money if they lost, it was still embarrassing. Thinking of Xia Weihai's smug look, he felt uncomfortable all over, so he sent Chen Shua and Yang Jin over, thinking they could pick some peaches or something. Unfortunately, it was too late. When Lin Jinghe's interrogation ended and Chen Hua brought the testimony to Huang Weihan's office, Huang Weihan immediately stood up and shouted, Take action, close the net. In a spacious office in the official building of Jiang Yun City, eight people sat together. These eight people were the core of Jiang Yun City, from the eldest Li Suyuan to the last ranked Xiao Weihai. Besides them, there was an unexpected guest, Ma Genua. The latter sat next to Xiao Weihai, looking at the triumphant expression on his face, grinding his teeth. What's wrong, Lao Ma, feeling uncomfortable? Xiao Weihai deliberately teased in a low voice. Ma Genua said, Lao Xia, you've hidden well. You hid your trump card in the traffic police department, then turned the tables and completely changed the situation. Impressive. Xiao Weihai shook his head and smiled, saying, Lao Ma, this wasn't my plan. Su Lin, that kid, was deliberately arranged by Lin Junha to the traffic police department. I just borrowed someone else's chessboard and played my own game. Regardless, your move was impressive. Ma Genoa gave a thumbs up. He had doubted his old comrade before, but now it seemed that his old comrade had been prepared for a long time. Ahem. Just at this moment, sitting in the first seat, wearing gold-rimmed glasses, Li Suyuan cleared his throat. He glanced at everyone and his gaze swept over Zhang Jingsheng and Li Mingyu, saying lightly, I called you all here today to inform you that I have been anonymously reported for accepting a bribe of 10 million yuan. Regarding this report, the leader of the inspection team, Ma, has conducted a thorough investigation and has discovered some unusual things. Oh, by the way, we have also exposed a group of internal worms within the organization. For example, Vice Principal Lin Zhengha of Jiang Yun Police Academy. When the three words Lin Jingha were mentioned, Li Suyuan intentionally or unintentionally glanced at Li Mingyu and Zhang Jingsheng. The latter still had a calm expression on his face, but Li Mingyu's expression changed drastically. Lin Jingha knew a lot, even enough to overturn their entire boat. Although Zhang Jingsheng had no expression on his face, he had already stirred up a storm in his heart. Lin Jingha was above Li Mingyu, and Li Mingyu relied on him. If these two fell, then the next one would be him. Moreover, he clearly felt a hint of killing intent in Li Suyuan's gaze, indicating that he intended to take action. He would make the first move, report the other party by name, and the other party would directly expose all his secrets. A chilling feeling instantly surged in his heart. Among us, some people have given up their beliefs, forgotten their oath to serve the people, and have been using their power to amass wealth, colluding with some unscrupulous businessmen in the society for forced buying and selling, illegal possession. The core meeting lasted for more than an hour. When Ma Genoa stood up, Zheng Jingsheng, the second in command, and Li Mingyu, the fourth, turned pale instantly. Creak. The door of the meeting room was pushed open, and a group of people walked in swiftly. When they placed the summons in front of Zheng Jingsheng and Li Mingyu, the two immediately collapsed. If it was just the city, they wouldn't have the power to deal with them. But now they were facing the inspection team from the capital, the most authoritative supervisory institution, armed with the sword of justice. At the same time, on Huang Weihan's side, a joint force consisting of the Special Police Brigade, the armed police, and police forces from various jurisdictions was mobilized to thoroughly eliminate the criminal forces led by Wang Jianong. 
A team of nearly 1,000 people spread out and swept through all the enterprises and entertainment venues under Wang Jiangong's name in one day, arresting nearly 300 people, completely dismantling this criminal gang that had plagued Jiang Yun City for nearly 10 years. The entire Jiang Yun City was thoroughly cleansed from top to bottom, giving the people a bright future. When the people saw the news the next day, they all applauded. It was still the same restaurant, the same private room, and the same few people. Su Lin and Zhang Chao raised their glasses to each other, celebrating their reunion. After three rounds of drinks, everyone started chatting. Zhang Chao leaned closer to Su Lin and said, Old Su, Lin Jingha has been arrested now, and it is very likely that he will be sentenced to life imprisonment. Lin Su, that woman, will also face at least 10 years. You finally got rid of this grudge. Su Lin nodded with a smile, indeed, he had finally let go of his grudge. To be honest, he didn't mind if others liked him, even if he was a bit ugly, as long as they pursued him in a normal way, he could simply reject them. But Lin Su, that woman, was as venomous as a snake and scorpion, stopping at nothing. If it weren't for his system, he might have been killed by her. But now, the clouds have cleared, and it's finally over. Su Lin, have you written your transfer report? Li Xinxin asked somewhat shyly. She had confessed to Su Lin before and was rejected, but now she had let go of it. It didn't matter as long as she liked him, and it didn't affect anything. If they couldn't be together, they could choose someone else. After all, they were still young. Su Lin saw the shy look on Li Xinxin's face and felt helpless. It's true that this girl wasn't bad looking, but he didn't feel anything for her. Thinking of this, a graceful figure suddenly appeared in his mind, and he couldn't help but slap his head. It seemed he had forgotten something. It seemed that he had promised that woman, but because of his actions, he stood her up. Thinking of the string of unanswered calls, he felt a sense of guilt in his heart. I haven't written the transfer report. I've been busy writing action reports these past few days. He raised the glass in his hand and toasted to everyone, saying, the last toast, my wounds haven't healed properly yet. Although he has a strong physical fitness, it will take at least half a month for the gunshot wounds on his legs and shoulders to heal, and for others, it would take at least a couple of months. Are you injured? Suddenly, two crisp voices sounded. One of them was Li Xinxin's, and the other came from behind him, accompanied by a faint fragrance in the air. Su Lin turned his head and immediately looked embarrassed when he saw the person. Why are you here? Standing behind him was Yan Yao, who he had stood up for five days and had at least 80 phone calls with. There was a hint of anger in her eyes, and her chest heaved as if she wanted to tear Su Lin apart. You have time to drink, how interesting. Yan Yao felt like she had wasted her worries on him these past few days. No, even if she gave them to a dog, the dog would at least kneel and lick a few times. This guy, she had called him so many times, didn't he know to let her know he was safe? Su Lin, um, I'm really sorry, I was genuinely busy and forgot. He spoke up. Busy drinking? Yen Yao asked coldly. All right. He felt that if he said anything else, he would be making excuses. Yen Yao didn't say anything else, but took out a receipt from her bag and placed it on the table in front of Su Lin. You said you would compensate me for the repair costs of my car, right? This is the receipt, give me the money later. She said, elegantly nodded towards the stunned Zheng Chao and the others, smiled, and then turned and left. Su Lin didn't chase after her, but picked up the receipt on the table. Damn! 620,000! He exclaimed, his eyes almost popping out. A sentence instantly popped into his mind, Woman, you're suspected of extortion. Su Lin picked up the receipt and left. After he left, Zhang Chao and the others came back to their senses. Damn, that woman is so beautiful. A fairy in the mortal world. Lao Zhang, how does Su Lin know her? Their relationship seems unusual. Humph, just an old woman. Xin Xin, you're jealous. Several people spoke up one after another, Li Xin Xin had a look of disdain on her face, making the male comrades feel a sense of desolation. They were all men, why was someone else eating from their bowl and even eyeing the pot? And their own group, they could only stand by and drool. Ranji, doffing, my heart hurts. Zheng Chao covered his heart and looked at Guo Xiaoran and Wang Feng. Brother, don't say that, my heart is already broken. Wang Feng covered his face and burst into tears. Su Lin hurriedly went downstairs and saw Yen Yao open the car door and sit in the driver's seat. Without saying a word, he approached and opened the passenger door and sat in. Yen Yao looked at him and coldly asked, What are you doing here? Su Lin held the receipt and said seriously, Beauty, I'll give you a chance, take back this receipt, otherwise you'll be in big trouble. Yen Yao? What big trouble? Please tell me. Su Lin had a mysterious smile on his face and said, Do you know that you're suspected of extortion? I looked at it earlier, your car only had a broken front bumper and headlight, no matter how you repair it, it won't cost 620,000, right? Don't forget, I'm a traffic police officer. 
Even if I can't afford a luxury car like yours, I still know a little about prices. Are you sure you know the price? Yen Yao smirked, then leaned slightly closer to Su Lin. The fragrance filled the air, and Su Lin was scared and immediately leaned back, raising his hand and saying, What are you trying to do? Ha! Huh? Yen Yao sneered, reached under the passenger seat, and took out something similar to a contract, throwing it directly into Su Lin's arms. Su Lin opened it with confusion, and sure enough, it was a car purchase contract. But the words on it made him feel uneasy. It was all in English, but he could understand it. Bentley Mulsanne, Custom Edition, Total Car Price 1. 12 million euros. 1. 12 million. Euros? Su Lin felt his lips trembling. Poverty really limits imagination. He thought a Bentley would cost around 4 to 5 million. Even if he damaged a headlight and bumper, it would cost at most 100,000 to fix. He could apply to the leader for funding. With 620,000, he could buy a fully equipped 5 series and still have some left over. If he asked the captain himself, he would probably get scolded. He looked at Yen Yao's exquisite and flawless face, feeling a bit embarrassed, and asked, Um, did you get insurance? No, since you said you would compensate, I didn't get insurance. Yen Yao's lips curved slightly. This guy is interesting. If Su Lin knew that she considered him interesting, he would probably be infuriated. Hearing this, Su Lin's mouth twitched. I really can't afford to compensate for your car. Hum. Yen Yao nodded. Hum. Su Lin looked surprised and asked, and then? There's no one then. Since you can't afford it, I can only go to your superiors. If that doesn't work, I'll go to the city. Stop, stop, stop. Su Lin raised his hand and said, is it necessary to go that far? I don't have to go if you don't want me to. This amount of money isn't a big deal for me. How about this, let's find another way to settle. Yen Yao smiled and said, okay, tell me, take off your clothes. What? Su Lin was startled. Sister, even though you're beautiful, I don't sell myself. What nonsense about selling myself, I'm a police officer. Are you going to take them off or not? Yen Yao's eyes flickered with a hint of coldness as she slowly took out her phone. Fine, 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 I'll take them off. Su Lin gritted his teeth. It wouldn't be a loss to take off his clothes in front of this beauty. Men, it's normal to walk around shirtless on the street. Without hesitation, he took off his shirt, but in the process, he accidentally touched his wound, causing him to suck in a breath of cold air. Yen Yao's gaze focused on him, and she immediately noticed the knife wound she saw a few days ago when she first met Su Lin, and then she noticed the gunshot wound on his shoulder. Both wounds were still bandaged. She was shocked and her face changed. She reached out to touch it, but her hand trembled slightly and she slowly retracted it. Her gaze moved away from the wounds and looked at his perfect and muscular body, her cheeks slightly blushing. Um, take off your pants too, she said. What? Sister, don't go too far. Su Lin immediately became guarded. This woman is not serious. Too far? Little brother, you probably don't know what I'm capable of. Yen Yao looked at him with a smile, her eyes curved like a crescent moon, extremely charming. Su Lin gritted his teeth, I have my limits. Ha ha, Yen Yao became even happier. She thought teasing this guy would bring endless joy to her nervous work and life. All right, keep your limits and get out of the car. She felt that her request seemed a bit excessive, so she directly asked Su Lin to get out of the car. Goodbye. Su Lin got out of the car and ran away as if he would be devoured by Yen Yao if he ran too slowly. Women, they're like ferocious beasts. Ha ha ha. Laughter like silver bells came from the Bentley behind. Yen Yao looked at his back, laughing and laughing, her pretty face slightly blushing. The reason she agreed to meet Su Lin was because she had witnessed him risking his life to save a child, even at the cost of his own injuries. On the day she was stood up, she saw a large group of emergency support and heard the words armed resistance against the law, which made her worry about the young man she had only met once. Su Lin's complete disappearance made her even more anxious. Her inner kindness made it impossible for her to ignore the life and death of this young man. Seeing him again today, and seeing all the scars on his body, she became even more certain that he was an unknown hero. There are some indescribable feelings in my heart, especially when he brings joy to himself, Yen Yao feels a sweet taste. TSK. She suddenly spat at herself, blushing and driving away. At 7 o'clock the next morning, Su Lin was still sleeping soundly at home, and a phone call woke him up. Little brat, hurry up and come to the team, quickly, there's a big deal. The phone connected, Zhao Guodong excitedly shouted on the other end. Zhao team, why are you going crazy so early in the morning? I'm still on sick leave. Su Lin muttered. Zhao Guodong, sick leave my ass, get up quickly and come to receive your medal. The deputy captain and director Xiao will personally present it to you, they will be here soon, hurry up. Su Lin's eyes widened at the words, and a look of joy appeared on his face. 
A Medal of Merit is an honor and affirmation for anyone in the police system. Su Lin knew that he had done something meritorious and had long been looking forward to the day when he could wear the Medal of Merit, but he didn't expect it to come so soon. He immediately put on his clothes, washed up, and hurriedly left the house, rushing to the traffic police squadron. The taxi had just stopped in front of the squadron gate, and as soon as he got out of the car, he saw three cars arriving at the squadron gate at the same time. All three cars had police license plates, and when the driver of the front car saw Su Lin, he immediately stopped the car and rolled down the window. Huang Ji. Seeing the other person, Su Lin greeted him. Huang Weihan's serious face rarely showed a smile, and said, Xiao Su, I'm here today to see you in the limelight, hurry up and go in. Su Lin nodded excitedly and walked into the squadron. In the conference room of the squadron, as soon as Su Lin entered, Captain Zhao Guodong applauded first. Applause thundered, and dozens of traffic police and auxiliary police officers from the first traffic police squadron all looked at Su Lin with smiles on their faces. Especially Yang Wei and Fang Wei, they were particularly excited, their hands almost turning red from clapping. Soon, footsteps sounded behind Su Lin, and then several big shots walked into the conference room. First was a tall middle-aged man with thick eyebrows and big eyes. He was wearing a traffic police uniform and smiled as he glanced at everyone. Deputy Captain Zhao Guodong hurriedly stepped forward, saluted, and called out. Su Lin and the others also stood up straight and saluted. The person who came was Lu Gung, the deputy captain of the Jiang Yun City Traffic Police Brigade. Seeing this group of spirited young people, Lu Gung's smile grew even wider, and his eyes narrowed. He came to Su Lin, took the initiative to shake hands with him, and said, Comrade Xiao Su, you have really given our traffic police captain face. I don't think anyone will dare to say in the future that our traffic police can only stand guard and check cars. Su Lin held the hand of the big shot in front of him with some excitement, and smiled happily. Old Lu, I don't like to hear you say that. Who said that our traffic police can only stand guard and check cars? That's a blatant slander. A voice came, and another person walked in from the door, surprisingly the director of the Municipal Public Security Bureau, Xiao Weihai. Behind Xiao Weihai, there was also Guo Liang, the director of the sub-bureau, and Huang Weihan, the captain of the Criminal Investigation Brigade. For Su Lin, except for Huang Weihan, these were all big shots. Lu Gung solemnly shook hands with Xiao Weihai and said, Old Xia, you may not have said it, but there are plenty of rumors. You said it yourself, those are just rumors. But rest assured, from today on, in our system, there will definitely be no more rumors about you. Xia Weihai held his hand and said, That's good. Lu Gung smiled. Xia Weihai smiled and asked, All right, let's get to the point. Do you want to go first or should I? Lu Gung, the people under my command, of course I'll go first. As he said that, he took out a script from his pocket, glanced at the excited crowd, and loudly read, To the Jiang Yun City Traffic Police Brigade, 1st Traffic Police Squadron, all police officers and auxiliary police officers. Due to the continuous success in solving multiple cases of theft, kidnapping, murder, and combating criminal forces by the entire team of police officers from September 11th to 24th, the Traffic Police 1st Brigade is hereby awarded a collective third-class merit as an encouragement for their outstanding performance and teamwork in the face of danger. Clap, clap, clap. As the content of the script was read aloud, the brothers of the traffic police team applauded excitedly, their faces flushed with excitement. It should be noted that they rarely receive any medals or honors throughout the year, so receiving a third-class merit once is enough to make all of them excited. However, this is just the beginning. After personally handing a third-class merit medal and a commendation issued by superiors to Zhao Guodong, Lu Gung returned to his original position and took out another script. Due to the outstanding performance of traffic police officers Yang Wei and Fang Wei during the operation of the 917 major case, where they fearlessly risked their lives to protect the people's property, Yang Wei is hereby awarded a personal third-class merit, and Fang Wei is also awarded a personal third-class merit. We hope that both of you will continue to work hard and serve the people. The 917 major case refers to the case at the Ziawantan sand mining site. Although both of them were basically supporting roles, they did indeed fearlessly risk their lives and were extremely brave, so it is reasonable for them to receive this third-class merit. After the announcement, Lu Gung personally awarded the two officers their medals and presented them with commendations. Finally, he returned to his original position and looked at Su Lin with a smile on his face. He took out the last document from his pocket and loudly read, Comrade Su Lin, on September 11th, you successfully solved the kidnapping and murder case and helped the police capture the culprit. In the following two days, you arrested more than 20 thieves and seized over 2 million yuan in dirty money. On September 12, you bravely injured yourself while arresting a Class B wanted criminal. And in the 917 major case, you fearlessly and successfully helped the police destroy a large hidden criminal den, 
killing one wanted criminal and assisting in the arrest of 11 wanted criminals. After the joint meeting of the Jiangyun City Traffic Police Detachment and the Jiangyun City Bureau, it has been decided to award Comrade Su Lin a second-class merit and promote him to the rank of police superintendent as an encouragement. Clap, clap, clap. The entire conference room resounded with deafening applause. Su Lin immediately stepped forward and stood at attention, saluting. Lu Gong approached him, took out a second-class merit medal from a red box, personally put it on Su Lin, and handed him the commendation order. Xiao Su, congratulations. He patted Su Lin's shoulder with a smile on his face. Although he was happy, there was also a hint of helplessness on his face. Outstanding talents are ultimately difficult to retain, and he was well aware of this. The applause rang out again, and Su Lin straightened his chest and saluted everyone. At this point, Lu Gong had completed his mission and stepped aside. Xiao Weihai stepped forward, looking at Su Lin with a smile on his face. At this moment, Su Lin's face was full of excitement. Wasn't it just a third-class merit? How did it suddenly become a second-class merit? He couldn't believe it, as everyone said that receiving a second-class merit was as easy as lying down. But considering his injuries, if it were someone else, they might have really received it lying down. Comrade Su Lin, I still have something here. Just as he was rejoicing over his case, Xiao Weihai spoke up. Su Lin looked up, his face filled with confusion. Something else? Xiao Weihai took out another document from his pocket and began to read, due to the assistance of comrade Su Lin from the traffic police 1st brigade in successfully solving a murder case during a cleanup operation and finding important clues, which helped us eradicate a tumor that had been entrenched in Jianyun City for over 10 years, it has been decided by the city bureau party committee meeting to award comrade Su Lin a second class merit. When Xiao Weihai mentioned the words second class merit, Su Lin almost went into a state of shock. One wasn't enough, now there's another one. He had only been a traffic police officer for a little over 10 days, yet he directly received two second-class merits. Such a terrifying record, it's probably impossible to find another person like him in the entire Dixia. No, he was unprecedented. You know, he is a traffic police officer. He has received two second-class merits and has been promoted from a probationary officer to a first-level police inspector. The surprise came a bit too fast and caught him off guard. Looking at the two medals on his chest, it feels like a dream. It wasn't until Lu Gung personally replaced his epaulets that he came back to his senses and looked at the single bar and three four-pointed stars on his shoulder. His current administrative level is at least a deputy department level, right? Don't look, it's a department level position. Lu Gung said with a smile. Yes. Su Lin straightened his body and shouted loudly. Lu Gung patted his shoulder, turned around, and the smile disappeared from his face. Zhao Guodong, come with me. Zhao Guodong immediately followed him obediently upon hearing this. The two went outside, and Lu Gung's face instantly turned gloomy as he said coldly, I went to the provincial office to study for a while, and you can't even handle such a small matter? Do you know how many pairs of eyes are watching Su Lin right now? Couldn't you have given me a call? Zhao Guodong felt wronged and said, Captain, I make more than 10 calls a day, don't I? Not only couldn't I get through to you, you didn't even bother to reply. What can I do? The political commissar told me to find you, but I have to be able to find you, right? Lu Gung's mouth twitched. It seemed that he did see missed calls a few days ago, but he had no intention of replying. It was hard enough to go out and study, and take a break. Who would have thought that such a thing would happen? He really wanted to keep Su Lin. In just half a month, their traffic police squadron had received a collective third-class merit, two individual third-class merits, and Su Lin's two second-class merits. It could be said that they were soaring to new heights and gaining fame. If he stayed in the team for a year or two, what about it? Without saying anything else, he would definitely have a chance to enter the provincial office. But now, with so many people watching, to be honest, he couldn't hold on for long. In that case, Lu Gung spoke to Zhao Guodong, saying, Don't say anything, ignore anyone who tries to talk to you, just say it's with my consent. I'm leaving now, I'll continue my studies. Oh, tell Su Lin that we have already reported the repair cost for that car two days ago, so he can focus on his work. I spared no expense for him. After saying that, he turned around and ran outside. Wait. Lao Lu, why are you running? Just at that moment, Xiao Weihai walked out and saw Lu Gung quickly leaving. He hurriedly chased after him. However, the more he chased, the faster Lu Gung ran. In the blink of an eye, he rushed outside and quickly left in a car. This old guy. Xiao Weihai glared, knowing very well that Lu Gung was avoiding him. He turned around angrily and returned to Zhao Guodong, saying, Xiao Zhao, no matter what, we must transfer Su Lin. You should know that his most suitable position is in the criminal investigation department. Zhao Guodong nodded in agreement, saying, Director Xia, you're right. 
but you don't need to talk to me, you have to talk to our team leader. Xiao Wei Hai. He regretted it. If he had known, he would have followed earlier. But then he showed a cold smile on his face. What's the use of avoiding? This person is already determined by him. He thought to himself, if the team leader doesn't show up for half a month, how can you transfer him? Xiao Huang, let's go. He opened the door to the meeting room and said to Huang Weihan, who was still getting close to Su Lin. Huang Weihan was stunned for a moment, walked out, and asked, Director Xia, is it done? Xia Weihai shook his head, not yet, but don't worry, this person will definitely be in your criminal investigation department. It will take at most half a month for me to arrange it. Ha! Zhao Wodong sneered. If our team leader doesn't show up for half a month, how can you transfer him? Xia Weihai noticed him and his mouth slightly curved, revealing a sinister smile. He said, Xiao Zhao, since we can't get the person, can we discuss something? Can we borrow you for a few days, just a few days? There have been several major criminal cases recently, and I would like to ask Su Lin for help. Criminal cases, or rather major cases, you know the negative impact they have caused. I want to give the people and the victims a satisfactory answer as soon as possible. With these words, Zhao Guodong couldn't refuse. They were all serving the people, and if they refused to help Su Lin, they would probably be scolded by their superiors when they found out. Not to mention the higher-ups, even the ordinary people would have grievances against them. Okay, borrowing is fine, but you have to make it clear how many days you want to borrow. Zhao Guodong said solemnly. Seven days, we'll borrow for seven days, how about that? Xiao Weihai also didn't overdo it and gave a number. Okay, I can make that decision. Zhao Guodong nodded. After all, it was just borrowing, nothing serious. Su Lin, come out for a moment. Xiao Weihai smiled and immediately walked into the meeting room, asking Su Lin to come out. Xia Bureau, Zhao Team, Huang Branch, what's going on? Su Lin looked puzzled. He had a feeling that he was going to be transferred, and he couldn't help but feel excited. Unexpectedly, Xia Weihai said, Xiao Su, we want to borrow you for a few days to the criminal investigation support team. There are several major cases over there, and we would like you to help. Su Lin was stunned for a moment, just borrowing? But soon he felt relieved, it didn't matter. After all, he was doing well in the traffic police brigade. The whole team treated him like a little ancestor, even the cafeteria ant served him double portions of food. Life was really comfortable. I have no objections, I will follow the organization's arrangements. He shook his head. Seeing that he agreed, Xiao Weihai immediately said to Zhao Guodong, Xiao Zhao, I'll borrow him first, you can report to Lao Lu later. Okay, Xiao Bureau, I understand. Zhao Guodong nodded, then looked at Su Lin and said, Xiao Su, when you go to the criminal investigation support team, don't embarrass our team. Su Lin replied, don't worry, team Zhao, when have I ever embarrassed anyone? You little brat, aren't I your little ancestor? Su Lin said with a playful smile, get lost. Zhao Guodong glared at him, but suddenly remembered something and said, by the way, I've already transferred the 30,000 yuan bonus to your card. Also, Lao Lu asked me to tell you that he has already taken care of the repair costs for that luxury car the day before yesterday. Just focus on your work, the higher-ups really support you. What? Su Lin's mouth dropped open when he heard this. He couldn't help but think of what happened last night. It seemed like he had taken advantage for nothing. Women, they really know how to deceive people, especially the beautiful ones. He gritted his teeth in anger and vowed to be more cautious next time. He couldn't let himself be swayed by a beautiful woman, he had to be firm and resolute. He could lose his head and shed blood, but he wouldn't bow down in front of a beautiful woman. All right, let's go. Huang Weihan pulled Su Lin and hurriedly walked outside. They were indeed facing a difficult case, and time was running out. When Su Lin followed Huang Weihan into the meeting room of the criminal investigation support team, he was surprised to find that the room was almost full. Most of them were wearing police uniforms, while a small portion were in civilian clothes. Su Lin was wearing the uniform of the traffic police, with a traffic police badge on his chest and a traffic police armband. When he walked into the meeting room, many people looked at him. Chen Huan Hu Gang's eyes lit up, filled with joy, as they stared at Su Lin. Finally, the captain had brought someone over. They truly admired Su Lin for his performance in the previous Wang Jiancheng death case. He found clues in 15 minutes and solved the case directly. They had been puzzled by the case for a whole day and night, but he easily cracked it. This guy definitely had skills. However, many people still didn't know Su Lin. Everyone looked at this young man in a traffic police uniform, their faces filled with doubt. Especially some old criminal investigators, they looked at Huang Weihan one by one, their faces full of confusion. Huang Weihan didn't bother with those doubtful looks. He glanced at everyone and said, now that everyone is here, let's start the meeting. He gestured for Su Lin to find a seat, 
and then had a technical officer turn on the projector. A screen immediately appeared on the wall in front of them. Hitsong, male, 42 years old, from Jungyun City. He lives on Huama Street, Building 3, Unit 502, in the Happiness Garden community. He was found dead from carbon monoxide poisoning at home six days ago. There were no witnesses, and the body was discovered by his son who came back from school on the weekend. His wife received a phone call and rushed back from out of town. Wang Yingjin, male, 42 years old, from Jiangyun City. He lives in Building A, Unit 601, of the Hongha community. He was found hanged at home three days ago. The surveillance video at home clearly captured him voluntarily hanging himself from the ceiling beam. Zhong Ming, male, 42 years old, from Jiangyun City. He lives in room 501, building 9, of the Wantaixiwan community. His wife, after returning home from grocery shopping at 9.20 this morning, called the police and said her husband had committed suicide by cutting his wrists at home. Similarly, there is surveillance footage throughout the incident, and after careful analysis by the technical team, it is indeed a suicide. Su Lin watched the projected images attentively, his expression serious and focused, with a hint of excitement in his eyes. This was his first real encounter with criminal investigation. Compared to using his ability to catch criminals directly, this was more challenging because even if he used his ability, what could he do with the information about the criminals? It required a complete chain of evidence, without which it was impossible to prosecute. Knowing who the criminal was but having no way to deal with them, weren't there many cases like this? For Su Lin, his ability was suitable for accumulating points, but in the face of such cases, it could only serve as an auxiliary tool. He thought it would be best to forget about this skill for now and rely on his true professional skills as a corpse speaker and tracker to enhance his criminal investigation experience. With this in mind, Su Lin put aside his ability and immersed himself in the case. Based on the current information, there were several common points among the three cases. First, they were all men, and second, they were all suicides. There was also the fact that they all occurred three days apart, as if it were a ritual. But he felt that this was too much of a coincidence. In today's society, with a high standard of living and people leading peaceful lives, apart from some individuals with depression, very few would choose the path of suicide. Or rather, it was simply impossible. Unless someone was forcing them to die, such as through loan sharks and the like. Huang Weihan continued, In the past year, we have had only four suicide cases in Jiangyun City. But in less than 10 days this month, we have had three cases. Is this a coincidence? The question echoed in everyone's ears. Everyone's expression was very serious. A coincidence? Impossible. The work of criminal investigation was to shatter all kinds of coincidences, impossibilities, and analyze all inexplicable facts, in order to find the truth and the answers. They absolutely did not believe that there could be so many coincidences in the world. But according to the on-site investigation and the forensic autopsy, they were told that these three cases seemed to have no connection at all, just a coincidence. Su Lin touched his chin, his gaze fixed on the projection screen, unwilling to let go of any detail. The expressions of the deceased at the time of death, as well as the environment they were in, were carefully observed. Although nothing was found, he believed the details would always come to light. Xiao Su, here are the documents. Just then, a deliberately lowered voice sounded, and it was Chun Hua who came to Su Lin's side, giving him autopsy reports and background information on the three deceased. Thank you, Captain Chen, Su Lin said with a smile. Chen Hua patted his shoulder and returned to his seat. Little did he know that his actions surprised everyone present, even the veteran detectives who had been in criminal investigation for seven or eight years, all looked incredulous. Chen Hua and Hu Gang were both case-solving maniacs, having solved countless major cases under their command. After more than 10 or 20 years in criminal investigation, their achievements were displayed on the wall. Naturally, such people would be more arrogant and would encourage young people but they would never deliberately make friends like they were doing now. Many people were curious about the background of this traffic police officer. Could it be another privileged child here for a taste of glory? Hu Gang saw this scene and gritted his teeth, scolding Chen Hua, flattery won't work, he won't go to your third division. You don't know anything, Chen Hua glared at his old buddy. He did want Su Lin to join his third division, but he also knew that it was unlikely. And the reason he gave Su Lin the documents was actually a test. Wang Weihan, who was in the main seat, continued to talk about the case, while Su Lin had already immersed himself in the demonstration report and all the information about the three deceased in his hands. Soon, he discovered two more common points. The time of death for all three of them was between 8 and 9 in the morning, and a more obvious one. They were all 42 years old. Further down were the forensic reports. Besides the wounds left on their bodies at the time of death, there were no other injuries, not even a needle mark. 
The residual food and gastric fluid in their stomachs, as well as blood tests, confirmed no signs of poisoning. The three reports issued by the forensic examiner stated that the cause of death was suspected suicide. Because there was not enough other evidence, they could only use the word suspected and couldn't be certain. Further down were the materials from the interviews. According to the neighbors, these three people were cheerful in nature, had good relationships with their neighbors, and showed no signs of irritability. They were kind and honest, and had a generous personality. Then there were the investigation records of several medical cards. Besides some minor colds, they had hardly been to the hospital, and there was no sign of depression. Then there was the background investigation, digging into their identities, and almost all the evidence indicated that there was no connection between these three deceased. It seems. These three cases are just a coincidence. Su Lin couldn't help but furrow his brow. He felt that just looking at these documents was not enough, he needed to visit the scene, all three scenes. Hmm. He was about to put down the documents when suddenly something clicked in his mind, and his face instantly changed. In the column of the deceased's children's relationships, it was written that each of them had a son, and their ages were all 17. The fathers had the same age, and the sons had the same age. He narrowed his eyes and took the pen and notebook from the detective next to him, and began writing without paying attention to the detective's displeased glare. You. The detective couldn't help but get angry when he saw Su Lin ignoring him and tried to take back his things. But Huang Weihan directly shouted, Xiao Yi. It turned out that the deputy captain had also noticed Su Lin's abnormality. With his words, everyone's attention shifted to Xiao Yi and Su Lin, who were buried in their books. Huang Weihan stood up first and quietly came to Su Lin's side. Then came Chen Hua, followed by Hu Gang. The three of them stood behind Su Lin, their eyes fixed on the words he wrote in his notebook. The first line consisted of two large characters, followed by a question mark. Coincidence? Seeing these two words, Huang Weihan and the others knew that Su Lin had definitely discovered something. Then, Su Lin wrote down a series of coincidences. 1. Suicide? 2. All aged 42. 3. Middle to upper class family background. 4. Three day intervals? 5. Similar time of death. 6. Children all aged 17. As each piece of information appeared, Huang Weihan, Chen Hua, and Hu Gang were all surprised. From the moment they entered until now, which was only 10 minutes, could it be that this kid had discovered something again? This speed was too fast, wasn't it? Seeing the three captains and the chief acting this way, some experienced detectives also stood up and approached Su Lin, wanting to see what this person, who had caught the attention of the three captains, was writing. The young detective whose notebook was taken by Su Lin looked at the series of coincidences written by Su Lin with a shocked expression. To be able to discover so many coincidences in such a short amount of time showed that this young person had an extremely meticulous mind. He couldn't help but look up and suddenly widened his eyes when he saw Su Lin's rank a one-star police inspector. He couldn't help but gasp in surprise. He had been a detective for three years and had solved several cases, earning a third-class merit. But so far, he was only a third-level police inspector. This young man next to him, who was at most in his early twenties and four or five years younger than himself, was already a first-level police inspector? Unbelievable, inconceivable. Just at that moment, Su Lin finished writing what he wanted to write and began organizing it one by one. Finally, he drew a thick line under the coincidence that all the children were 17 years old. He suddenly looked up and saw that Huang Weihan was gone. He also noticed that everyone around him seemed to be looking at him, their eyes fixed on him without blinking. You guys. He was about to speak when an arm reached out from behind him and snatched the notebook he had just finished writing. Su Lin saw that it was Huang Weihan and immediately said, ordinary children usually go to school at the same age. They are all 17 years old. Could they be in the same school? Or perhaps they participated in the same competition, or were classmates? Of course, they may not be in the same high school now. But what about elementary school, middle school, or even kindergarten? I think we can start from there. Huang Weihan's eyes sparkled with excitement as he loudly said, Hu Gang, immediately checked the background of the deceased's children's schools. Yes. Hu Gang responded with a deep voice, waved his hand, and immediately left the meeting room with seven or eight detectives. Shen Hua looked at this guy with envy, pursed his lips, and thought, I want to go too. At that moment, Su Lin finally reacted and said to Huang Weihan, Captain Huang, I want to go to the crime scenes, all three of them. Good. Shen Hua, don't think I'm favoring one over the other. You take Xiao Su with you. How far you can go depends on your abilities. Huang Weihan said meaningfully, Yes. Chen Hua immediately saluted with excitement. Great, being able to go to the crime scenes with Su Lin would definitely yield results. Although he had just tested Su Lin, he was already shocked at this moment. In just 10 minutes, 
This guy had discovered a potential clue, injecting a strong dose of confidence into their entire team. Whether they found anything or not, it was valuable experience. This kid was truly extraordinary. Especially when he thought about the last time in the prison cell, when this kid found a clue just by smelling the fragrance of flowers, it was simply unbelievable. He became more excited and said to Su Lin, Xiao Su, I'll take you there. Su Lin nodded and ignored the shocked gazes around him as he walked outside with Chen Hua. Once they left, the detectives couldn't hold back any longer. Huang Ji, who is this young traffic police officer? Yeah, Huang Ji, is he the expert you invited? Is the clue he mentioned useful? The group of people started speaking one after another. Huang Weihan glanced at everyone and said angrily, Think for yourselves, each of you has been working in criminal investigation for years, right? Why didn't anyone think of such a crucial piece of information? You all focused on the victim's personal relationships, maybe noticed the family relationships, but you habitually excluded the student group from the clues. I think all of you need to learn criminal investigation again. Huang Weihan said, suddenly blushing, realizing that he had also overlooked this point. After all, these three families had no connection whatsoever, who would have thought of that? The interviews and investigations also didn't pay attention to this aspect of information. He looked at the notebook in his hand again, picked up his phone, and dialed Xia Weihai's number. Hello? Xia Bureau, this suicide case has some leads, I suggest forming a task force. As soon as these words were spoken, all the detectives in the meeting room became solemn. A task force could only be formed for major cases. Once formed, there would be a deadline to solve the case. Yes, Huang Weihan heard the affirmative response on the phone and immediately shouted. On the other side, Su Lin and Chen Hua arrived at the crime scene together. As soon as he entered the scene, Su Lin activated his incredibly powerful tracking skills. The first thing he sensed was the various scents belonging to different people. Since learning tracking skills, his sense of smell surpassed that of ordinary people. He could distinguish multiple scents and even track based on them. However, there were too many scents at the crime scene and since he hadn't come into contact with them beforehand, he couldn't identify whose scent it was. He looked at the white lines on the ground, the extinguished charcoal stove nearby, and the scattered charcoal ash and footprints on the ground. After a moment of silence, he shook his head slightly. There was no way, there were simply no clues. He sighed and walked to the window, scanning the surroundings downstairs and then looking at the building across the street before turning around. In an instant, his gaze suddenly froze, and he looked at the windowsill. On the windowsill, there was a pot of common spring orchids commonly seen in the market. But that wasn't the key point. The key point was that the water tray underneath the pot was very clean, without a trace of dirt. Gloves! Su Lin said in a deep voice. Hearing his words, Chen Hua's expression changed, and he quickly took out a pair of white gloves. Su Lin quickly put on the gloves and gently picked up the spring orchids. Chen Hua was a bit confused, as it seemed like there was nothing on it, right? In his eyes, indeed, there was nothing. But under the enhancement of his tracking skills, Su Lin's eyes were like a microscope, and he saw traces that had been wiped away. And when he slowly lifted the water tray, he suddenly discovered an irregular circular mark underneath. Anyone who has raised plants knows that if a flower pot is left outside for a long time, there will definitely be circular dirt marks on the bottom. And at this moment, the mark in front of them was evidence. Because, it was not regular, it seemed somewhat elliptical and it was difficult for the naked eye to notice without careful observation. Moreover, there were very subtle signs of damage on the mark. Immediately search for surveillance cameras in the vicinity to see if they captured this window. Su Lin put down the items and said in a deep voice. This was a big deal, and he was 90% certain that it was a homicide case. After hearing this, Chen Hua immediately arranged for people to start their work. In just 15 minutes, he found surveillance footage from a shop on the street. However, the footage only showed the time before the crime occurred, as the surveillance was interrupted for half a day due to maintenance. What a coincidence! Another coincidence! Su Lin didn't give up and immediately had the owner of the surveillance contact the manufacturer. The manufacturer replied that they had never provided on-site maintenance services. As they walked out of the shop on the street, Su Lin and Chen Hua exchanged a serious look. Murder! They both said almost simultaneously. At that moment, Chen Hua's phone rang. It was a call from Hu Gang. When he answered the phone, the first thing Hu Gang said was, Lao Chun, come back to the team immediately. Chen Hua replied, okay. The two of them got in the car. Chen Hua stepped on the gas pedal, and the Volkswagen car quickly headed towards the direction of the municipal bureau. Back at the municipal bureau, the two of them immediately ran towards the third floor where the detachment was located, and in no time, they arrived in the conference room. Just like before, the conference room was full. After Su Lin and Chen Hua entered, 
Huang Weihan stood up first, holding several documents in his hand, and handed them to Su Lin. Su Lin took a look and gradually relaxed his brows. It's confirmed, it's murder. And based on my deduction, the possibility of revenge is the highest. Looking up, his expression was extremely confident, and his tone was very certain. Huang Weihan nodded and gave him a thumbs up. Good job, kid. You found clues for us in just 10 minutes. We all need to go back to the drawing board. Previously, we all fell into a thinking trap, desperately trying to connect the three victims together, but we only focused on their personal relationships. And since they were suicides, we paid special attention to the people around them. And the killer didn't leave any traces, their methods were really clever. Su Lin said, focusing solely on the victim's personal relationships won't work. A person's life trajectory is actually very simple. Professional work, family life, social activities. We just need to start from these three points and connect the entire network of relationships, and the answers we want will definitely surface. Even if the killer is clever, as long as there is a connection between them, we will definitely lock them down. Well said. Huang Weihan clapped his hands and looked at the dozens of criminal investigators present, saying, Take note, this will be helpful for your future case solving. The group of detectives, who were still in shock and awe, immediately picked up their pens and started writing. Huang Weihan looked at Su Lin and grinned, Su Lin, you will be the expert of our Jiang Yun City Criminal Investigation Detachment from now on. Su Lin replied, no, Huang, I'm just a traffic police officer. Hey, sooner or later, you will be one of us in the Criminal Investigation Department. Huang Weihan chuckled and no longer dwelled on the matter of being an expert, continuing to ask, did you find any clues at the crime scene? Su Lin nodded and said, we made a major discovery. It can now be confirmed that this is a series of serial murders. Even if we didn't go to the other two crime scenes, I can be certain. Firstly, based on what I found at the crime scene in Heat Sung's house, the killer entered through the window and left after committing the murder. We found surveillance footage from a retail store across the street that could capture the windowsill of the victim's house, but unfortunately, the footage from the day of the crime was missing. Contacting the manufacturer and the service provider, we obtained a clue that they didn't send anyone for maintenance. As soon as these words were spoken, everyone's expressions changed. Su Lin continued, in addition to what Huang just gave me, I can now be 100% certain, it's murder. What Huang Weihan gave him was the academic records of the three victims' sons, which Hu Gang had investigated. The records indicated that these three children were students at Zheng Yun City No. 1 middle school a year ago, and they were also classmates. From April to June last year, three children transferred to different schools and are currently attending their respective schools. So here's the question, Zheng Yun City No. One middle school can be said to be the best school in the entire city, without a doubt. Why would they transfer to a lower level school? There must be something intriguing about it. Su Lin. Huang Weihan called out in a deep voice. Yes. Su Lin was taken aback but still stood at attention and responded. After the Bureau's research and decision, a special task force for suicide cases will be established, and I will be the team leader. You are now appointed as the deputy team leader of the task force. From now on, you have access to all the resources of the entire detachment. Everyone, including myself, will obey your command. We have a 10-day deadline to solve the case. Ha! Huh? Su Lin was dumbfounded. Wait, Wang Ji, are you kidding me? I'm a traffic police officer here to help, and you're giving me the title of deputy team leader of a special task force? Will those veteran criminal investigators agree to this? What? I'm asking you now, do you have any objections? Huang Weihan said in a deep voice. Report, no objections. Upon hearing this, Su Lin straightened his neck and shouted, This is a golden opportunity that has been handed to him on a silver platter. He didn't ask for it, but he won't refuse it either. Then he looked at Chen Hua, then turned to Hu Gang, and saw them both smiling. Hu Gang, rest assured, Deputy Team Leader Su, no one will have any objections. That's right, anyone who has objections can come to me, and I'll make them obedient. Chen Hua also said with a smile. The group of criminal investigators nodded one after another. Su Lin's previous move had already won over these veteran criminal investigators. Huang Weihan, since there are no objections, we can begin. Su Lin nodded and looked at Chen Hua, saying, Captain Hu, you are responsible for obtaining information from those three children. I don't care what methods you use, as long as it's legal, find what we need. Understood. Hu Gang nodded. Captain Hu. Su Lin then looked at Chen Hua and said, Let's go to the other two crime scenes and the forensic department. I want to know how the killer committed the murders. Okay. Chen Hua immediately nodded. Finally, Su Lin looked at Huang Weihan and asked, Who is the current captain of the criminal investigation team? 
He knew that the previous captain of the criminal investigation team who came to assassinate him had already died, so someone must have been promoted to the position of captain. Report, deputy team leader, it's me. My name is Zhang Gong, and I am the acting captain of the first team. A young man in his thirties stood up and said. Su Lin nodded and said, Captain Zhang, your current task is to go to the school and find out if there were any other students who transferred or dropped out of Jiang Yun City No. 1 middle school during the second semester of the first year last year, besides the three victims' children. Understood. Zhang Gong nodded. Then the three groups quickly left the detachment meeting room and went to conduct their investigations. Huang Weihan watched their backs as they left and smiled. This kid, I must bring him over. No, I'll have Xia Ju urge the traffic bureau. Generally, the traffic police brigade is under the jurisdiction of the public security bureau. They need to follow the command and policies of the public security department. Usually, major policies are conveyed from the public security bureau to the traffic management bureau and then implemented in various jurisdictional traffic police brigades. It doesn't matter if their superior department is present or not. Time passed, and half a day quickly went by. Su Lin searched and combed through the three crime scenes over and over again, and then re-examined the physical evidence. In the end, he had to admit that the killer had done a perfect job. Apart from some traces that could only prove that he was the murderer, there were almost no other clues. There was no substantial evidence left at the crime scenes or on the bodies of the victims. But the more this was the case, the more excited he felt. It would be boring without a challenge. In the evening, in the temporary office of the criminal investigation detachment, Su Lin sat at the desk, looking at the case analysis form he had drawn in his hand. The first victim committed suicide by charcoal burning, the autopsy confirmed death by carbon monoxide poisoning. The second victim committed suicide by cutting wrists, the autopsy confirmed death by excessive blood loss, and there is also surveillance video from the victim's home as evidence. In the surveillance footage, it is indeed the victim who cut their own wrists, Su Lin watched it over 10 times, there is indeed no problem. The third victim died by hanging, the autopsy also confirmed suicide. According to the surveillance footage from the victim's home, there is also no problem. The case seems to have reached a dead end, or exactly is the problem, Su Lin thought for a long time but couldn't figure it out. Frowning and pondering for a moment, Su Lin casually picked up the instant noodles that had been soaking for a while next to him, preparing to have a bite. But at that moment, the door was pushed open and Zhang Gong walked into the office. Deputy Team Leader Su, I investigated the entire Jiang Yun City No. 1 Middle School. In the entire year of last year, apart from the children of the three victims, there was only one female student in the same grade who died of illness. Zhang Gong spoke up. Died of illness? Su Lin raised his head a look of surprise on his face. Zhang Gong replied, yes, died of illness. That female student had a congenital heart disease, we obtained her past medical records from the hospital, it is indeed true. Her time of death was March 19th, I have brought back the rescue records. And I specifically found that doctor, he said he was also the attending physician at the time, and at that time he also believed that the girl might not live past 20. It just happened a bit earlier than he expected. After speaking, Zhang Gong placed a photo in front of Su Lin. The girl in the photo had a beautiful and sweet appearance, standing in a sea of flowers, her whole being innocent and lively, like an elf dancing in a flower sea. Jian Yuan Yuan? Su Lin pronounced the girl's name, then sighed, heavens, what a tragedy. Then he raised his head, investigate the girl's family situation, it would be best to talk to her parents. Zhang Gong hesitated for a moment, then said, deputy team leader Su, wouldn't that be a bit cruel? After all, they just lost their daughter a year ago. Upon hearing this, Su Lin's hand holding the instant noodles paused for a moment. Yes, this would indeed be very cruel. But in order to solve the case, he had no choice. His intuition told him that there might be a connection here. It's not just a coincidence that the girl died on March 19th and the three people started transferring schools in April. The earliest transfer record was on April 3rd. He said to Zhang Gong, Captain Zhang, first investigate the information of this female student's parents, we'll decide based on the situation later. Zhang Gong took out two files from his bag and said, I've already checked, the girl's parents both work at a telecommunications company. One is a senior executive in the communications department, the other is a network engineer. Su Lin nodded and took the files of the two people from Zhang Gong. He glanced at them, both were outstanding students, graduated from prestigious schools, and their professions were also very good. All right, leave the information here, I'll take a look first. Okay. Zhang Gong nodded and turned to leave. After Zhang Gong left, Su Lin ate the instant noodles while placing the files on the table one by one. Looking at those photos, his gaze suddenly froze. A flash of insight crossed his mind, as if he had missed something. 
He put down the instant noodles, tore off the photos of the deceased girl and her parents, quickly went to the whiteboard behind him, and wiped off the case analysis with his sleeve. Then he used small magnets to stick the photos one by one, followed by the photos of the deceased and the photos of the deceased's family members. Then, he wrote down their respective professions and possible connections underneath the photos. Snap. Suddenly, he clapped his hands fiercely, staring fixedly at the deceased girl's parents, or more precisely, at their professions. Wunchi, head of the operations department of the mobile communications company. Zhang Jinbin, deputy chief engineer of network communications at the mobile communications company. He turned and ran back to his desk, searching for the documents on the table. He quickly found several files from the messy pile of materials. The small shop across the street from the first victim's house uses surveillance from the mobile communications company. The second and third victim's homes were both installed with surveillance through door-to-door -door sales in the past six months, and they were both products of the mobile communications company. All three victims used mobile numbers. When all the coincidences are connected, it is no longer a coincidence. However, he had one question, if the three victims knew each other, why was there no record of communication between them? He immediately picked up the phone and dialed Zhang Gong's number. In less than three minutes, Zhang Gong left and returned. Once assigned to a special task force, these old detectives were like going to the battlefield, risking their lives. It was not uncommon for them to not go home for 72 hours. Zhang Gong originally planned to deal with it in the office overnight, but he didn't expect to receive a call from Su Lin before he could rest. Deputy Team Leader Su, is there any discovery? He hurriedly returned to Su Lin's temporary office, asking with a surprised tone. Su Lin nodded and said, Captain Zhang, immediately contact the communications company to confirm if Wenqi and Zhang Jinbin are working normally. Also, immediately find me all the call records of the three victims in the past six months. And please bring someone from their company who is knowledgeable about communication payment. Upon hearing Su Lin's words, Zhang Gong was momentarily stunned, then without saying a word, he went to carry out the orders. Even though it was already midnight, he didn't hesitate at all. For a detective, a murder case was as big as the sky. After Zhang Gong left, Su Lin immediately contacted Huang Weihan, Hu Gang, and Chen Hua, and called them all to the meeting room. Looking at the three exhausted faces, he was truly excited and said, Huang Ji, Captain Hu, Captain Chen, if nothing unexpected happens, the case has been solved. Oh, Huang Weihan habitually nodded, then suddenly widened his eyes and stood up, exclaiming, Xiao Su, what did you say? The case is solved? Hu Gang and Chen Hua were also stunned. Chen Hua subconsciously said, Deputy Team Leader Su, don't joke, how could it be so fast? Hu Gang looked at Su Lin's confident eyes and couldn't help but ask, Deputy Team Leader Su, are you serious? Su Lin smiled and nodded. Immediately, the three of them looked at Su Lin in shock. Then they saw him grin and say, I've already asked Captain Zhang to find evidence. If this lead is also broken, I think our special task force might be criticized. Seeing his relaxed smile, the three of them exchanged glances. This guy. Could it be true? Is it really solved? Su Lin, along with Huang Weihan and the other three, quietly waited in the office. After about an hour, at one o'clock in the morning, Zhang Gong finally hurriedly returned to the detachment with a USB drive. He was followed by a manager from the mobile communications company, wearing glasses and looking refined. At first glance, one might mistake him for a girl. Su Lin immediately stood up, and Huang Weihan and the other three also stood up. Captain Zhang, give me the call records of the three individuals. Su Lin said. Zhang Gong and Huang Weihan greeted each other, and then Zhang Gong handed the USB drive with the call records to Su Lin. Immediately, everyone sat down in front of the computer. Su Lin quickly began to examine the call records of the three victims, carefully looking at each one. Open another computer, I want to take a look too. Huang Weihan said. Upon hearing his words, Hu Gang immediately turned on a nearby laptop. Lao Shang, let's look at one together. Chen Hua also called Zhang Gong, and the two of them looked at one together. Soon, they focused their attention on the call records. There were thousands of records over the past six months, including tens of thousands of text messages. This is an extremely complex and massive project. The manager of the mobile communication company was arranged to be on the side, and Su Lin asked him to take a rest, as he might need his help later. After nearly two hours, when everyone's eyes were bloodshot, they finally finished comparing all the communication records. I don't have any records of their communication here, Huang Weihan spoke first. He touched his pocket, took out a pack of cigarettes, and gave one to Chen Fei and the others. He lit it up with a worried expression on his face. Chen Fei said, Vice Team Leader Su, I don't have any either. The expressions of the people became serious. 
Could it be that Su Lin had just discovered a clue and it was about to be cut off again? Su Lin smiled and said, It seems that they are indeed very cautious, or rather, the killer is very cautious. What do you mean? The killer deleted the communication records between the three victims? Huang Weihan said, his eyes suddenly narrowing. Su Lin then went to the manager of the mobile communication company and gently patted the resting man, saying, Manager Wei, can you help me? Oh, sure. The quiet manager immediately got up from the sofa, put on his glasses, and went to the computer. Su Lin said, Manager Wei, please consolidate the communication records of these three individuals and provide their expenditure costs. Remember, it must be accurate. Okay. Manager Wei was professional and took less than an hour to calculate the expenses of the three individuals. He calculated it twice in a row, and the numbers were exactly the same. Su Lin then opened the printer and printed out three text messages. These three text messages were actually monthly bills sent by the mobile communication company to the customers, from March to August of last year, each month had one. When the bills were placed in front of Manager Wei, he suddenly widened his eyes and exclaimed, How is this possible? The call charges in March were 19 yuan more, in April it was 26 yuan more, in May it was 18 yuan more, June. The numbers are accurate. July, the numbers are accurate, and there is no discrepancy in August. Why are the call charges for these three months abnormally high? Seeing the settlement costs of the call durations of the three victims compared to the actual charges from the mobile communication company, Manager Wei was stunned. Huang Weihan, Zhang Gong, Chen Hua, and Hu Gang stared at the computer screen, feeling their scalps tingling and their hair standing on end. Terrifying. It was too terrifying. They couldn't help but look at Su Lin, who had a smile on his face and a confident look. Huang Weihan said, Manager Wei, is your company overcharging customers? No, absolutely not. Maybe there were some isolated cases before, but now it's an automatic system settlement, and there won't be any errors. Manager Wei shook his head hurriedly. We found it. Huang Weihan took a deep breath. Zhang Gong's face darkened, and he looked up at Su Lin, saying, Is it really that couple? Su Lin replied, Most likely. But now we're missing the final step. I want to know who took that girl to the hospital for emergency treatment, and which doctor performed the emergency surgery on her. Once this is confirmed, the entire criminal process will be complete. We can close both cases at the same time. Both cases? Huang Weihan was suddenly startled. Chen Fei exclaimed, What two cases? Hu Gang asked, What is the other case? Only Zhang Gong said in a low voice, The case of the girl with heart disease being murdered? Su Lin snapped his fingers and said, That's her. Zhang Gong looked deeply at Su Lin and felt a sense of admiration. It had to be said that the gap between him and Su Lin was quite significant. Ding ding ding. While the expressions of the few people were different, Huang Weihan's phone rang. He took it out and saw that it was close to 4 o'clock in the morning. The call was from the duty room, so he answered it immediately. Hello? Hey, Huang Ji, someone else has died. A voice came through the phone. Bang! Huang Weihan's face changed, and he asked in a deep voice, What happened? It's another suicide. The deceased is Wang Kai, the head of the emergency department at Zheng Yun City Oriental Hospital. Boom! Upon hearing the news, Su Lin suddenly stood up from his chair, and the chair behind him fell to the ground with a loud crash. Let's go! He immediately ran outside. Huang Weihan and the others instantly understood and ran after him. However, Zhang Gong, who was running at the back, remembered that Manager Wei was still in the office. He immediately turned back and told him that they needed his cooperation in the investigation, and called two young detectives to watch over him. Soon, the group arrived at the hospital and finally saw the doctor who had committed suicide on a round bed in the emergency department. The doctor had cut his neck artery with a surgical knife, and blood was flowing all over the floor. In his hand, he still held that surgical knife. Su Lin looked at the body on the bed, his face turned pale, and he angrily said, immediately retrieve the surveillance footage. Investigate everyone who entered and exited the emergency department. Also, I want to know who was the last person to see this doctor. As soon as he finished speaking, Zhang Gong walked into the emergency operating room holding a photo. He looked at Su Lin, raised the photo in his hand, and said, I just asked the duty nurse and the head nurse. They confirmed that a year ago, three deceased individuals brought Zhang Ye Ye to the emergency room. The doctor who received them was named Wang Kai, it was him. As Zhang Gong pointed to the deceased Wang Kai, everyone's expressions became extremely grim. At this point, it could be said that the truth of the case was almost revealed. But, it was still one step too late. He, or rather they, had completed their revenge. Xiao Su. Huang Weihan looked at Su Lin, about to speak, but Su Lin raised his head, his expression cold, and said, arrest them. 
What are you standing around for? Arrest them. Huang Weihan immediately looked at Chen Fei and the others, growling lowly. Yes. The three captains ran out together, and soon almost all the members of the criminal investigation brigade were mobilized, heading to the suspects' homes. Su Lin looked down at the body, then turned and walked outside. Although he felt hatred and disgust towards this doctor named Wang Kai, he still believed that a living life should face legal punishment, not vigilante justice. Huang Weihan caught up with Su Lin's footsteps, and the two of them went outside. Huang Weihan habitually took out a cigarette and wanted to take a puff. Su Lin said, Huang Ji, give me one. Huang Weihan was stunned for a moment, then gave him one and lit it for him. Su Lin took a drag, slowly exhaling a cloud of smoke. In his previous life, he was a heavy smoker, but in this life, he had always controlled himself and refrained from smoking. But at this moment, he felt that he should have one to ease the anger in his heart. Xiao Su, tell me about the case in detail. Huang Weihan spoke up. To be honest, as the leader of this special investigation team, he still didn't fully understand the whole story, and he could only watch Su Lin's vague explanations. Su Lin nodded slightly at his words. Taking another drag of his cigarette, he said, the case should start from a year ago. Based on my deduction, Zhang Yeye's death was definitely not a normal heart attack. Or rather, her heart attack was triggered by something. And this trigger is related to the children of the three deceased. When Zhang Yeye fell ill, the three children knew they couldn't cover it up anymore, so they called their parents. They brought Zhang Yeye to the emergency room, and the doctor who received them was most likely acquainted with them. Then Zhang Yeye died, and these people definitely concealed something, perhaps the true cause of Zhang Yeye's death. Later on, Zhang Yeye's parents must have learned about what happened to their daughter. One year was enough time for them to plan their revenge. As Su Lin calmly explained, Huang Weihan felt a chill run down his spine. Case within a case, and it's even two murder cases. It can definitely be considered a major case. Five victims, a series of revenge killings. Zhang Yuanyuan's parents are simply insane. Su Lin continued, the reason I targeted the suspects is because of their identities. They are all employees of a mobile communication company, and they are executives and engineers. They have the ability to cover up their own criminal evidence. For example, maintenance of surveillance, clearing the contacts of the three victims, dividing them into three individuals so that no one would suspect them. In fact, they almost succeeded. Su Lin said, looking at the flickering cigarette but in his hand, and said in a low voice, actually, they could have trusted us. But unfortunately, they chose to go to extremes. He looked up at the gradually appearing dawn in the sky, and the night had passed. He extinguished the cigarette but, got up and said, let's go. Under an avalanche, no snowflake is innocent. Huang Ji, arrest the families of the three victims as well. The case from a year ago must be cleared of injustice. Yes. No matter how evil Zhang Jinbin is, that girl is the first victim of this case. She deserves justice. Huang Weihan also nodded and got up. The two got in the car and quickly returned to the support team. On the way, Huang Weihan made a phone call to the people below. In addition to Jiang Jinbin and Wen Qi, the husbands and wives, the sons and wives of the three victims were also arrested. Su Lin was very tired. After returning to the office, he lay down on the sofa and fell asleep. He didn't know how long had passed when someone woke him up. He raised his head in a daze and found it was Huang Weihan. Huang Ji. He immediately got up. Huang Weihan said, I bought breakfast for you, get up and eat. Su Lin looked at the time and found it was 8.30 in the morning. He had probably slept for a little over three hours, which was a bit of relief. He drank a large glass of water first, then picked up a steamed bun from the table and took a bite. Huang Weihan also grabbed a steamed bun and said, everyone has been arrested. But Jiang Jinbin and Wen Qi have not said a word. Su Lin nodded slightly at the words and said, as expected, this couple has strong psychological resilience. From a different angle, let's interrogate the sons and wives of the three victims first. Interrogating them can only confirm that Jiang Yuan Yuan's case a year ago was not a heart attack, but it cannot prove Jiang Jinbin's guilt. Huang Weihan said, Yes, indeed, it cannot prove their guilt. Even if we know they tampered with the data of the mobile communication company, we can only charge them with crimes such as falsifying data and commercial fraud, not intentional murder. But by interrogating the three children and finding out the truth of that year, we can find a way to make them speak. Huang Weihan felt that what he said made sense, so they quickly finished the steamed buns on the table and entered an interrogation room with Su Lin. In the interrogation room, a teenager in his teens sat pale-faced on a chair, his body trembling slightly, and he was speaking incoherently. Su Lin just took a glance and knew that this child couldn't withstand the pressure of being interrogated by the criminal police. He shook his head and walked out, entering the second interrogation room, then the third. 
The results were similar, these three young children had never seen such a situation before, and as long as a little pressure was applied, they would spill everything. Sure enough, in less than 20 minutes, the door of the second interrogation room opened. Chen Fei came to Su Lin with a laptop in his hand and said in a low voice, they are a bunch of animals, they deserve to die. The video started playing, and as the teenager inside slowly revealed the truth of that year, even Su Lin couldn't help but say, well done, killing them. The three teenagers wanted to vent their frustrations with a female classmate after watching some inappropriate movies. The result encountered Jiang Yuan Yuan. They brought Jiang Yuan Yuan to Yi Sung's house under the pretext of tutoring and carried out the humiliation, with all three of them participating. Su Lin couldn't help but think of the beautiful girl in the photo, imagining her despair at that time, and his face instantly became extremely gloomy. According to their confession, they only discovered that Jiang Yuan Yuan had a heart attack and had passed out after they had vented their animal desires. They were finally afraid and contacted their respective parents. After the three parents learned of the situation, they immediately sent people to the hospital, but she was already dead. According to the examination at the time, Jiang Yuan Yuan's true cause of death was not a heart attack, but massive bleeding. One of the children's parents had some power and a good relationship with the doctor. After explaining the situation, they had the doctor remove all traces and make it look like a heart attack, and then tried to contact Jiang Yuan Yuan's parents. However, Jiang Yuan Yuan's parents were on a business trip at the time and would not be back for a week. When they learned of this news, the three parents and the doctor conspired and directly sent Jiang Yuan Yuan to the crematorium through their connections, eliminating all evidence in the cremation furnace. Su Lin clenched his fist and his eyes were filled with cold anger. They even deprived the parents of the right to see their daughter's body. Why? Why be so malicious? The parents couldn't even see their daughter one last time, and even couldn't even see her body. It was like digging into their hearts and cutting their flesh. Just imagine, when Zhang Jinbin and Wen Qi, the couple, return from their business trip and see their daughter's ashes, how desperate and painful they would be. The interrogation of the three families is over. Everyone finally knows that Zhang Jinbin learned the truth from the son of the third victim and spent nearly a year plotting revenge. The truth of the case a year ago has come to light, but everyone's mood is still not light. The entire office is filled with a suppressed atmosphere. Huang Weihan, Su Lin, the three criminal investigation team leaders, and more than 20 detectives, all showed anger in their eyes. The root of everything is actually because of a juvenile crime. And the parents of the three families have shown such an ugly side, which is truly chilling. It is hateful that the doctor also did something that violated medical ethics. The wheel of heaven turns, and heaven spares no one. When they did all this, they probably didn't think that they would have such a day, right? What is most regrettable is that after Jiang Jinbin and Wen Qi learned the truth, they did not choose to report to the police, but turned into vengeful demons and killed the four culprits with their own hands. But what is most surprising is that he actually spared the three children, the three instigators who caused Jiang Yuan Yuan's death. Did his heart soften? Who will interrogate Jiang Jinbin and Wen Qi next? Huang Weihan raised his head and asked. Su Lin said, I'll go. Okay. Huang Weihan nodded slightly at the words. Outside the interrogation room, Su Lin took a deep breath and pushed the door open. In the interrogation room, the man looked calmly at Su Lin, his gaze carrying a hint of surprise because he saw Su Lin's traffic police badge at first glance. Traffic police? He couldn't help but say in confusion. Yes, I am a traffic police officer. Su Lin smiled and said, but I was just transferred to the criminal investigation department, and now it's my turn to interrogate you. Jiang Jinbin nodded slightly, also smiled back, and said, Comrade police officer, I have already said that I don't know anything. Su Lin stared at him, this man was very calm, well-spoken, and emotionally stable. Breaking through his psychological defenses would be very difficult. But in his opinion, perhaps it wasn't even necessary. What he wanted to determine now was who actually killed the person. Eye of good and evil, he silently recited in his heart, activating the skill of the eye of good and evil. In the next moment, Jiang Jinbin's information appeared in front of him, the blood-red color particularly glaring. Jiang Jinbin, the serial killer, killed three people in a row. Just by reading the first line, Su Lin was already shocked. Killing three people means that out of the four dead, one was not killed by Jiang Jinbin. Besides him, the only other person is his wife, Wen Qi. Su Lin slowly spoke, Jiang Jinbin, are you sure you don't know anything? Do you think we really have no evidence? You can tamper with communication data, but you can't tamper with the charges from the communication company, because it is an independent entity directly managed by the headquarters, am I right? These few sentences instantly made Jiang Jinbin's face freeze, but he still showed a faint smile and said, just from this, it doesn't prove that I did anything. 
At most, I will be charged with a commercial crime for modifying the company's core data and damaging the company's image. Indeed. Su Lin nodded and said, What about your wife, Wen Qi? She was also involved and even killed one person. Do you think she can withstand interrogation like you? When this sentence came out, Zhang Jinbin's pupils contracted, and a look of panic finally appeared on his face. How did he know that his wife killed someone? It shouldn't be, it's impossible. He had handled the crime scenes very well, and each one was perfect. It's absolutely impossible. Zhang Jinbin's heart roared and roared. How do you know? Zhang Jinbin's lips trembled slightly, his eyes fixed on Su Lin, and his eyes flickered with intense hatred. He hated the injustice of the world, why did they have to do this to their daughter? She was already pitiful enough, the doctor said she wouldn't live past 20, she was a girl with no future. The two of them worked frantically just to save enough money for her surgery and take her to the best hospital abroad. They almost gave up all their dreams just to give their daughter a tomorrow. But, someone killed their daughter, shattering their spiritual support. Su Lin looked at Jiang Jinbin, whose eyes were turning red, and his psychological defense was starting to weaken. He said, Jiang Jinbin, if you don't want anyone to know, don't do it yourself. He Tsung's details were too crude, and he even left half a fingerprint, we just need to compare it a little. Impossible. Jiang Jinbin suddenly roared, saying, you're slandering us. Su Lin said, it seems you're very confident. Then let me ask you, did you wipe the bottom of the flower pot on the balcony? Jiang Jinbin froze didn't dare to wipe it, right? Because wiping the flower pot would leave a flaw. So you carefully handled the evidence below, but you didn't touch the bottom of the flower pot. Su Lin smiled faintly. The half fingerprint was real, they had already extracted it and could make a comparison soon. This could also be said to be the only substantial evidence they had found so far in their investigation. And his previous words were just a hint, a gamble. The first crime scene was really too crude. It seemed more like an impulsive killing rather than premeditated. It couldn't be compared to the other two crime scenes at all. Jiang Jinbin lowered his head, trembling, and stared at his own hands. Su Lin saw that he didn't speak anymore, knowing that this guy was still on the verge of collapse and hadn't truly broken his defense. So he opened the notebook in front of him and started playing the interrogation records of the three teenagers. Jiang Jinbin suddenly raised his head, his face instantly becoming extremely ferocious. Beasts, they're all beasts, they should all die. He went mad, his eyes bloodshot, as if in a frenzy. In fact, anyone would go mad after encountering such a thing. In just a few minutes, he was drenched in sweat, as if he had just been pulled out of the water. Su Lin turned off the interrogation video on the notebook and asked, Why didn't you go after them first? I think your revenge plan should include them as well. Su Lin wasn't very familiar with criminal psychology. But he knows human nature, once the demon is released, it will manipulate souls. Killing one person is killing, killing two is also killing. So why not just kill everyone who has harmed their family? These three families, along with that doctor, none of them are innocent. Zhang Jinbin slowly raised his head and said, I admit, I killed them. All four of them, I killed them. Su Lin frowned, he had already guessed that this man was going to take all the blame. Seeing Zhang Jinbin taking responsibility for all the cases, Su Lin sighed slightly in his heart. If he didn't take it on himself, he would really look down on him. But even so, he would still not disregard the law. Reality is indeed cruel, but he couldn't just watch the murderer go free. Regardless of their reasons, killing is a fact. He said, you want to take all the blame, but it's impossible. The fingerprints in Yitzong's house belong to your wife. Even if you really take all the blame, she is at least an accomplice. No, 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 she's not. Ah, ah. Jiang Jinbin completely lost control, his eyes turned red, and he kept roaring, struggling and twisting his handcuffed hands. But no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't break free. Su Lin looked at him calmly, ignoring him. It wasn't until nearly five minutes later that Jiang Jinbin gradually calmed down. His eyes were lifeless, devoid of any spirit. I'll talk, I'll tell everything, he hoarsely said, his gaze lost in memories. Ye Ye has always been obedient, she was the pride of our family. But on March 19th last year, our beloved daughter. She was violated and killed by a few little animals. What's even more hateful is that they didn't even give us the right to see her body. Do you know how it feels when we looked at Yeya's ashes? From that moment on, I died, do you understand? Zhang Jinbin's emotions became agitated again. Su Lin waved his hand towards the one-way glass, and Huang Weihan immediately walked in. Huang Ji, bring me a pack of cigarettes. The latter nodded, took out his own cigarette, lit one, and handed it to Zhang Jinbin. Thank you. Jiang Jinbin numbly nodded his head in thanks. He took the cigarette, looked at the wisps of smoke, and took a puff. Yeah, yeah was very well behaved, we never had to worry about her. 
Her heart condition was controlled with medication, and she rarely had attacks. And those bastards even cremated her body without our permission, so I suspected foul play in her death. For the next period of time, I was constantly monitoring those three families. Until the three little animals transferred schools, I finally confirmed that they must have done something to Yaya. So I started investigating, and with great effort, I finally got the truth from that child surnamed Zhong. At that time, I wanted to kill him directly. But it wasn't enough, I felt it was far from enough. All three of their families were guilty, they all had to accompany our Ye Ye in death, not one of them could be spared. The hysterical voice, the resentful tone, caused the temperature in the interrogation room to drop by more than 10 degrees. Su Lin raised his head, so, you started planning revenge? Yes. Zhang Jinbin nodded, took another drag of his cigarette, and said, I started secretly observing their daily habits, including their behaviors and habits. Every day, besides work, I was planning how to kill them without being discovered by others. I'm not actually afraid of being discovered, what I'm afraid of is not being able to kill them all before you find out. Su Lin said, so, you staged a suicide? Yes, that was my plan. First, I will deal with the three men who pose the greatest threat, and then I will take care of those three little bastards. Finally, I will deal with those three women. At first, I didn't tell my wife. But as my behavior became more and more abnormal, she finally discovered some of the things I did at work when I was about to implement my plan. Under her questioning, I had to tell her the truth, but that's also the part one regret the most. Zhang Jinbin became excited again as he spoke. She, she actually went to confront that he'd sung alone, and do you know what that bastard did? He actually forced himself on my wife. He deserves to die, die a hundred times, a thousand times is not enough. Ah, they killed my daughter and defiled my wife, shouldn't they die? Tell me, tell me. Hysterical roars echoed through the entire interrogation room. Su Lin and Huang Weihan's eyes also carried a murderous intent. Damn, that guy definitely deserves to die. Huang Weihan thought to himself that if the guy stood in front of him, he wouldn't be able to resist pulling out his gun and killing him on the spot. First, my daughter was killed, and then I suffered such humiliation myself. My wife has already lost the will to live. She took advantage of that bastard sleeping and set the charcoal stove on fire. Luckily, I installed a tracking device on her phone. When I went to find her, she was already almost unconscious. When she heard my voice, she mustered up the last of her strength to open the door for me. I saw her frail body and wished I could tear that bastard into a thousand pieces. But I held back because I wanted to wipe out his entire family. Next, I started setting up the scene, but unfortunately, there were too many traces left behind. I couldn't clean them all up, otherwise, you probably wouldn't have found me. Next, I started seeking revenge against the other two people. First, I used my technical skills to replace the surveillance footage. The people you see in that surveillance video are actually images I covered up with technology. As Jiang Jinbin recounted the story, the case was completely reconstructed. After listening to it, Su Lin and Huang Weihan couldn't help but smile bitterly and shake their heads. This guy is really a genius, no wonder they couldn't find any clues linking him to the other two victims no matter what. Because those surveillance videos were all replaced by Jiang Jinbin, and his physique was similar to those two people, and after a long period of imitation, almost no one could recognize him without revealing his facial features. Su Lin and the others had also tried showing the people in the surveillance videos to the neighbors, and the neighbors immediately identified them as the men from those two families. Little did they know, it was all a deception. The interrogation lasted nearly two hours before it finally ended. When Jiang Jinbin was taken away, Su Lin suddenly spoke up, Huang Ji, keep him and his wife together. What? You brat, don't give orders recklessly, you can't handle the consequences if something goes wrong. Huang Weihan said in a deep voice. But on Jiang Jinbin's face, a hopeful expression appeared as he looked at Su Lin with gratitude. Then he shook his head and said, Thank you, officer. But I know the heinous crimes I have committed, I don't expect anything more. Su Lin then said, Huang Ji, if it's not possible, at least put them in adjacent cells, preferably where they can see each other. That can be arranged. Huang Weihan nodded. Thank you. Jiang Jinbin's eyes were red, and two streaks of regretful tears slid down his cheeks. No need to thank me, this is the justice owed to you. Su Lin shook his head and said, actually, when you found out the truth, there was another choice. No, there was no other choice, only this one. For our daughter, we are willing to sacrifice our lives, only seeking justice. Unfortunately, I couldn't kill those three little bastards. If I had known how capable you are, I would have gone after those three little bastards first. Su Lin, they will face legal punishment. The legal sanctions. No, they're too lenient. What are they compared to a life? Zhang Jinbin said, leaving the interrogation room under the escort of two detectives. 
After leaving Jiang Jinbin's interrogation room, Su Lin sighed deeply. This damn case. He shook his head, feeling that it would be more satisfying to just go out on the street and arrest people. Solving this kind of case was enough to make him depressed. Huang Weihan patted his shoulder and said, as detectives, we can encounter any kind of case. This is nothing. You haven't seen someone who killed their own child with their own hands. Su Lin's eyes narrowed at his words. Huang Ji, are there really such beasts in the world? Even tigers don't eat their own cubs. Yes, I have personally experienced it. Huang Weihan nodded with a heavy expression. Huang Ji, I suddenly feel like going back to the traffic police team. Criminal investigation is too damn depressing. Su Lin said. That's not possible. With your abilities, you will only encounter even more incredible cases in the future. Kid, we have to learn to be strong. Don't forget our graduation oath and our beliefs. Fine. Su Lin forced a smile. The case was officially solved, and the special task force that was originally set for 10 days was disbanded on the spot. Su Lin and Huang Weihan went to the director's office together and saw Xia Weihai, who was busy. Director Xia, Huang Weihan called out. Xia Weihai gestured for Su Lin and Huang Weihan to sit down first, while he continued to look at the documents in his hand without raising his head. Sit first, I'll finish reading this document. After a while, he finally finished reading. Then he picked up a teacup and personally brewed a cup of tea for the two of them. So, how is the progress of the case? Xia Weihai sat down in front of them and asked. The task force was established yesterday, and he still had a lot of things to do and couldn't spare the time to go over there. Huang Weihan said, Director Xia, the case has been solved. Solved? Xia Weihai's face was full of disbelief. He looked at Su Lin and only believed it after seeing him nod. He looked at the time on his wrist, damn, it was less than 21 hours, not even a full day. This speed of solving the case was too fast, right? Tell me what happened. He suppressed his shock and asked Su Lin and the others to report the situation. Su Lin, you go first. Huang Weihan pushed Su Lin. He gave him a resentful look and said, you tell it yourself, I'm afraid I can't help but curse. Fine. Huang Weihan nodded and then explained the whole story. After Xiao Weihai understood the whole case, he remained silent. But his heaving chest and gradually reddening face told them that this big shot was full of anger at the moment, wanting to vent but couldn't find a target. Bang. Finally, he grabbed the teacup and smashed it hard on the ground. How can there be such malicious people in the world? Damn, they deserve to die. He was a bit out of control. In fact, anyone who knew about this case would react the same way. Su Lin said, Director Xia, I think when we prosecute, we should consider the human aspect appropriately. Honest people can really be driven crazy under certain circumstances. I understand. Xia Weihai nodded and said, But as law enforcers, we can only state the facts and give opinions. Whether to accept or not is up to the prosecutor. Su Lin nodded and didn't insist any further. Finally, the case was over. Huang Weihan drove and took him home. It had been an exhausting day and night, and he needed a good rest. After returning home, he fell asleep immediately. He slept for nearly 13 hours, waking up at 8 o'clock the next morning. He hurriedly got up, put on his uniform, had breakfast downstairs, and then took a taxi to the Criminal Investigation Brigade of the Municipal Public Security Bureau. Zhao Guodong told him that he was only temporarily transferred here for seven days and would return to the traffic police team after seven days. Although tired for two days, I am fully revived today, and yesterday's gloom has disappeared. Sitting in the car, Su Lin pulled out the system and saw the 800 points he obtained yesterday for capturing Jiang Jinbin and Wen Qi, plus the previous ones, which exceeded a thousand. He could draw skills again. Without hesitation, he directly clicked on the lottery interface. Congratulations, host. You have obtained a special skill, special mark. Special mark, advanced skill. You can mark any target, and after marking, the host can clearly know the opponent's position. Note, you can mark up to 5 targets, with a maximum marking distance of 10 meters. Su Lin's eyes widened, expressing his joy. Special mark, isn't that the same as a tracker? Awesome. It's so awesome. It's simply a powerful weapon. Suppressing his excitement, he decided to experiment with someone, and of course, the target would definitely be a criminal. Just as he arrived downstairs at the city bureau, he got off the taxi and saw Xiao Weihai personally escorting a woman downstairs, with a smile on his face. Su Lin saw that woman and immediately widened his eyes. How dare she come? She hasn't settled the bill for freeloaders yet. Su Lin, come here. Just at this moment, Xiao Weihai saw Su Lin and waved to him. Su Lin walked over, glanced at the woman who was as beautiful as a flower, saluted Xiao Weihai, and then said, Director Xia, I have something to do, so I'll go up first. You kid, wait a moment. Xiao Weihai quickly grabbed him. 
She's here to find you, what's the rush? Several detective brothers who happened to pass by couldn't help but stop and watch when they heard this. Su Lin is like a god in their hearts. A god's melon, that's a god melon. Maybe even taking a bite can make you stronger. Su Lin, she's looking for me? Yen Yao's beautiful eyes showed a hint of resentment, and she said with a hint of blame, What, can't I come to find you? Do you have something to say? Su Lin felt the strong temptation and directly focused on his inner thoughts, firmly determined not to let this woman take advantage of him again. I came to apologize to you. I was wrong last time. I forgot that you had already paid for my car repair fee. Yen Yao smiled, but her eyes were cunning. Su Lin. It was intentional, she definitely did it on purpose. Damn it, I'm going all out. He put away his dark face and showed a smile, saying, since that's the case, should I get compensation from you? I remember, last time you took off all my clothes. Today, do I also get to enjoy the view? What? Xiao Weihai was stunned, looking at Su Lin with disbelief. But all he saw was this guy looking at Yen Yao with a smile that seemed to have the upper hand. What's even more unexpected was that Yen Yao looked at him seriously, nodded slightly after a few seconds, and reached out to grab Su Lin's arm, saying, Let's go, let me undress you in the car. What? What did you say? What's wrong, can't handle it? Yen Yao smirked. Su Lin gritted his teeth and said, Fine, you're ruthless. I can't handle it, I'm leaving, goodbye. This shameless woman is truly invincible. As a law enforcer, there are still so many people around. Even if he didn't see anything after getting in the car, he wouldn't be able to explain himself. This woman is definitely not a good person, and he's afraid he'll be fooled to death. However, before going upstairs, a wicked smile appeared on his face, and he sent a special mark over from a distance. Special mark, marked by Yen Yao, marking time limit 72 hours. Watch me deal with you. He grinned and disappeared into the corridor. Watching Su Lin run upstairs like a streak of smoke, Yen Yao smiled charmingly, her cheeks slightly blushing. Little boy, if you want to compete with me, you're still a bit too young. Xiao Weihai looked at his comrade's daughter in surprise. Wow, where did that obedient demeanor go? How did she become a female hooligan now? The people around were extremely envious of Su Lin for running up the stairs. If it were them, they would definitely take the elevator, even if they had to break their legs to climb up. Su Lin arrived at the office, leaving the woman downstairs behind, and greeted Huang Weihan and others before aimlessly wandering around. The criminal investigation brigade was quite idle when there were no cases, especially for him, a borrowed traffic police officer, who was even more idle. Even if Huang Weihan had no shame, he couldn't possibly assign every case to him. Su Lin strolled over to a police officer's station and suddenly noticed that the guy was working on a computer, with pictures displayed on the screen. Brother, what's this? He couldn't help but ask curiously. Sugu, these are all wanted criminals, the police officer looked up and immediately smiled in response. Su Lin. Big brother, you're almost 30, is it appropriate to call me GE? What he didn't know was that the two cases he had handled, along with the sand mining case he had worked on while in the traffic police department, had already been widely publicized within the entire criminal investigation brigade. A group of veteran detectives had been completely conquered by this young man who had just graduated. Su Gu, do you want to take a look? Xiao Lu said with a smile. Sure. Su Lin didn't dwell on the address anymore. After Xiao Lu stepped aside, he sat down and carefully looked through the information. Name, Wang Tong, B-level wanted criminal. ID number. Suspected of multiple intentional injuries, intentional homicide cases. Name, Li Fong, A-level wanted criminal. ID number. Suspected of three kidnappings and murders, one robbery and murder. Name, Hu Yanghua, B-level wanted criminal. ID number. Suspected of illegal fundraising, with an amount reaching 350 million. Name, Zheng Wuli, B-level wanted criminal. ID number. Mastermind of a usury group, illegal lending profits exceeding 40 million, and suspected of intentional injuries, provocation, causing multiple disabilities. Name, Gao Yu, a level wanted criminal. ID number. Suspected of multiple cases of murder and dismemberment, with up to eight victims. As he looked through the wanted notices one by one, Su Lin suddenly felt that his brain seemed to have become much sharper. He clearly remembered the identity information of each person he had seen and the crimes they had committed especially their appearances, as if they were imprinted in his memory. He smiled slightly, feeling somewhat surprised but not overly astonished. Since the system was activated, it seemed that his abilities had improved a lot. Later, he also used the physical enhancement card, and his abilities in all aspects became stronger than before. He quickly scanned through the information, while memorizing the appearances and information of the wanted criminals. 
Su Lin guaranteed that if he encountered them on the street, even without using the eye of good and evil, he would be able to recognize them. Even if they were disguised, they couldn't escape his eyes. Even with plastic surgery, the distance between the eyes couldn't be changed, and a person's gaze couldn't be changed either. He could still recognize them. One of the tracking skills was the ability to magnify any trace. From the crime scene to the physical characteristics of the suspects, etc. It could all be applied. Xiao Lu, who was behind him, saw Su Lin flipping through the files at a rapid pace, with a puzzled expression on his face. He thought Su Lin wasn't interested in this, which was why he was flipping through them so quickly. But gradually, he realized that Su Lin was very engrossed, not even responding when he called in to eat. He had been sitting there for almost three hours, if he wasn't interested, how was that possible? He began to doubt whether this godlike figure had actually memorized all the people on the wanted notices. Su Gu, Su Gu? He called a few more times. Su Lin finally snapped out of it, looked up at him, and asked with a puzzled expression, what's wrong? Xiao Lu, Su Gu, it's time to eat. Not just finished breakfast, why eat? Su Lin muttered to himself, but when he saw the time in the bottom right corner of the computer, he instantly froze. 11.50. Wow, he had been sitting for nearly three hours without realizing it? He looked at the number of all the wanted fugitives he had seen, there were over 1,000, and there were still close to 2,000 left. Among the more than 3,000 fugitives, some were hiding in the country, some might already be dead, and many others had escaped abroad. Regardless, if he encountered any of them, he would definitely bring them to justice. Hmm. About 2,000 left, we'll continue in the afternoon. Su Lin nodded and stood up, calling out to Xiao Lu, let's go, let's eat. Xiao Lu was a bit confused staring at Su Lin with wide eyes, and asked, Su Gu, you're not going to tell me that you remembered all the 1,000 people we just saw, right? Su Lin looked at him and said naturally, of course I have to remember what I've seen, otherwise what would I be doing with this time? Xiao Lu. He looked incredulous and said, brother, that's over a thousand people. Not a few dozen, let alone ten or eight. How could you possibly remember them all? Hearing this, Su Lin smiled and said, name, Wang Tong, B-level wanted fugitive. ID number. Suspected of multiple intentional injuries, intentional murder cases. Name, Li Fong, a level wanted fugitive. ID number. Suspected of three kidnappings and murders, one robbery and murder. Name, Hu Yanghua, B level wanted fugitive. Name, Zhang Guoli. When Xiao Lu heard Su Lin start listing names from the beginning, it was like listing dishes, one by one, he recited all the information, and a look of indescribable expression suddenly appeared on his face. Okay. He admitted that he was just a loser. No, compared to this person, none of them in the criminal investigation division dared to say they weren't losers. Genius, no, this person was completely a monster, and a god level one at that. Let's go, let's eat, suddenly feeling a bit hungry. Su Lin patted his shoulder and went to the cafeteria of the municipal bureau. As soon as he walked in, he saw police officers from various departments sitting at tables eating, and a few detective brothers saw him and their eyes lit up, inviting him to their table. Su Lin smiled and nodded but suddenly realized that he seemed to have no identity or meal card. It seemed like he couldn't eat this meal. Xiao Lu saw this and immediately took out his own meal card, but at that moment, a voice came from inside the cafeteria. You must be Xiao Su, right? Chief Xia ordered that you don't have to pay for your meal, eat whatever you want. It was a middle-aged man with only one arm and a limp leg, but the spirit in his body was astonishing. Thank you, old brother. Su Lin immediately grinned. Behind him, Xiao Lu saw the middle-aged man and immediately showed respect, calling out, Captain Chow. What Captain Chow? I'm just a middle-aged man getting food now. The middle-aged man scolded with a stern face, then served Su Lin, who was somewhat surprised. Braised pork, braised eggplant, cucumber scrambled eggs, small yellow croaker. The dishes weren't great, but in a place like this government cafeteria, they were considered good. Su Lin. Just as he finished serving his food, he heard someone calling his name. He turned his head and saw Huang Weihan and Chief Xia, the latter waving at him with a smile. The two of them were sitting at a table, the whole table just for the two of them. Su Lin walked over with his plate. Everyone in the cafeteria looked at Su Lin in shock. Those who knew his identity weren't curious, but most of the people here didn't know who he was, and they were all wondering, who was this young man in the traffic police uniform? Xia Ju is the head of the entire municipal bureau. His polite expression makes everyone feel like they've seen a ghost. How is it? Is the food okay? It should be better than your traffic police team, right? Xiao Wei Hai smiled and said when Su Lin sat down, It's much better than ours. Su Lin nodded. Then he curiously asked, Director Xia, Huang Ji, who is that guy serving food inside? Xiao Lu calls him Captain Chao. Where did he come from? 
Xiao Wei Hai heard this and looked at the middle-aged man with a severed arm in the cafeteria, sighing, he used to be the former captain of the municipal special police team, Xia Yunhua, he lost an arm and a leg during a bomb disposal mission, he is a first-class hero, a role model, wow, Su Lin took a deep breath, no wonder he could feel the strong spirit from him, looking at Captain Chow in the distance, Su Lin felt a sense of respect, Captain Chow met his gaze, grinned, and gave him a thumbs up, Su Lin smiled back, there seemed to be a kind of tacit understanding, a special inheritance between the two. It was the older generation of police officers passing on their beliefs and honor to the new generation. After quickly finishing his meal, Su Lin returned to his office and continued to search for fugitives in the computer. With his almost abnormal brain, once someone entered his mind, he would hardly forget them. He stayed up until late at night, finishing reading all the files of the wanted fugitives before going home to rest. In fact, he didn't need to remember all these things. With the eye of good and evil, he could directly identify the fugitives. However, he didn't always use it because it would cause discomfort if used for too long. His head would become swollen, his eyes sore, and he couldn't even open them. He had done some experiments before and found that he could use the eye of good and evil for a maximum of about 4 hours a day. Beyond that, he would experience mild discomfort. The longer he used it, the stronger the discomfort. So, as a precaution, it was better not to use it unnecessarily. With his ability, he could recognize the fugitives even without using the eye of good and evil. And, just like the previous investigation of the Jiang Jinbin case, the biggest drawback of the eye of good and evil was that it could only identify the culprit when the person was in front of him. If the person wasn't present, he would be blind. Therefore, in future investigations, he would rely on other skills, such as tracking, corpse speakers, or special markings. Thinking of special markings, Su Lin couldn't help but have a thought about his own little white mouse. He lay on the bed, pulled up the system panel, and then opened the target information for special markings. A huge pattern appeared on the panel, and upon closer inspection, it turned out to be a three-dimensional map of the entire Jianyun city. When he looked closer, the map showed the location of the target and a zoomed-in view. Su Lin was curious and clicked on the image. In the next moment, a scene that could arouse criminal desires appeared before his eyes. He almost had a nosebleed. In a large bathtub, a naked person was taking a bath with rose petals floating on the water's surface. The perfect body was faintly visible in the rippling water. Su Lin quickly closed the image and muttered to himself, don't look at what's inappropriate. Don't look. It took a while for those inappropriate images in his mind to disappear. When he regained his composure, he touched his hot cheek. This woman, it's almost one o'clock, and she's still taking a bath? He said to himself, suddenly having a mischievous idea. He took out his phone and dialed Yan Yao's number. The phone rang three times before she answered, her voice lazy and full of temptation, Hello, little brother, what's up? Do you miss sister in the middle of the night? Yin Yao teased with a laugh. Su Lin heard the words and said solemnly, Little sister, after midnight is the darkest time of the day when in energy is the strongest. I just wanted to tell you that you must not take a bath or soak in water afterwards, otherwise it will attract dirty things. As for what exactly it is, you know. Ah, a piercing scream instantly sounded from the phone, followed by Yen Yao's angry cursing, Su Lin, you bastard. I, you scared me, you damn bastard. Yen Yao, holding her phone, huddled in a corner of the bathtub, looking around with a vigilant gaze. Then, with a splash, she hurriedly put on her robe, turned on all the lights in the house, and her panicked face finally calmed down a bit. Women, even if they are usually strong, always have fears in front of certain things. Su Lin, you. Yen Yao was about to scold again, but suddenly froze. No, Su Lin. How did you know I was taking a bath? Did you install surveillance cameras in my house? Yen Yao's face instantly became gloomy, her expression frosty, and her voice icy cold. What? Little sister, you were really taking a bath? Ha ha ha. You fooled me, I guessed it right. Ha ha ha. Su Lin laughed awkwardly, his excuse was very reasonable, but he felt extremely embarrassed inside. You damn bastard, just you wait. Yen Yao's eyes flickered with a dangerous light. Su Lin, are you threatening me? Humph. Little sister, I heard that when you take a bath at midnight, there will be something watching you. If it takes a liking to you, it will take you away as a bride at night. When you wake up, you will find. Ah, shut up, Su Lin, I was wrong. Don't say it anymore, I was wrong. The scream rang out again. Su Lin had a triumphant smile on his face and said, All right, since you don't want to listen, I won't say it anymore. Good night. Click. The phone hung up, and this conscienceless guy burst into laughter. This temporary victory was really worth celebrating. As a result, the neighbor on the other side of the wall directly punched the wall twice and shouted, Are you going to let anyone sleep? 
It's late at night, are you going crazy? Su Lin quickly stopped, then lay on the bed with a smile, closed his eyes, and fell into a deep sleep. In his dream, he saw a bathtub, and in the bathtub there was a woman with a perfect figure, snow white skin, crystal clear. Splash! Damn it! A basin of water was poured over his head, and Su Lin jumped up from the bed. He widened his eyes and instantly noticed that the lights in his house were on, and a woman was standing in front of him with a fierce momentum, holding a basin in her hand. Beside the woman, there was also a locksmith carrying a toolbox, with a bewildered look on his face. Wait, how did you come to my house? Are you crazy? Su Lin's face turned completely dark. Well, kill a thousand enemies and harm oneself by 800. The locksmith saw that it was indeed as the woman said, they knew each other, so he awkwardly said, Um, miss, please pay me. Okay, thank you, sir. Yen Yao smiled sweetly, scanned the QR code to make the payment, and that smile almost made the locksmith drool. He looked at Su Lin and said with a serious tone, Young man, with such a beautiful girlfriend, you must cherish her. This is my business card, next time you need a locksmith, I'll give you a 20% discount. Su Lin held the business card, sat on the bed, and felt like crying without tears. He personally escorted the locksmith out, and Yin Yao closed the door and returned to the bedside, smiling and saying, Come on, little brother, continue telling the story. Sister wants to listen. Su Lin gave her a blank look, got up, took a towel from the bathroom, wiped off the water on his body, and then lay down on the sofa. I'm not in the mood, do as you please. Where's my basin? Yin Yao got up to look for the basin. Su Lin, are you not done yet? I surrender, surrender, is that enough? No, coax me to sleep. Yin Yao said seriously, are you a child? No, but you scared me so much that I couldn't sleep. How do I comfort you? Su Lin swore in his heart that he would never provoke this woman again. I want to listen to music. Listen to your sister. It's okay if you don't sing, just hold me while sleeping. Yen Yao smirked. Su Lin's spirits lifted. Are you sure? Yes, but I get to choose the position. Yen Yao nodded and continued to ask. I just don't know if you can handle it. Don't worry, I definitely can. Let's do it. The next morning, Su Lin arrived at the criminal investigation brigade with panda eyes. Just as he walked into the office, he happened to run into Huang Weihan. The latter saw his dark circles and his tired face, and couldn't help but ask, Xiao Su, did you go to hug a girl last night? Su Lin gave him a disdainful look. Was this guy a mind reader? He replied irritably, it's not easy to hug a girl. Oh, it seems so. Huang Weihan seemed to have a gossiping nature and leaned forward, winking and saying, tell me, how many times did you hug her? Su Lin said, once. Once? Your combat power is so weak. Young man, it seems like you need to improve. Huang Weihan laughed and asked again, how long did it take to end up like this? Su Lin chuckled, he he, what are you laughing at? Huang Weihan continued to look curious. Then he heard a few words from Su Lin's mouth, six hours. Click. Huang Weihan's jaw almost dropped, his face full of disbelief and shock. One time for six hours, even if you took drugs, it wouldn't be that intense, right? And, you still managed to come to work? Su Lin revealed a smile that was even uglier than crying. Huang, can you hold a 90-pound girl in a princess carry for that long? Put. Huang Weihan was about to take a sip of water to calm himself down, but he instantly sprayed it out. He looked Su Lin up and down, only to see that this guy's hands were trembling, and he occasionally supported his waist and his legs were shaking. You. You held a girl for six hours? Su Lin looked aggrieved. It was my first time encountering someone who needed to be held to sleep. That woman is simply a giant baby. My waist. My hands. Ow. Ha ha. Seeing this guy's expression of despair, Huang Weihan slapped his thigh and laughed heartily, his laughter echoing throughout the office. Huang, what's so funny? A person walked in through the door, and it was Chen Hua. He looked at Su Lin's ghostly appearance, then looked at Huang Weihan, feeling that something must have happened. Huang Weihan pulled him aside and whispered to him. Three minutes later, another burst of laughter erupted. The news spread like wildfire. Soon, everyone in the criminal investigation brigade knew that Su Lin had been controlled by a woman. From then on, the legend of the six-hour hold became widely known. Of course, they didn't know who it was exactly. Su Lin couldn't be bothered with these guys and found a comfortable spot to lie down and sleep. Suddenly, a nursery rhyme came to mind. The little monk goes down the mountain to beg for food. The old monk has instructed, the women at the foot of the mountain are tigers. In a daze, not knowing how long he had slept, Su Lin was awakened by someone. When he looked up, he saw Chen Hua standing in front of him. Xiao Su, don't sleep. Get up. We're going on patrol. He said. Patrol? 
Su Lin didn't come to his senses for a moment, and when he did, he looked incredulous, Captain Chen, we're criminal police, do we still need to go on patrol? We usually don't need to, but recently, there have been over 10 theft cases in the Nanhua residential area, with a total amount reaching millions, and all of them happened during the day. The thief has caused panic, and even the complaints have reached the bureau chief. Chief Xia called Huang and gave him a good scolding, and Huang told us to go and check it out first. All right. Su Lin sat up, rubbed his face, and then left the office with Chen Hua. But instead of going out immediately, they went to the equipment storage room of the brigade. When Su Lin saw the 54 pistol and two magazines that Chen Hua brought out, his eyes became somewhat heated. Which man doesn't love guns? When he was in the police academy, he always ranked first in shooting assessments. Seeing the gun, his fingers seemed to have a sensation. What are you standing there for? Take it, Chen Hua said, handing him a pair of handcuffs. For me? Su Lin was somewhat surprised. He wasn't even part of the criminal investigation brigade, so how could he be issued a gun? Chen Hua replied, Wang Ji instructed that your situation is special. You've heard what your captain said, you've almost lost your life at least twice. Have a gun for your safety. But you have to be careful and only draw your gun when necessary, he added. Su Lin grinned and quickly took the pistol, nodding as he said, I understand, I understand. With the gun holstered at his waist, Su Lin felt much more confident, as if he could endure another two hours of carrying the princess like he did last night. Soon, the two of them drove to Nanhua Community. Nanhua Community itself was an upscale residential area, and most of the residents here had some wealth. The security here had always been excellent since the homeowners moved in, and there hadn't been any incidents. However, since the neighboring street of snack stalls was built, there were more people from all walks of life, and as a result, some thieves started targeting Nanhua community, with things being stolen every few days. Although the community was filled with surveillance cameras, there were still blind spots, and those thieves wore masks, so even if they were caught on camera, they weren't afraid. The two of them drove a regular black Volkswagen and arrived at the entrance of the community, observing if there were any suspicious individuals at the entrance. After a few minutes, Chen Hua and Su Lin got out of the car. Su Lin's gaze turned towards the snack street, which was less than 300 meters away from the community entrance. Even though it was lunchtime, it was already bustling. He observed for a moment, then turned around to catch up with Chen Hua, but suddenly, he furrowed his brows slightly. When he turned his head, he was momentarily dazzled by the reflection in the rearview mirror, as if it was the reflection of a telescope, because there were two points of light. If it were an ordinary person, being dazzled like this, they probably wouldn't have noticed. But who was Su Lin? He instantly felt that something was off. Why would someone use a telescope to look in his direction for no reason? If they were peeping, why would they peep at the main road? Instantly on guard, he shouted towards Chen Hua, who was about to cross the road, Old Chen, wait for me, I'm going to buy some food. Chen Hua, surprised, turned back. Then Su Lin, pretending to be nonchalant, walked towards the snack street in front of him and arrived at the entrance. He confidently walked in. When he came out, Chen Hua had changed into plain clothes, while Su Lin was still wearing his reflective uniform from the traffic police brigade, which was quite misleading. However, when he walked into the snack street, many people still cast different gazes at him, after all, traffic police were also police officers. Of course, this also made many people relax their guard. For example, someone who was peeking out of a window, looking down below. Su Lin glanced up, then immediately lowered his head after just a second, his pupils contracting. In his mind, information about a person instantly appeared. Ding Wanwu, Class B Wanted Criminal, ID Number. Suspected of robbery, theft, provocation, intentional injury. There were many charges, enough to sentence him for 10 or 20 years. However, before that, Su Lin activated his eye of good and evil to confirm. Ding Wanwu. Alright, there was no need to look at the rest. After confirming the other party's identity, Su Lin came to a stall and said to the owner, Boss, give me a plate of fried noodles. As he spoke, he took out his phone and scanned the QR code to pay. All right, officer traffic police, please wait a moment, the owner, in his 30s, smiled and called him officer traffic police, leaving Su Lin somewhat speechless. He pretended to be a little awkward and said, Boss, where is the nearest restroom around here? The boss smiled and said, There's one in the hallway of the rental room behind, on the second floor around the corner. Thank you, boss, Su Lin said and immediately ran towards the hallway. Seeing this, the young man on the third floor quickly pulled his head back and said to the middle-aged man lying on the bed, Boss, a traffic police officer is coming up, saying he needs to use the restroom. The middle-aged man suddenly sat up and took out a 30-centimeter long knife from under the pillow, his face darkening as he glanced at the door. Xiao Wu, go check it out. Lu Zi, 
get ready to fight. He gave orders to Ding Wenwu, then turned to the skinny young man on the other side. The latter nodded and also took out a short knife. He said, boss, we can't stay here. Once we sell this batch of goods, we'll leave immediately. Hmm, I know, the middle-aged man nodded. Ding Wenwu glanced at them, then walked to the front of the door, first listening against the door for a few seconds, then slowly opened a crack and looked outside. In that moment, he saw a size 43 foot. Boom! With a muffled sound, the door was kicked down, and Ding Wenwu was thrown out along with it. His forehead was covered in blood, and he lay motionless on the ground. Fuck! Damn! Two voices sounded in the room, and the middle-aged man and the skinny young man immediately jumped up, holding their knives tightly, staring at the traffic police officer who entered through the door. Su Lin narrowed his eyes when he saw these two people. Wang Er, Class A Wanted Criminal, ID Number. Suspected of multiple serious criminal cases such as intentional murder, intentional injury, robbery, theft, etc. Xiao Zitsong, Class B Wanted Criminal, ID Number. Suspected of organizing human trafficking, kidnapping for ransom, theft. Both of them were wanted criminals. Even without using the eye of good and evil, Su Lin could confirm it at a glance. Plus, with the weapons they were holding, there was no need to say anything else, just take them down. He seemed to see the points beckoning to him. Don't move. Just as he was about to go in and take action, a voice suddenly sounded behind him, it was Chun Hua. Su Lin had already sensed that something was wrong when he walked over, so he followed. Sure enough, this kid had spotted the target. At this moment, Chen Hua held a gun in his hand, coldly looking at the two criminals in the room holding weapons. He caught sight of the cash and various high-end gestures on the bed, even gold bars and bricks, and immediately understood that he had encountered the mastermind of a theft case. But Su Lin was really brave, he came up without even saying hello, what if something happened? Damn it! Let's go all out! Just at this moment, Wang Er roared and pounced directly at Su Lin, using Su Lin's body to block Chen Hua's gun. The skinny young man was even faster, rolling over and coming in front of Su Lin. The two of them directly launched an attack on the traffic police officer in front of them, and Wang Er even wanted to struggle a bit, seemingly wanting to hold Su Lin hostage. However, just as their knives were about to reach the traffic police officer's face, they suddenly saw a flash in front of them, followed by a sharp gust of wind. Su Lin first slapped Wang Er's face, fiercely sweeping it with unbelievable speed. Smack! At the moment the sound of the slap rang out, his foot also kicked heavily on the face of the bending Xiao Zitsong, the terrifying force directly sending him flying more than a meter away. Then he took a step forward, grabbed Wang Er's arm holding the knife, and with a forceful shoulder throw, coincidentally smashed into Xiao Zitsong. Thud! Ah! Ah! After the dull sound came two screams, in just three seconds, the two of them completely lost their ability to resist. Chen Hua stared with wide eyes, looking at the scene in front of him in disbelief. He had already been scared out of his wits just now, and now all that fear was forced back. Fuck! So powerful? He felt that even if he encountered Su Lin, he would probably be killed instantly. This is not a police officer, but a attacking machine. He had perfect timing. Didn't he almost get stabbed to death by the criminals twice? With his combat ability, how strong must those criminals be? After Su Lin subdued the two of them, he immediately kicked away the weapons, then took out handcuffs from his waist and put them on Wang Er. At this time, Chen Hua finally reacted and quickly put handcuffs on Xiao Zitsong. As for Ding Wenwu, Su Lin directly found a rope and tied him up. After doing all this, Su Lin found a bag and put all the stolen goods on the bed into it, while Chen Hua started calling Huang Weihan, congratulations, host, for capturing an A-level wanted criminal and earning 780 points. Congratulations, host, for capturing a B-level wanted criminal and earning 460 points. Congratulations, host, for capturing a B-level wanted criminal and earning 390 points. Awesome. With just one move, he earned over 1,500 points. Adding the remaining 600 points, he could directly participate in two lucky draws. However, Su Lin was not in a hurry and would do it when he returned. In less than 10 minutes, Huang Weihan arrived with his men. He saw Su Lin and Chen Hua holding three beaten up guys with blood all over them squatting at the intersection of the Snack Street, and immediately brought his men over. When he saw Su Lin eating fried noodles, his face turned black. Lao Chen, are they the thieves? Huang Weihan didn't bother with this guy and asked Chen Hua. Chen Hua nodded and raised the travel bag in his hand, saying, the stolen goods are all inside. It's estimated to be around 2 million. More than that. Su Lin swallowed the last bite of fried noodles and burped. Huang Weihan, more than 2 million? Su Lin shook his head. I mean they are more than just thieves. This is Wang Er, an A-level wanted criminal. This is Xiao Zitsong, and this is Ding Wenwu, both are B-level wanted criminals. Oh, by the way, 
Ding Wenwu has already confessed. He said Wang Er forced him to do it, and he is willing to take the blame. Hiss. Chen Hua shivered when he heard this guy's words. Why didn't you say it earlier? Such dangerous individuals should wait for the reinforcements to arrive before taking action. It was too dangerous just now. Huang Weihan's eyelids twitched as he looked at the three people squatting on the ground, unable to believe it. Three wanted criminals? He looked at Su Lin, this kid didn't seem to be joking, right? Hu Gang, Zhang Gong, take those two back to the team first, be careful on the way. Since there were three wanted criminals, they couldn't be ignored. He ordered two small teams to escort the two men. Yes, understood. The two immediately waved their hands, and several team members went up together, holding the two men and walking towards the car. Huang Weihan looked at Ding Wenwu and said, Since you are willing to take the blame, then lead us to identify the scene first. Okay. Okay, police uncle, I will confess everything. The group of people entered the Nanhua community and found the property management office to start identifying the scene. Originally, this step would be done after the interrogation, but since Ding Wenwu was willing to confess, it was also a good opportunity to verify whether the owners of the stolen property had falsely reported their losses. They quickly contacted more than a dozen families who had been robbed. Some had already returned, and some had someone at home, cooperating and supporting the work of the criminal investigation team. As they walked along, they quickly confirmed more than a dozen households that had been robbed. When they arrived at the last household, the homeowner came out to greet them, and Huang Weihan approached and started talking to the homeowner. Su Lin looked at the adjacent villa, his eyebrows slightly furrowing. He sniffed hard and his face gradually became serious. Taking a step forward, he interrupted Huang Weihan and pointed to the villa next to them, asking the homeowner, Sir, is anyone living in that villa? Oh, you mean villa no. 6. Someone used to live here, a young couple. But they moved out, and a young and beautiful woman moved in two days later. What's wrong, officer? Is there a problem? The homeowner asked curiously. Su Lin's face turned serious as he said, Sir, please go home immediately, lock the door, and don't come out. With that, he pulled out his gun from his waist. Huang Weihan and the others were puzzled, wondering what this guy was up to. But when they saw Su Lin draw his gun, their hair stood on end, and they instinctively pulled out their guns as well. Huang Weihan held his gun with both hands, pointing it downwards, and took a few steps to stand behind Su Lin. Xiao Su, what's going on? He asked with a grave expression. He had just heard Chen Hua's report that when Su Lin rushed into Wang Er's rented house, he saw the other party holding a weapon but still didn't draw his gun. But now, this guy pulled out his gun without seeing anyone, which shows the seriousness of the situation. Su Lin stared at the villa in front of him, squinting slightly and pointing to the position of the second floor windowsill. He didn't speak, not even making any sudden movements. Huang Weihan followed his gaze, at first not seeing anything, but when he saw it, his pupils suddenly contracted. Although their position was more than 20 meters away from the villa, anyone with good eyesight could see a mirror leaning against the corner of the second floor balcony of that household. What Su Lin saw was in that mirror. If it wasn't deliberately sought after, even if you stared at it for a long time, you might not be able to see what was reflected in the mirror. Bodies. Two bodies. Yes, inside the second floor balcony, behind the curtains, there were two bodies tied to chairs with their mouths taped shut. Both of them had their heads tilted back, with a gruesome scar on their necks, a fatal blow. Huang Weihan saw it, and after a few seconds, Chen Hua saw it too. Then one by one, the police officers who were trying to find the target also gradually saw the bodies. Everyone's face instantly became serious. Huang Weihan looked at Su Lin and said in a deep voice, How did you find it? Su Lin replied, I smelled blood and a faint smell of corpses. I estimate that the time of death is not more than 36 hours. Are you bragging again? Huang Weihan couldn't help but mutter, just by smelling, you can determine the time of death of a body? Su Lin didn't explain anything, he pressed the person behind him and then put away his gun, took a few steps back to create distance, and then quickly ran towards the villa. What are you doing? Huang Weihan's face changed drastically when he saw his actions. Chen Hua and the others were also extremely nervous, with cold sweat in their hands holding the guns. However, the next moment, they witnessed an unforgettable scene. They saw Su Lin rushing to the corner of the villa's wall, suddenly leaping high, stepping on the wall with one foot, raising his body, and then using his left foot to gain momentum on the wall. With a swoosh, this guy's body hung on the rain gutter of the balcony, which was at least four meters high. Then with a strong effort from his arms, he flipped onto the balcony. As soon as his feet touched the ground, his gun was already in his hand again. With a cold and indifferent gaze, he looked through the glass mirror and saw everything inside the room clearly due to the angle. However, it was precisely because of this that he took a sharp breath. It wasn't two bodies, but four bodies. 
In addition to the two people sitting, there were also two lying down. All four of them were killed with a single blow, the killer was extremely fast, and the incisions were very clean, as if they were straight lines. He walked into the room, quickly scanned around, confirmed that there was no one, then crouched down and looked at the bodies in front of him. The deceased were three men and one woman, all looking young, probably not over 30 years old. The bodies had lividity, and based on the current temperature, as he guessed, they had been dead for at least 24 hours but not more than 36 hours. In other words, they died yesterday. And it was obvious that the two men and two women who were tied up had suffered similar torture before their deaths, like being forced to confess under interrogation. Their bodies were covered in injuries, almost all of their fingernails were pulled out, and several teeth were also pulled out. Additionally, one ear was cut off from each of them and left next to the bodies. Thump, thump, thump. Footsteps sounded downstairs, Huang Weihan and his team entered through the front door, finally arriving upstairs. When the door to the room was opened, even if they were mentally prepared, everyone couldn't help but take a sharp breath. Four bodies. Huang Weihan exclaimed, his face extremely grim. This was definitely another major case, and it might even be a case that the provincial department would take charge of. He had a serious face and was about to go inside, but Su Lin raised his hand to stop him. Don't come in yet, let me take a look at the scene. Huang Weihan's face turned black when he heard this. What does he mean by not letting us survey the scene? This kid, could it be that he forgot his own identity? However, he just thought about it in his mind. He still admired Su Lin's ability. In addition, the whole room was almost completely dried blood. It would be easy to accidentally destroy the scene, so he stood with his men at the door and did not go in. Su Lin leaned on the ground, turned his face towards the balcony where there was light, and could vaguely see several footprints on the ground. Some of the footprints were clearly from the slippers worn by the two deceased who were bound, while the other batch of footprints were from the leather shoes worn by the two bodies lying down. In addition to these, there was another person's footprint. It was a woman's shoe print, size 38. Judging from the footprints left in the dried blood, it was a mature woman with steady and even footsteps, not like someone in a hurry. The fifth person. He said to himself, sniffing lightly. There were indeed five people in the lingering scent in the air. However, because of the smell of corpses and blood, these five scents were diluted and almost impossible to distinguish. After confirming the existence of the fifth person, Su Lin nodded to Huang Weihan and the others, and a large number of criminal police officers entered to start surveying the scene. Su Lin stood aside, carefully examining each body. Apart from the knife wound on their necks, there were no other fatal injuries on any of the bodies. Three men and one woman, especially the two lying down, were tall and strong, and they were killed with a single blow without being tied up. The killer was definitely a master who didn't hesitate to kill. And according to Su Lin's judgment, the owner of the fifth footprint, the woman wearing size 38 shoes, was the killer. Because he saw that footprint in front of the two bodies sitting in chairs and behind the two bodies lying down. Unlike walking, the footprint was slightly missing a piece and had drag marks, indicating that it was made by exerting force while bending the foot. After killing, the killer didn't bother to conceal the evidence, which proved that the killer was extremely arrogant and even disregarded the criminal investigation detachment of Jiang Yun City. Su Lin's face darkened. This was getting out of hand. If they didn't catch the killer, he couldn't pass this test. Huang Ji. Su Lin looked up and saw that Huang Weihan was already assigning tasks, so he didn't say anything else. In less than half an hour, the entire villa was surveyed. The belongings in the villa, such as cash and jewelry, were all intact. This situation told them that it wasn't a case of burglary and murder. So why did the killer commit the murders? Soon, the forensic team arrived and after collecting samples at the scene, they loaded the bodies onto the car and took them away. They would perform autopsies and provide detailed autopsy reports. Shalu, Sheen Dali, you two guard the scene. The rest of you return to the team for a meeting. Huang Weihan saw that it was almost done and left two detectives to guard the scene, leading the team back to the detachment. Such a major case required an immediate meeting to discuss the investigation strategy and then make a written report to the higher-ups. Su Lin didn't find it meaningful to stay behind, so he followed Huang Weihan and left. Sitting in the car, he kept frowning and thinking about the case. The killer was very professional and wouldn't easily make a move. There must be some interests involved. And those two male bodies were obviously not part of the same group as the couple. If it's a revenge killing, those two bodies can't be explained. He closed his eyes, and various possibilities kept flashing through his mind. They also endured torture to extract confessions. The killer was looking for something? So if I were them, where would I hide it? There is another question, they found evidence of the crime in the villa, but there were no traces left by the killer outside the villa. Even his tracking skills couldn't find anything. How did that person leave? Lao Fong, 
you must let this person go. I know what you're thinking, you just want to keep him in the traffic police department and take credit for it, right? You guys, have you no shame? Let me tell you, this is simply unrealistic. In criminal cases, you've already hit the jackpot once or twice, do you think you can get more? What does the promotion system and the traffic police department rely on, you know better than me? Su Lin is talented, do you think this is fair for him? Not to mention, with his abilities, I guarantee that in a year, he will be a police superintendent. Xiao Weihai sat in his office, holding the phone in his hand, with anger on his face. The person on the other end of the phone was a leader from the traffic bureau. Obviously, Lu Gong had communicated with the traffic bureau before leaving, so they insisted on not releasing the person. Seeing that Su Lin's temporary transfer time had already passed for three days, if they couldn't resolve it soon, he would be taken back by the traffic police department. Lao Fan, don't force me to turn against you. After all, you all are under the jurisdiction of our public security system. If I get really angry, I'll go directly to the provincial department and find the director. When this statement came out, the person on the other end of the phone seemed a bit less confident. Lao Xia, calm down. Okay, okay, let's have a meeting to discuss. That's it. I'll hang up first. Click. Hearing the busy tone on the phone, Xiao Wei Hai's face turned black. A meeting to discuss? What a load of crap. He gritted his teeth and wanted to pick up the phone to report to the provincial department, but he held back. He was afraid that the provincial department would also snatch people from them. At that time, when a higher-ranking official suppresses someone, transferring Su Lin to the municipal bureau would truly be in vain. Knock, knock, knock. Just at that moment, a knocking sound came from the door. Come in. Xia Wei Hai put down the phone. Huang Wei Han walked into the office, holding a document in his hand, and said with a serious expression, Director Xia, there's another major case. As he spoke, he placed the document on Xia Wei Hai's desk. It was the written report of the case discovered in the afternoon, as well as reports on the crime scene and forensic examination, and so on. Damn it, these damn killers, what do they take human life for? Looking at the throat-slashed body, Xia Wei Hai's face turned pale. He said, Huang Wei Han, no matter what method you use, within a month, you must find the killer and bring them to justice. Yes. Huang Wei Han stood at attention and shouted, then continued, Director Xia, there's another matter. Su Lin caught three wanted criminals this afternoon, one A-level and two B-level, and their identities have been confirmed. What did you say? Xia Wei Hai suddenly straightened up, his face full of disbelief. Good heavens, why are these wanted criminals waiting for that kid to pluck them like roadside cabbages? He looked at Huang Wei Han, his face somewhat dark, and said, Xiao Wang, compared to that kid, your detachment has been sitting idle these past few days. Huang Wei Han. He really wanted to complain for a moment, but he couldn't think of any words. Director Xiao was right, they were indeed sitting idle. Not to mention wanted criminals, even the crime scene just now was discovered by Su Lin. All right, I will immediately report these three wanted criminals. I estimate that our bonuses for this year will increase significantly. Hmm. I'll also recommend that kid for commendation. You can go back now. Remember, you must ensure the safety of people's lives and property. Yes. Director Xia, I'll take my leave. Huang Wei Han nodded, smiled bitterly, and left Xia Wei Hai's office. As soon as he left, Xia Wei Hai immediately picked up the phone and dialed the leader of the traffic bureau again. Hey, Lao Fang, you must give me the person. I will call the provincial department right now. The person on the other end of the phone was stunned. He heard the unquestionable tone in Xiao Wei Hai's voice. But if he called the provincial department, this matter would become a big deal. When a command came down from the provincial department, he would probably face criticism. Lao Xia, let's talk. We just had a meeting and discussed it. We can give you the people, but it seems like we are missing two cars this year. Oh right, we are also short of 10 motorcycles. And the manpower in each brigade and squadron is insufficient. Can you see if you can ask the higher authorities to help us solve this? On the other end of the phone, a middle-aged man with a gentle demeanor and black-framed glasses spoke a lot. Xiao Wei Hai's face turned pale after listening. He was being pressed by the director of the municipal bureau. But when he thought of Su Lin, his precious burden, he gritted his teeth and held back his anger. All right, Lao Fong, you're ruthless. I'll find a way to get you the cars, motorcycles, and people. Give me the transfer order right away. No, I won't release the person until I receive the items. A strong voice came from the other end of the phone. Xiao Wei Hai clenched his teeth and said, All right, I'll go get them for you. Su Lin finished work and was walking out of the criminal investigation detachment with his head down when he almost bumped into someone. He looked up and saw a smiling and charming face staring at him with a pair of watery eyes. You. Su Lin's face immediately turned dark, and the case was instantly forgotten. 
Sister, big sister, auntie, I was wrong. Let's pretend we don't know each other from now on. Please don't bother me, okay? He immediately surrendered. Yin Ya Feng glanced at him, flirtatiously flicked her hair, and said, No, you've provoked me, so you have to pay the price. She didn't know why, but she always felt relaxed when she was with Su Lin. It was nice to occasionally tease this little brother. In addition, his muscular body provided her with a sense of security. Of course, the most important thing was that it was fun and enjoyable. These were things she had never experienced in her work and life before. The men she had encountered before were either hypocritical phoenix men with ulterior motives or rich second-generation men who only thought with their lower body, or they were submissive male subordinates. She had never met a man who took the initiative to distance himself from her. She had to admit that this guy had piqued her interest. Su Lin looked at the charming woman, gritted his teeth, and said, What do you want? Just say it. It wasn't that he was being dramatic, but he was completely focused on solving the case and catching the culprit. Women would only affect his speed in drawing his gun. The water pipe in my house is leaking, little brother. Can you help fix it? And also, the sewer needs to be unclogged. Yen Yao blushed slightly as she spoke. It made her feel like one of those female protagonists in certain movies, but her water pipe and sewer were really blocked. Fix the water pipe, unclog the sewer. Su Lin's expression froze, and a look of shock appeared on his face. Water pipe, sewer. He suddenly woke up and finally understood why there were no traces left by the killer except at the crime scene. They had watched the surveillance videos outside the villa, but there was not a single shadow. How could this be explained? Either the killer hadn't left, or they had left from another place. That's it, that's it. He shouted excitedly, having figured out what he had been considering all afternoon. Without saying another word, he rushed up and hugged Yen Yao, who was in a panic. It's unclogged, everything is unclogged. Then this guy turned and ran outside, saying to Yen Yao as he ran, Hmm, you go back first, I'll help you after I finish the case. You little brat, you. Yen Yao was both embarrassed and angry, but in the blink of an eye, Su Lin had disappeared. She was a little frustrated, but gradually, her expression was replaced by a smile. Getting into the car, she said to the driver, Xing Jie, go to Maple Forest Road. Also, call the locksmith from yesterday and ask him to come again. Okay, General Yen. The female driver glanced at the rearview mirror and couldn't help but mutter to herself. It seems that their female CEO has taken a liking to that little traffic police officer. On Su Lin's side, he hurriedly ran out of the police station building and hailed a taxi straight to the crime scene in Nanhua Community. Driver, hurry up, Nanhua Community. He looked at the sky outside and had a trace of anxiety on his face. It was getting dark soon, and he was afraid something might happen. Su Lin was quite anxious. If his guess was correct, the killer probably hadn't left Nanhua community. It was even possible that they hadn't left that villa. Sometimes, the most dangerous place is the safest place, and there is a reason for that. Due to the rush hour, there was heavy traffic, and the taxi was not moving fast. Moreover, there was a traffic police officer sitting in the back, which made him even more nervous. What was originally a half-hour journey took nearly an hour before the car stopped outside the gate of Nanhua community. Su Lin paid the fare and hurriedly went to the security booth outside the community. There were two security guards on duty outside the booth, and one inside. When they saw Su Lin running over, they were slightly stunned, not understanding why this traffic police officer was in such a hurry. Officer, is there something wrong? One security guard asked. Su Lin said, open the gate, I need to go in. The security guard was taken aback and then said, sorry, officer, this is a high-end community. Besides the owners, you can only enter with the presence of the homeowner or their family members. Alternatively, you need to have an official letter of mission. Jokingly, Nanhua community has had frequent thefts these days, and the owners are already furious. The residents are all wealthy or influential people, and the property management company is almost in tears, having to strengthen their defense. In addition to the three security guards at the booth, there are at least two teams of 12 security guards patrolling 24 hours a day. When Su Lin heard the security guard's words, his brows furrowed. He thought of the two brothers left behind by Huang Ji in the afternoon, one was Xiao Lu, and the other was a member of Zhang Gong's team named Xin Dali. He took out his phone and immediately dialed Xiao Lu's number. Hello, Xiao Lu, Su Lin said, but there was no reply on the other end, and he also heard the sound of a heavy object falling and shattering. Oh no! Su Lin's face changed. He couldn't care about anything else and shouted at the security guard, I'm the officer who found the body in Villano. 6 this afternoon. Let your manager call Captain Huang Weihan of the Criminal Investigation Brigade and request support, quickly. His sudden shot directly shocked the security guard, and then he rushed into the gate, easily leaping over a gate that was nearly two meters high. 
F asterisk CK, Superman. The security guard widened his eyes and then quickly prepared to sound the alarm. But at this moment, he thought of what Su Lin had just said and hurriedly rushed into the booth. Captain Chen, that traffic police officer just said. The Captain Chen in the booth hadn't reacted yet, but as soon as the security guard finished speaking, he immediately looked at a business card on the table and dialed a number. Hello, is this Captain Huang? At the other end of the phone, Huang Weihan was looking at a case file. When he saw an unfamiliar number, he didn't want to answer it at first, but then he decided to pick it up. As soon as he heard the other party's words, he stood up abruptly. What did you say? Who, who told you to request support? He asked anxiously. I, we don't know either, he was wearing a traffic police uniform, Captain Chen replied immediately. Damn. Huang Weihan, upon hearing this, knew exactly who it was. He hung up the phone directly, opened the door, and shouted towards the office outside, everyone, follow me, support Nanhua community, quickly, clatter. The entire criminal investigation brigade instantly exploded, each person grabbing their equipment and assembling outside the door, getting into cars one after another. The cars started, sirens blaring, heading straight for Nanhua community. Su Lin had just entered the community and quickly rushed towards Villa No. 6. After about 10 minutes, he finally arrived in front of the villa. His gaze froze as he locked onto a woman coming out of the villa, covered in dirt, but with sharp eyes like knives. It's you! Su Lin's face instantly turned pale. That woman was none other than Jean Megue, whom he had encountered before. He never expected that after she escaped from the sand mining site, she hadn't left Jiang Yun City but continued to commit crimes and murder. Swish! He instantly drew his gun, and Jean Megue was not slow either. Both of them pointed their guns at each other almost simultaneously and then gunshots rang out instantly. Bang! 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 The muffled gunshots echoed throughout the entire community as Su Lin and Jean Megui dodged and shot at each other. In just a few seconds, both of their magazines were emptied. Click! Su Lin quickly changed magazines, hiding behind a patch of greenery, taking a deep breath. Instead of exposing his body, he directly leaped over a meter high. Since the height of the greenery was close to three meters, he barely managed to see the scene behind the greenery when he jumped up over a meter. He saw Jean Megue tightly gripping her gun, the muzzle aimed at the edge of the greenery. As soon as Su Lin exposed his body, she could instantly shoot and kill him. However, she never expected that Su Lin would jump directly, with his head popping out from the middle of the greenery. At the same time, a dark muzzle also emerged. Bang! Bang! Staggering continuously, a burst of blood splattered from Jean Megue's abdomen, and she groaned, her body retreating. At that moment, Su Lin gave a command to the system. Special mark. Special mark, Jean Megue, valid for 72 hours. A ray of light entered Jean Megue's body, but she herself felt nothing at all. At this point, Jean Megue was already injured, with a bullet in her right abdomen. She raised her head, a grimace on her face, gritting her teeth as she turned and ran towards the back. Su Lin had already opened the system panel at this time. He was about to chase after Jean Megue but suddenly saw a person lying in front of the villa gate, and it was Xiao Lu. His face changed, and he couldn't care less about pursuing her. Regardless, as long as she was still within Dasha's territory, she couldn't escape with the special mark. Xiao Lu. Xiao Lu. Su Lin picked up Xiao Lu and immediately noticed that this kid had knife wounds on his abdomen and shoulder, obviously from a fight with Jean Megue. At this point, he had lost too much blood, and his face turned pale. Su Lin took out his phone and called Huang Weihan directly. Hello, Su Lin, what's going on? Huang, call an ambulance, quickly. Okay. Upon hearing Su Lin's anxious tone, Huang Weihan hung up the phone and dialed 120 for emergency assistance. Su Lin put Xiao Lu down and entered the villa. Soon, in the main hall of the villa, he discovered another comrade from the criminal investigation brigade. When he saw the appearance of that comrade, his eyes instantly turned red. Dead. That comrade named Chin Dali. Sacrificed. A dagger had pierced through his neck, blood flowing all over the floor, and a strong smell of blood filled the air. Looking at those lifeless eyes, Su Lin's heart felt like it had been stabbed by a knife. This is the first time he has seen his brother sacrifice beside him, and the raging anger in his heart is about to explode. Catch her. Roared in his heart, Su Lin only had this one thought left. The sudden sound of gunfire caused chaos in the entire Nanhua community. Homeowners called the property one after another, and the security team had already rushed to the outside of Villa No. 6. When they saw Su Lin walking out of the villa with a gloomy face, everyone's expression changed. Su Lin's eyes were cold, like a wild beast. Those security guards were just ordinary people. At most they had trained for a while, where had they seen such eyes? They all retreated instantly. Take care of my brother. 
he said in a deep voice, then turned and rushed towards the darkness ahead, disappearing in front of a group of people in a few seconds. Captain Wang, what should we do? Captain Li, how would I know what to do? The two security team captains looked at each other, both looking confused. They looked at Xiao Lu lying in a pool of blood and bravely walked over. After examining the situation, both captains had a serious expression. The injuries were severe and life-threatening. Beep beep beep. Just at this moment, lights flashed behind them, and police cars and ambulances arrived almost at the same time. The police officers quickly got off the cars, all holding guns, and rushed to the front of the villa. Two doctors and three nurses also got off the ambulance and quickly arrived in front of the villa. Huang Weihan saw the two security teams present and didn't see any trace of Su Lin, so he immediately asked, where are our people? Huang Ji, are you referring to that traffic police comrade? One security team captain asked. Yes, yes, where is he? Huang Weihan was anxious. He left, he told us to take care of his brother and ran in that direction. The security team captain quickly pointed in a direction, which turned out to be the east gate of the community. Is this guy crazy? Huang Weihan's face changed. Huang Ji, I found shell casings. Just then, Chen Hua came to Huang Weihan and opened his palm, revealing four shell casings. There was just a gunshot? Huang Weihan's face turned serious as he looked at the two security team captains. Yes, Captain Huang, there was a fierce gunfight just now, and your comrade had a gun in his hand. One of them nodded. Damn it. Huang Weihan cursed. At this moment, Zhang Gong walked out of the villa, his eyes red and full of killing intent. Ah, I'm going to kill that bastard, damn it. The sudden outburst made everyone turn their heads. Dolly, Dolly. Then a desperate roar came from inside the villa. Huang Weihan and the others all had a drastic change in their expressions and quickly rushed inside. When they saw the body lying in their brother's arms, everyone's eyes turned red. Huang Weihan's breathing became heavy. After more than 10 seconds, he suddenly roared, I want all the surveillance cameras in the city, investigate, investigate for me. Damn it. Chen Hua, you stay here to help the doctors save the wounded and take care of our fallen brother. First and second teams, follow me. With a command, Huang Weihan immediately got in the car and took out his phone. He dialed the number and heard a panting voice on the other end. Hello, Huang Ji. Su Lin activated the system panel and quickly chased after the light spot indicated on the panel. It was just getting dark, and it was the time when the crowd was dense. He couldn't bite too tightly. If Jean Megui found out, the people around would be in danger. Su Lin, where are you? Hello. Hello. Su Lin. The phone suddenly disconnected. Su Lin shouted a few times, but there was no response on the other end. He quickly put down the phone and glanced at it, it was out of battery. At this point, he couldn't care about that anymore. Following the guidance of the special mark, he continued to chase after Jean Megui's location. The face of Chin Dali kept appearing in his mind, the blood on the ground seemed to have stained his pupils red, anger, hatred, and killing intent filled his mind. Su Lin was extremely dangerous now, he was in an extremely irritable state, just needing a spark to ignite and explode instantly. Left the city? After chasing for half an hour, Su Lin's expression suddenly changed. He noticed that Jean Megui's speed had suddenly increased a lot, heading straight towards the outskirts. He immediately prepared to stop a car, but when he saw the private car speeding past him, his mind immediately cleared under the illumination of the lights. Screech! A car suddenly stopped in front of him, and a person got out of the car, surprisingly it was Zhao Guodong. Su Lin, what's going on? Zhao Guodong lowered the car window and asked. But the next moment, he saw the gun in this kid's hand, and his expression instantly froze. Su Lin saw that it was his former leader and didn't waste any words, he directly said, Captain Zhao, lend me your car. Zhao Guodong didn't say a word, he quickly got out of the car. He opened the back door, and a woman in her thirties and an eight or nine year old child got out. Sorry, Captain Zhao, sister-in-law, I have urgent matters, I'll send the car back to you later. Su Lin finished speaking and stepped on the gas pedal, rushing out. He couldn't help but push Zhao Guodong and asked, husband, who is that? Zhao Guodong said, a remarkable person from our brigade. Didn't you ask me before how our brigade earned its honor and why the bonus was several thousand? Well, that kid fought for us. He has said, he's the one you said was born to be a criminal investigator. A traffic police officer? Zhao Guodong said, yes, it's him. Let's go, little girl, daddy will carry you. The couple looked at the car going away, and only left after they couldn't see the taillights anymore. The eastern suburbs of Jiangyun City are connected to the mountains. Even if it's not just one person, even if it's ten or a hundred people, they won't be able to find it at all. Su Lin wasn't in a hurry, the special mark could give him an accurate location. He not only wanted to personally capture Jean Megui, 
but also wanted to make this woman completely desperate and regret coming to Dasha. There are many ways to play someone to death. Time passed, and more than an hour passed in the blink of an eye. Jean Negue's speed was still fast, and Su Lin was not slow either. The two of them had already arrived at the border between Nanlin City and Jianyun City. This area had a hilly landscape, with continuous hills stretching for hundreds of kilometers. Even if it was one or two people, let alone a whole army, if they really wanted to hide, it would be very difficult to find them. Moreover, due to the proximity of Nanlin City to the border, the various forces in this area were complex and crime was rampant, especially for drug traffickers and illegal immigrants, there were countless of them. After Su Lin saw Jean Megui's destination, his eyebrows slightly raised. He felt that he should contact the criminal investigation brothers in Nanlin City through Huang Ji, not asking them to intercept, just to inform them so that they wouldn't mistake him for a criminal later. He took out his phone and realized that it was out of battery. Fine, let's do it one-on-one. -on -one. Shaking his head, besides the light of hatred, there was also a flame of excitement in Su Lin's eyes. Since the system drew so many skills for him, he had never used his full strength. This time, he could try to fully display his strength and see how strong he really was. Wait, I seem to have two more draws. Wait, I seem to have two more draws. Su Lin suddenly remembered that he had just caught two B-level wanted criminals and one A-level wanted criminal, and his points had accumulated to over 2,000, so he could draw two more times. As the saying goes, the more skills, the better. In case Jean Megui had assistance, he would at least have more means to save his life. System, draw. Congratulations, host, you have obtained the Gun King temporary card, valid for three hours. Gun King time card, within the time limit, elevate to the level of a world-class Gun King, never miss a shot. Note, this time card allows the host to instantly grasp various firearms knowledge, and there is a chance to improve the host's firearm skills after the time limit expires. Su Lin was taken aback, a time card? Only three hours? Honestly, this was the first time he had drawn something with a time limit. However, according to the system's explanation, it was definitely an amazing existence. A world-class gun king, one of the top gun users in the world. And the note, even after the time limit, there was still a chance to improve firearm skills. These two points were impressive. It was even more impressive than a one-time permanent physical enhancement card. System, continue. Su Lin was excited, this thing was definitely useful for him. Congratulations, host, you have obtained a new skill, Eagle Eye. Eagle Eye, intermediate skill. The host's vision is tripled, and night vision is tripled. Note, can be upgraded. Another prompt appeared in his mind, and Su Lin felt a cool sensation in his eyes. Then the whole world seemed to change color. The previously dark sky was no longer dark in his eyes, it was almost like the sun was setting and dusk was approaching, and he could see clearly without any light. And his line of sight had also increased. Under normal circumstances, an average person could not see the facial contours of an adult at a distance of about 20 meters, and at a distance of 100 meters, it was like looking at ants, unable to distinguish clearly. But now, even at 60 meters away, he could see the contours clearly. The line of sight could be enhanced to over 300 meters. At 300 meters, he could accurately see the contours of the other person, which was insane. Su Lin suddenly felt that the Gun King time card and the Eagle Eye skill were a perfect match. If he had an assault rifle in his hand, he would be a killing god at a range of 2 to 300 meters, capable of taking lives with a single shot. This round, I'm stable. If Su Lin had been worried before whether he could really kill the Golden Rose alone, now he had absolute confidence that he could play with the other party as he pleased. He suppressed his excitement and immediately pulled up the special marking interface. Suddenly, his gaze froze, and he slammed on the brakes. Just as he was drawing the lottery, the Golden Rose actually stopped. No, it wasn't that she stopped, but that she abandoned the car and chose to travel on foot. Through the monitoring of the special marking, he could clearly see the Golden Rose moving through the jungle. You can't escape. Su Lin sneered, looking at the distance between the two, which was less than 5 kilometers. Soon, he saw an abandoned off-road vehicle on the side of the road. But Su Lin had no intention of stopping the car, instead, he accelerated and drove forward. He had already calculated the route in his mind, and he planned to go around to the front of the Golden Rose. While Su Lin was relentlessly pursuing, in the depths of the jungle, a team was quickly maneuvering through the jungle. Team Hong, Frog Forest is only 3 kilometers ahead. According to our investigation, the target will be resting at Black Chicken Valley near Frog Forest, waiting for their contact. A panting voice sounded. This team could be divided into two groups based on their equipment. One group consisted of 12 people, each wearing the summer camouflage uniform of the Dasha army, with a full set of special operations equipment. These people were all energetic, 
with sharp eyes, like wild wolves. The other group consisted of more than 10 people, dressed in civilian clothes, wearing bulletproof vests, and holding handguns. Unless there were any surprises, these people were detectives or drug enforcement police. The one who spoke was the captain of the police team. Team Chow, take a rest first. When Team Hong heard the words of the police captain, he spoke. In fact, he was just taking care of the other party. With their special training, running 10 kilometers off-road was basic training for them, and this distance they had covered was nothing at all. But Xiao's team is different. They don't have as much time to train, and they often have very little sleep due to investigating cases. Naturally, their physical fitness cannot compare to Hong's team. All right, take a break. Xiao Changqing nodded, feeling relieved. He looked at the people under his command, who were all in a similar state as him, some even had pale lips. They had just run nearly 5 kilometers in the jungle, how could they compare to the special forces? If they were to encounter enemies, they wouldn't even be able to lift their guns. Hong Wenhao saw Xiao Changqing sitting on the ground, panting heavily, and shook his head slightly. He didn't look down on Xiao Changqing, but he disliked situations that delayed their mission. Their specialty in special operations was infiltrating enemy lines in advance, making preparations, and delivering a fatal blow at a critical moment. However, they didn't have as much time as the police force. One was the military, the other was responsible for maintaining local security and upholding the dignity of the law. Although their functions were different, he still admired the police force. After all, they had to deal with countless people and encounter challenging cases at all times. Ten minutes later, Xiao Changqing stood up from the ground and said to Hong Wenhao, Captain Hong, we're all rested, let's go. Upon hearing this, Hong Wenhao made a gesture and said, let's go. The team quickly infiltrated towards the direction of the Frog Forest Fort. At the same time, in two other directions, two figures were also rushing towards the Frog Forest Fort. Jean Megue was covered in sweat, one hand covering her wound, and she staggered towards her destination. As long as she reached the fort ahead, she would be safe because there was a mercenary group there waiting to assist her. Despite being shot, she was still able to run this far, which was quite terrifying. After running for nearly two hours and dozens of kilometers, even though she was at her limit, her fierce gaze still revealed an indomitable spirit. In the forest to the left of Jean Megue, Su Lin moved as swiftly as a cheetah. Three minutes ago, he had abandoned his car and started intercepting Jean Megue. However, it seemed that the woman had noticed his presence and quickly ran towards the southwest. If one were to look down from above at this moment, they would see that several groups of people in the jungle all had the same target, which was the frog forest fort. Jean Megue stumbled, her face pale, and large beads of sweat rolled down her forehead. Only 1,000 meters left, and I'll be back with Buka. Only. 1,000 meters, she said softly to herself with determination in her eyes. As a top-notch assassin and mercenary, it had to be said that Jean Megue was indeed formidable. It was already very difficult for a woman to survive in a place where people would eat each other, but she surpassed many men. Having received professional training since childhood and constantly facing death, she had truly maximized her potential. As long as she made it back this time, it wouldn't be long before she regained her fearsome reputation as the Golden Rose. Russell. However, this time she encountered a tough opponent. Footsteps suddenly sounded, and an agile figure appeared swiftly from her left front. The reflective stripes on his body were particularly eye-catching. Damn it, it's him again. Jean Megue's face twisted in anger. Without hesitation, she stopped and pulled out her gun. Bang, bang, bang. Gunshots instantly echoed through the entire forest, startling countless birds into flight. Su Lin moved like a cheetah, constantly weaving through the woods, using the large trees to hide his tracks. He held a gun in his hand but didn't rush to shoot because he only had two bullets left. Unless he had absolute certainty, he wouldn't dare to shoot easily. The Golden Rose emptied a magazine, quickly replaced it with another, and then retreated to the right with light footsteps. Under a big tree, Su Lin looked at the figure moving away from him through the special marking interface on the map. A cold smile appeared on his lips. Running? You're mistaken. He coldly spoke and swiftly chased after the direction of the Golden Rose. The sudden gunshot not only startled the birds in the jungle, but also frightened a 10-person team located behind the Frog Forest Fort. This team of 10 people was equipped with uniform eagle sauce gear, even their tactical vests and bulletproof vests were the best in the world. They had a unified name, the Buka Mercenaries. At the moment they heard the gunshot, a young leader in the team immediately raised his head, revealing a camouflage face. He looked alarmed and said, not good, Rose might be in trouble. Damn it. These Dixia police officers are asking for death. Another mercenary cursed, then said, Captain Zelu, let's go support Rose. If those Dixia police officers dare to catch up, we'll slaughter them. Good. 
Everyone, prepare to advance and support Rose. The man called Zayla immediately led the team forward. Rose had something very important on her, there couldn't be any mishaps. At the same time, on the other side, Hong Wanhan and Xiao Changqing were also startled by the gunshot. The marching team that was in a hurry instantly stopped under Hong Wanhan's clenched fist command. Gunshot, it's a Glock. Hong Wanhan's face changed. The standard equipment of foreign troops was obviously not their own. Based on the sound, it should be less than 1,000 meters away, everyone be careful. Hong Wanhan said, then continued to lead the team and run forward. At this moment, everyone was converging towards the location where the gunshot had just sounded. And at this moment, Su Lin once again blocked the path of the Golden Rose, he was like a ghost, persistently entangling with the Golden Rose. Ah, die, just die. Rose went crazy, she was feeling a bit desperate, and she madly roared while raising the pistol in her hand, shooting at Su Lin's position. Bang, bang, bang. In Rose's heart, she was cursing like crazy. Why, why did she have to encounter this person? He was just a traffic police officer, how could he appear at the crime scene and even discover her? Thinking back to their first meeting, she was also disrupted by that guy. And then the second time, just as she had obtained what the Buka mercenary group needed, she encountered Su Lin, this jinx, once again. She now wanted to ask, why did this guy become a criminal investigator and even get a gun? If it wasn't for him, she would have already met up with the people from Buka, and none of these things would have happened. Click, click, click. The sound of gunfire abruptly stopped, and the firing pin kept making crisp sounds. Rose looked at the gun in her hand and fiercely smashed it towards the conspicuous reflective strip in the jungle. Who? It seemed like she hit the other person, but there was only the sound of the pistol falling to the ground. Then, a cold and indifferent voice suddenly appeared behind her, you came to Desia to be a good person, I don't care. But if you dare to come to Desia to kill people and then try to run away, you're dreaming. You killed my criminal investigation brothers, if I let you escape, wouldn't it be letting them die in vain? So not only can you not escape, you also have to accept the punishment of Disya's law. Su Lin held a gun in his hand, coldly looking at Rose, his eyes devoid of any emotion. Die! Rose had somehow acquired a dagger in her hand, her body suddenly lunged forward, and she stabbed towards Su Lin's right hand holding the gun. Su Lin quickly stepped back, about to retaliate, when suddenly a red light seemed to flash in front of him, and his face felt a burning sensation. A large hole suddenly burst open on the tree to his right. Bang! After all of this happened, the sound of sniper rifle shots rang out. Sniper rifle. Su Lin's face changed drastically, and he fell backwards. In the next moment, another gunshot sounded. Bang! Just a little in front of where he had been standing, a patch of soil exploded. All of these things happened in an instant. When Jean Megui saw Su Lin being sniped, her face instantly lit up with joy, and she turned and ran forward. However, at that moment, sparks flew from Su Lin's gun. Bang! Bang! Two shots, one on each side, hit Jean Megui's thigh. Even with help, none of you can escape, Su Lin's eyes turned red as he stared fiercely in the direction the gunshots came from, and he sprinted into the jungle. He was like a cheetah, incredibly fast, and in just a few minutes, he had run hundreds of meters. At that moment, he saw some figures hidden in the darkness, and his expression changed. He quickly rolled into the bushes. Boss, it seems like we're caught in the middle. At that moment, Su Lin noticed that the group of people he had discovered were relying on cover, coldly watching the direction the sniper rifle shots came from. Hong Wan Han asked, Lima, have you found that sniper? Boss, that guy is out of my range, give me two minutes. The special forces member with the code name Lima immediately retreated. Xiao Changqing saw the special forces starting to move and he immediately had his men closely watch the direction the pistol shots came from, ready to attack at any moment. In the darkness, the atmosphere became increasingly oppressive, as if a storm was about to come. After the gunshots, the jungle instantly fell silent, and everyone felt the extremely oppressive atmosphere. Hong Wanhan and Xiao Changqing's expressions were tense. One of them was the captain of the Falcon Assault Team of the Red Eagle Special Forces, Southwest Theater, 6th Division. The other was the deputy captain of the criminal investigation support team in Nanlin City. Their target this time was a group of mercenaries who had infiltrated Disia. The intelligence was obtained by the criminal investigation support team, and they took the lead, following the clues all the way to this location. Because they feared the identity of the enemy, they requested support from the nearest Red Eagle Special Forces. Their main forces were estimated to take at least two hours to arrive. However, no matter what conspiracy those mercenaries had, they would capture all of them. Hong Wanhan took a deep breath and spoke into his personal communication device, Lima, quickly get into position and find the enemy sniper for me. Understood. Lima replied. 
Then Hong Wanhan looked at Xiao Changqing and said, Xiao, contact headquarters. We may have been exposed early. I suspect there is another team in action. As the commander of the special forces, he knew very well the significance of those gunshots just now. Another team? Xiao Changqing's expression became serious. He had also had some suspicions just now, and hearing Hong Wenhan's words immediately confirmed them. Hong Wenhan said, the initial gunshots came from our southeast direction, which is the area where we just climbed up the mountain. There should be two groups, but the exact number is unknown. Because they used two different weapons, the first gunshot was from a Glock pistol. After the sniper rifle shot, they used a police issue type 92, which should be from your police force. As a top special forces member, Hong Wanhan could tell what type of firearms they were just by listening. I agree, Xiao Chengqing nodded. Then he picked up his phone and dialed a number. Hello, Director Zhang, we have arrived at the location of the Frog Forest Fort, and we have already made contact with the enemy. We may have been exposed early. Yes, we have our own people. Can you find out who it is on your end? Yes. Understood, we will ensure the safety of our own people. After Xiao Changqing finished speaking, he hung up the phone. He nodded to Hong Wanhan and said, Director Zhang said they will investigate immediately. We should have results in about three minutes. Okay, let's wait three minutes. After three minutes, take immediate action. The latter had a strong determination on his face. In Nanlin City, in the conference room of the city bureau, this place has already been used as a temporary command center. Zhang Tao, the head of the Nanlin City Bureau, has gathered relevant units and various operational departments. They are sitting in the command center with a large screen in front of them, displaying images captured by drones. Among those present are the captain of the Special Police Brigade, the commander of the Special Forces, leaders from the city, the captain of the Criminal Investigation Support Team, and the head of the Technical Department, and so on. Everyone's faces were solemnly focused on the large screen. After finishing the call, Zhang Tao looked up at everyone and said, just received news that another group of our people may also be participating in the operation. As soon as these words were spoken, everyone's expressions changed. They looked at each other, not knowing which group it was. Is it your team, the anti-drug brigade? Zhang Tao looked at the captain of the anti-drug brigade. The latter decisively shook his head and said, Director Zhang, it's not our people. We are not currently in action. Everyone is on standby at the brigade. The special police? Zhang Tao then looked at the captain of the special police brigade, who immediately indicated that they were not involved. Comrades from the armed police? Zhang Tao looked at a colonel in military uniform. No, our armed police have always been in coordination with the city bureau. Unless there are special circumstances, we would not undertake missions without authorization. The colonel shook his head. Zhang Tao nodded and looked at the captain of the criminal investigation support team and a lieutenant colonel from the Red Eagle Special Forces. It was even less likely to be them because members from both the criminal investigation support team and the Red Eagle Special Forces were already involved in the mission, and they would not send a second group. Zhang Tao immediately shouted to the technical team, immediately retrieve surveillance footage from nearby areas and search for clues. Since it was nighttime, the jungle was pitch black, and even with the best drone technology, they couldn't see what was inside. Zhang Tao immediately thought of starting with the surrounding mountain roads, perhaps they could find some clues. Sure enough, in less than a minute, they discovered two cars parked on the side of the mountain road. Immediately check the license plates for me. With his command, people immediately started working. Report, both cars have license plates from Jiang Yun City. One of them was reported stolen three hours ago. The other one belongs to Zhao Guodong, the captain of the Jiang Yun City Traffic Police 1st Brigade. Contact Jiang Yun City. Forget it. I'll do it myself. After hearing the report, Zhang Tao immediately picked up the phone in front of him and dialed a number. Hello, Lao Xia, it's Zhang Tao. The call was made to Xiao Weihai, who was preparing to leave work and go home. Upon receiving Zhang Tao's call, Xiao Weihai was first stunned, then smiled and said, Lao Xiang, what's up? You rarely call me, is there a mission that requires our cooperation? Cooperation my ass. Zhang Tao cursed, then asked sharply, Lao Xia, did you send people in the direction of the Wulin village? Wulin village? The border area near the junction of our two cities? It took Xiao Weihai a while to remember this place, and he asked with some confusion, Lao Zhang, what do you mean? We have an operation here, but we just discovered another group of people. And we also found the car of Zhao Guodong, the captain of the Jiang Yun City Traffic Police 1st Brigade. Zhang Tao said in a deep voice, wait for my reply. Xiao Weihai hung up the phone directly, then immediately picked up his mobile phone and dialed Zhao Guodong's number. Hello, Xiao Bureau. Zhao Guodong's voice sounded somewhat surprised. Xiao Weihai said, Zhao Guodong, where are you? 
I'm at home. Zhao Guodong answered. Where is your car? My car was taken by Su Lin. By the way, Bureau Xia, did that kid go on a mission? I saw that you have already given him a gun. Don't ask what you shouldn't ask. Xiao Weihai got the answer, hung up the phone directly, and then dialed Su Lin's number. Unfortunately, Su Lin's phone couldn't get through, so he immediately dialed Huang Weihan's number. Huang Weihan, where are you guys? He asked coldly. Director Xia, we are heading towards the direction of Wallen Village, Huang Weihan and the others replied. They had just found out the direction of Jean Megui's escape and Su Lin's pursuit route through surveillance, so they were already rushing towards Wallen Village. After reporting their location, Huang Weihan's tone became low and filled with sorrow as he said, Director Xia, Jean Dili sacrificed himself. What did you say? Xia Weihai stood up abruptly, his voice filled with anger. Xia Weihai stood up suddenly, his eyes filled with fury. Qin Dali sacrificed himself. An image of his honest face appeared in his mind, always smiling, always greeting everyone with a grin, dedicated to his work and taking care of all his colleagues. Whenever someone had difficulties, he was always the first to lend a helping hand. Doli. Xia Weihai's lips trembled as he said, his child is only seven years old, I. His eyes turned red, and he suddenly raised his head and roared, Huang Weihan, at any cost, catch the killer, I will bring him to justice. Yes. Huang Weihan immediately replied loudly. Wait. Xiao Weihai suddenly thought of Zhang Tao's question and asked, Huang Weihan, are you heading towards Wallen village? Did you take any action in advance? There are comrades from Nanlin city also in action there. What? Huang Weihan was stunned for a moment and hurriedly said, Director Xia, Su Lin has already gone over. You don't think he might clash with the comrades from Nanlin City, right? In the dark, if something goes wrong. Hiss. Thinking of this possibility, he couldn't help but take a deep breath. Xiao Weihai's temples throbbed, and he cursed, Huang Weihan, what are you doing? How could you let that kid act alone? Immediately order him to retreat, stop fooling around. Huang Weihan felt very wronged and said, Director Xia, I didn't want to either. But it seems like his phone is turned off, and we can't contact him. Xia Weihai. Fine. There's no need to say anything else. Be careful, he instructed Huang Weihan, then picked up his phone and dialed Zhang Tao's number, saying, Old Zhang, we indeed have someone inside. What did you say? Someone? On the other side at the command center in Nanlin City, Zhang Tao's eyes suddenly narrowed upon hearing Xia Weihai's words. Old Xia, you're sending someone over, are they carrying out a mission? Xia Weihai, no, he's going after a murderer. Because of that person, we lost an experienced detective. I understand. Zhang Tao's tone became somewhat low upon hearing the word lost. He didn't blame Xiao Wei Hai, because if someone from his own detective team had sacrificed themselves, he would also unhesitatingly order his subordinates to pursue the culprit, even if it meant going to the ends of the earth. But, sending just one person, he was too confident, right? While he was muttering to himself, Xiao Wei Hai continued, Old Zhang, our detective team is already on the way and will arrive in about half an hour. Zhang Tao, Old Xia, it's too late. We will take action first. Inform your people that our team is in. Sorry, old Zhang, we can't contact him. Zhang Tao really couldn't help but curse. What if they accidentally hit their own person? All right, we will be careful. He hung up the phone, glanced at the time, and it was exactly three minutes. He immediately called Xiao Chang Cheng and relayed the information they had received in detail. What? Director Zhang, are you kidding me? Just one person? That guy has some nerve. Stop talking nonsense, he doesn't know our situation here, he's just chasing the killer. Xiao Changqing, Director Zhang, we can almost confirm now that the mercenary's target is to assist the fugitive being pursued by Jiang Yun City. They just fired their guns. Upon hearing this, Zheng Tao was suddenly shocked and said, we must ensure the safety of our comrades. I will go find Xiao Weihai and have him treat us to a meal. Yes. Xiao Changqing hung up the phone. He looked solemnly at Hong Wenhao and said, Captain Hong, our guess was correct. It was one of our own who entered the forest, only one person from the criminal investigation detachment of Jiang Yun City. He doesn't know about our operation. If we encounter him later, we must be careful. Boss, there's an ambush. Damn. Suddenly, a cry rang out from Hong Wenhao's individual communication device. Instantly, he exploded with anger and shouted, Assault team, quickly support the sniper team. Fire support team, provide cover. Reconnaissance team, ensure our rear is secure. Hurry, hurry, hurry. The six of them rushed out almost simultaneously, charging towards the direction of the gathering group. Xiao Changqing hesitated for a moment, then immediately followed suit. They quickly maneuvered through the jungle and in less than a minute, arrived at the edge of a grassy area that had been flattened. 
In the middle of the grass, two people were lying on the ground in various positions, wearing individual combat suits, unmistakably members of the Falcon team. Hong Wenhao's face darkened as he walked forward and reached out to touch the neck of his subordinate. The pulse was still there, the person had just passed out. What's going on? Xiao Changqing asked in a deep voice. In the next moment, a figure appeared behind Hong Wenhao like lightning, and a terrifying gust of wind instantly sounded by his ear. As the captain of the assault team, Hong Wenhao's combat skills were undeniably strong. He lightly tilted his head, avoiding the attack from the shadow, and in the next moment, drew his military knife and stabbed towards the shadow's armpit. But he only felt a blur before his eyes, and a sharp pain in his hand. He didn't know when his knife had been snatched away, and it was now pressed against his neck. Don't move! Who are you? We are the Dasha criminal police, put down your knife. We are the Dasha special forces, drop your weapons. Drop your weapons and surrender, or you'll be shot. One reprimand after another, everyone was extremely tense. Especially the members of the Falcon assault team, each of them looked dumbfounded. What kind of godlike combat power was this? This was Hong Wenhao, the captain of their assault team, a top-notch martial artist. But in just an instant, someone had their knife pressed against his neck, and it was even his own knife. Su Lin heard these guys identify themselves and was momentarily stunned. He was hiding behind Hong Wenhao and said, You say you are, then you are? Show me your identification, otherwise don't blame me for being impolite. He was very cautious, after all, he didn't know who had shot at him just now. What if it was these people? It wasn't impossible. Brother, are you a detective from Jianyun City? Xiao Changqing reacted and immediately asked. Su Lin was taken aback by his words, and just as his grip on his hand slightly relaxed, Hong Wenhao suddenly grabbed his arm and threw him over his shoulder, slamming him to the ground. However, Su Lin's abdominal strength erupted, and he forcefully flew up from a lying position, like a zombie, straightening up. Crack! Hong Wenhao felt a chill on his neck, his eyes widened instantly, and he didn't dare to move. Xiao Changqing's mouth hung open as he watched Hong Wenhao being toyed with again, his knife pressed against his neck. He couldn't help but swallow a mouthful of saliva. This detective. Traffic police. Xiao Changqing immediately exclaimed when he saw Su Lin's armband. Damn. Are they kidding me? This guy, why is he wearing the uniform of the traffic police again? You're quite the player, huh? Su Lin once again pressed the military knife against Hong Wenhao's neck, saying somewhat teasingly. If it hadn't been for his strong abdominal strength just now, he might have really been countered by this guy. Hong Wenhan. He felt a bit uneasy. This kid was a bit abnormal. After being thrown over the shoulder, he could instantly react and jump up like a zombie. What kind of explosive power and core strength was this? Traffic police. At this moment, Xiao Changqing exclaimed, and Hong Wenhan's jaw almost dropped to the ground. Brother, calm down. A special forces member stepped forward, extending his hand in a pressing gesture. Then he told Xiao Changqing, Xiao team, quickly, take out your identification. Upon hearing this, Xiao Changqing immediately reacted and took out a document, throwing it towards Su Lin's direction. In the dark night, the visibility was not very clear, and the identification was black, with only the police emblem shining a bit. In fact, it couldn't be seen at all. When Xiao Changqing threw it, he regretted it a bit. But in the next moment, a hand, like a ghost, grabbed his identification. What kind of gaze was this? The group of special forces members wearing individual night vision goggles were all stunned. No one knew better than them the significance of Su Lin's actions just now. In the dimly lit darkness, he could accurately catch an identification card smaller than a palm. Could he also see things clearly in the dark? They guessed right. Su Lin had already activated his eagle eye skill. Although it couldn't compare to daytime, it was clearer compared to night vision goggles. Technology ultimately couldn't match up to the real deal. Su Lin picked up the identification card and glanced at it. Namlin City Criminal Investigation Support Team, Deputy Support Team Leader, Xiao Changqing? The identification card was genuine and could be confirmed. He compared the photo with Xiao Changqing's appearance and confirmed that it was indeed him. Sorry, I am from Jiang Yun City Criminal Investigation Support Team. No, I am an intern traffic police officer from Jiang Yun City Traffic Police 1st Brigade. Su Lin said, releasing Hong Wenhan who was scared out of his wits. Then he took out his own identification and walked towards Xiao Changqing. After Xiao Changqing received it, his subordinates immediately surrounded him, turned on their flashlights, and looked at it. The expression on their faces was as if they were constipated. He handed the identification to Hong Wenhan, and at the moment the special forces captain saw Su Lin's identification, he couldn't help but curse. Is everyone in Jiang Yun City so amazing? Such a person, being an intern police officer in the traffic police department? Is it my brain that's not working, or is this world crazy? 
Just as everyone was looking at Su Lin, his face suddenly changed, and his gaze was fixed on a bush hundreds of meters away. He said in a deep voice, be careful, they're coming. They? It was only at this moment that Hong Wenhan and Xiao Changqing realized that the mercenaries were still there, and they almost overlooked it. Su Lin flashed and instantly appeared behind a large tree. Then he saw him pick up a sniper rifle, which turned out to be the Lynx's sniper rifle. At this moment, the Lynx and another special forces member were still unconscious. Seeing the Lynx's sniper rifle, Hong Wenhan remembered the unconscious Lynx and immediately sent someone to wake him up. It was clearly their team member's weapon, so what was a traffic police officer doing with it? Lynx, wake up. Lynx, slap, slap, slap. Several consecutive slaps, and the Lynx lying on the ground slowly woke up. His gaze regained some focus, and then his pupils suddenly contracted, and he jumped up from the ground. Enemy attack. The next moment, he saw Hong Wenhan crouching beside him, as well as several other team members. Boss, we encountered. He had just started reporting when he suddenly saw the figure standing under the tree dozens of meters away, and immediately exclaimed, Boss, it's him, he attacked us. The lynx's scream broke the silence of the night sky. Su Lin's expression immediately changed, and he stared fixedly at the 10 o'clock direction. As soon as the other side's people heard the movement, they immediately went into hiding. Judging by the distance, it was at least 300 meters or more. He frowned and glanced at the lynx, then looked at the sniper rifle in his hand. His heart moved slightly, and he called the system. System, activate Gun King time card. Ding. Gun King time card activated, duration, 3 hours. The prompt appeared in his mind, and in the next moment, countless knowledge about firearms appeared in his memory. This included various types of handguns, rifles, sniper rifles, machine guns, and more. In the blink of an eye, he transformed from a novice who only knew about handguns and rifles into a true master of firearms, a gun king. The muscle memory in his hands instantly integrated into his nerves, forming a terrifying reflex, making shooting almost an instinct in his subconscious. Give me back the gun. Suddenly, the lynx erupted again. As a sniper, the sniper rifle was equivalent to his second life. As long as he had the gun, he could take lives. So when he saw Su Lin holding his sniper rifle, the lynx instinctively rushed out, his face filled with ferocity. Lynx! Hong Wanhan saw this scene and his face changed drastically. It was too late to stop him. He couldn't help but get angry and shouted at Su Lin, give him the gun. Su Lin completely ignored the two of them. Sorry, at this moment, he didn't trust anyone except himself. Because he had already become the gun king. Bang! The sound of a gunshot rang out, and the running lynx suddenly felt a terrifying killing intent in the split second before. He instinctively lowered his head and fell down, and this action saved his life. The bullet grazed his head and hit the large tree on his right, creating a big hole. Sniper! Give him the gun! He instinctively shouted at Su Lin, but before the words could leave his mouth, he saw Su Lin raise his gun and aim, then shoot. Bang! The muffled sound of the gun rang out. The standard action, the indifferent gaze, and the terrifying reaction speed made everyone present who understood sniping change their expressions. The lynx couldn't help but shout, 1. 7 seconds. For a sniper, from spotting the target to locking on and shooting, the fastest would take about 2. 5 seconds. This was already very terrifying, considering that before shooting, factors such as air density, humidity, and wind speed needed to be calculated, which affected the trajectory. It was said that there were snipers who could do it faster, but almost all of them took around 2 seconds. Each additional second was as difficult as reaching the heavens. Of course, if it was shooting randomly, that was a different story. However, after Su Lin fired, a cry suddenly came from nearly 300 meters away. Although the sound was very faint when it reached them, everyone heard it. Within two seconds, the lynx's eyes were filled with disbelief. No, not just within two seconds, but within one. Seven seconds, a difference of zero. Three seconds. This zero. Three seconds was an insurmountable gap in the careers of most snipers. Just as everyone was caught in shock, the lynx, who was closest to Su Lin, discovered another terrifying situation. That guy didn't have any night vision equipment. Without night vision goggles, his sighting system also didn't have night vision capabilities. Without night vision equipment or observation tools, how did he do it? Could it be that he relied solely on his eyes? At this moment, everyone also realized this and couldn't help but gasp in astonishment. Abnormal. No, abnormal was not enough to describe this guy's terrifying abilities. In the bushes nearly 300 meters away, Zayla looked solemnly at the team member lying in front of him. He saw that the right side of the team member's head had been blown off, and red and white liquid flowed all over the ground. Boss, there's a sniper. That person has support. One of his subordinates said to Zaylu, 
with an extremely serious expression. Zelu gritted his teeth and said, No matter what, we must bring back the golden rose. She holds something very important. Even if we can't take her with us, we must bring back what she has. Don't worry, our support is right on the border. Once we're caught by the Dasha police, they will immediately come to our aid. Yes. The remaining eight people followed Zalo slowly moving forward, while Zalo himself picked up the sniper rifle and began observing the environment ahead. These mercenaries' equipment is no less inferior to the Dasha special forces. Their combat power is extremely elite, even on an international level. But they should never have come into Dasha's territory. Su Lin had already spotted the enemy when they started moving. A cold smile appeared on his lips as he disappeared behind a big tree, his gaze coldly scanning the front. He quickly moved while holding the sniper rifle. Running about 20 meters, he suddenly raised the barrel and aimed to shoot. Bang! The gunshot rang out, and a mercenary who was advancing fell, a large hole torn open in his chest, blood gushing out. Walk! When he saw another one of his subordinates fall, the captain of the mercenaries exclaimed in shock. A look of astonishment appeared on his face as he realized the sniper on the other side was much stronger than he had imagined. Stop, everyone stop. Damn it, the enemy sniper is strong, and his observation skills must be exceptional. Zelu's face was grim as he ordered his men to stop, and everyone found cover. But it was useless. Su Lin's figure moved through the jungle, his gaze fixed on the enemy. After about a minute, he locked onto a mercenary who had half of his body exposed. Without hesitation, he aimed his gun and fired. Bang! The gunshot rang out again, and the mercenary with half of his body exposed was violently thrown into the air by the bullet. While the person was still flying forward, Su Lin quickly pulled the trigger again. Bang! Another gunshot, and the mercenary's head exploded amidst a scream of agony. Damn! Damn! Damn damn! Lynx, come and see a god! Low screams and exclamations came from the mouth of the observer, Wild Boar, who had just been awakened. As a member of the sniper team, the importance of the observer was beyond doubt, and he was also the deputy sniper in the squad. But at this moment, Wild Boar realized that compared to the others, he was simply trash. Lynx had been watching all along. He saw the mercenary being blown away and then shot in the head through the night vision scope. A chill ran through his heart. He had only seen this kind of operation in Legends, and it was terrifying. He couldn't help but look at the young man who was constantly moving through the jungle. This sniper tactic was simply killing him. Sniper? No, he was just a little brother in front of him. While the people on Dasha's side were shocked, Zelu, the mercenary leader, was in despair. It was too terrifying. With this kind of marksmanship, they had no chance of infiltrating. Run! His first thought was to escape, but could they? Unless they killed the sniper or the other side gave up sniping, none of them could escape. Damn it, how can there be such a strong sniper? Zelu's heart sank to the bottom as he cursed, then said to his men, no one should show their heads, don't make any noise. They were scared. Even though they were rampant and ruthless in Mianbon, facing such a master, their fear was magnified infinitely. The sniper's marksmanship had already brought them psychological trauma. They could only wait for support in place. You think you'll be safe by hiding like a turtle? Su Lin's lips curled into a cold smile as he put away his gun and looked to his right front. A figure was crawling forward, and it was none other than Jean Megue. Even after being hit in both legs by Su Lin, this woman didn't give up and gritted her teeth as she crawled forward. It must be said that her tenacity was truly terrifying. Su Lin walked over quickly, ready to capture the woman. But at that moment, a beam of light lit up the sky, and the dazzling fireworks instantly changed everyone's expression. Signal flare? Su Lin's expression froze. Then, he noticed that the mercenaries on the opposite side had also fired a signal flare. Immediately after, gunshots rang out. Rustling. The leaves rustled and rubbed against each other, and figures appeared in the distance. There were dozens of them, holding assault rifles, rushing towards Su Lin and the others. In less than 500 meters, in less than 2 minutes, the two sides had already faced each other. Bang bang bang. Gunshots rang out, Hong Wan Han and Xiao Changqing directly confronted the mercenaries, killing the enemy. Su Lin narrowed his eyes slightly, and infinite anger erupted in his heart. Lawless, what do you think our border is? You dare to come and go, and even dare to shoot at our military and police? Kill. None of you can escape. His eyes turned red, and he rushed forward, raising his gun and shooting. Bang! Click! Bang! Click! One shot after another, with almost no pause, time compressed to one. Five seconds, and the sniper rifle almost became an automatic rifle in his hands. In just twenty seconds, he killed nine people in a row, rendering the mercenaries charging out completely defenseless. Hong Wanhan also led his troops to charge forward, killing seven or eight mercenaries. 
Due to Su Lin's outbreak, the battle became completely one-sided. Jean Megui saw the scene and crawled forward frantically. Her face, covered in bloodstains from the thorns, was filled with hatred and coldness. She wanted to escape and seek revenge on the traffic police officer. Kill. Kill his family and friends, let him know the consequences of opposing her. In the midst of the fierce battle, Su Lin didn't have time to deal with Jean Megui. However, when Jean Megui was about to crawl to the border, a voice that made her tremble suddenly sounded behind her. You escaped, but what about my brother's revenge? Su Lin coldly approached, grabbing one of Jean Megui's feet and dragging her forward roughly. Ah! Jean Megui screamed in madness, but no matter how she struggled and screamed, Su Lin's hand was like a pair of iron pliers, dragging her along. However, she soon realized that Su Lin was heading towards the border. What was he planning? Letting her go? Jean Megui looked at the border, which was getting closer and closer, her eyes widened, and a glimmer of hope burned in her eyes. Closer. Very close. 150 meters, 100 meters, 50 meters. Only 50 meters left. Once I pass this 50 meters, I'll escape. The military and police of Dasha would never dare to shoot outside the border, they don't have the guts. As Jean Megui's hope grew, another voice echoed in her mind. Why? Why is he letting me go? Could it be that Zelu captured their people? Yes. It must be like that. It must be like that. Only 30 meters left. The final 30 meters. 20 meters. Only 20 meters and I'll be free. Ha ha. Dasha, the forbidden land of mercenaries? It's nothing. A smile appeared on Jean Megui's face. By now, they had already left the jungle and were on an open plain. About 300 meters away from them, a group of people was rushing towards them. At the same time, behind Su Lin, Hong Won Han and the others were also chasing after them frantically. What are you doing, traffic police officer? Bastard, are you betraying the country? Damn it, what is this guy planning? Everyone was dumbfounded, watching Su Lin bring the person to the sacred borderline, less than 10 meters away from the outside. Beyond that was Mianbang. No matter how important their actions are, as long as they cross that line, they must stop abruptly. Everyone's hearts were raised until Qin Su casually threw the golden rose 10 meters away from the border, and then stepped on her wound with his foot. Ah! A piercing scream rang out, and the golden rose trembled in pain, gritting her teeth and glaring at Su Lin, her hope completely shattered in that moment. She understood. She finally understood. Why did this guy bring her to the border? It was because he wanted her to experience the terrible despair in the face of hope. Hope was within reach, but no matter how she struggled, she couldn't touch it. The most terrifying thing in this world is hope. A cold smile appeared on Su Lin's lips as he stepped on the golden rose and raised the sniper rifle in his hand. Bang! The gunshot pierced the air, directly taking down two of the approaching group. Two birds with one stone. The level of the gun king was absolutely extraordinary. Damn it, stop. Over 20 people rushing over immediately crouched down. But it was useless. Su Lin's eagle eye skill enhanced his night combat abilities several times, and in his eyes, the pitch black night was nothing more than dusk. He pulled the bolt, aimed the gun again. Bang! A spray of blood flew up, and a mercenary hiding in the bushes fell down. Keep going. Pull the bolt, raise the gun, shoot. Bang! 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 Every gunshot took down an enemy. A group of mercenaries hiding in the bushes, fear evident on each of their faces. Die! A roar, Zelu suddenly stood up, holding a sniper rifle in his hand as well. Lock the target, aim. However, as soon as his finger touched the trigger, he saw a flash of fire in the sniper scope, and in the next moment, his head exploded. Blood and brain matter splattered on the ground, and all the mercenaries looked at the crimson liquid in extreme horror. It was too terrifying. This kind of sniper ability was almost invincible in this small-scale battlefield. On Su Lin's left, Hong Won Han and Xiao Changqing and the others widened their eyes, each person's gaze filled with shock and horror. They swore that they would never forget this scene in their lifetime. One person, one gun, stepping on the enemy, shooting down the incoming strong enemies. It fulfilled the ancient saying, one man can hold the pass against 10,000. Go! Everyone, retreat! Finally, facing Su Lin's terrifying precision and rapid fire, those mercenaries nearly 300 meters away could no longer remain calm. Their sniper had been taken out, and even though the sniper rifle was still there, they didn't dare to raise their heads. Zelo's counterattack was still fresh in their minds, and looking up meant death. Everyone run together, quickly. A leading mercenary shouted and got up to run. At this moment, Hong Won Han and the others finally snapped out of it and immediately rushed forward without saying a word. Su Lin was far away from those mercenaries, but they were close, less than 200 meters away. When they saw the enemy trying to escape, Hong Won Han immediately organized an attack. Rat-a-tat-tat. -tat. 
Gunshots rang out continuously, and the Falcon assault team resembled a group of fierce wolves, each person exuding a powerful and fierce aura. Even Xiao Changqing and the other police officers were charging forward like madmen. They held pistols in their hands, even though the enemy was already beyond their range, they kept firing to disrupt the enemy's hearts and create opportunities for their special forces brothers. Bang! Bang! Su Lin continued to shoot, but he was firing blanks. His eyes were somewhat bloodshot, almost unable to stay open, his body also felt weak, and he felt some pain in his lower left back, as if fresh blood was surging out. He couldn't worry about that now, killing one was one. In less than 10 minutes, the battle was over. Hong Wan Han and others chased to the border, watching as only three mercenaries jumped into the river in a sorry state and escaped. They sighed helplessly. The line beneath their feet was the red line they couldn't cross. Everyone, clean up the battlefield, see if anyone is still alive? Be careful, Hong Wan Han said. Yes. His subordinates immediately started to act. Xiao Changqing looked at his brothers behind him and said, you guys go help, be careful. Understood. The group of detectives nodded. Then the two captains glanced at each other and ran towards Su Lin almost simultaneously. In no time, they arrived at Su Lin's location. They saw that the person at his feet had already passed out, while Su Lin stood straight, his eyes bloodshot and terrifying. There was a large blood stain on his chest and abdomen, but he didn't move, still holding his gun. Brother, the battle is over, put down your gun, Xiao Changqing said. But Su Lin seemed not to have heard, still motionless. It wasn't until Hong Wenhan approached and lightly touched him that his body stumbled and sat on the ground, then fell backwards. Brother! The expressions of the two men changed drastically, and they quickly went forward to check. Hong Wenhan examined him, took out a bandage to dress Su Lin's wounds, and said, rib abrasion, a bit serious, but not life-threatening. This guy is too fierce, probably exhausted, plus some excessive blood loss. For Su Lin, Hong Wenhan, and Xiao Changqing only had one word in their hearts, admiration. Even though the former was the captain of a special assault team, having participated in numerous actual combat missions and carried out dozens of dangerous tasks, he had to admit that the kid in front of him was the strongest person he had ever seen. We have to get him to the special forces team, no need for any assessment, just recruit him directly. He had already made up his mind and would tell his superiors when he returned. The chief would definitely approve of such talent. Even if he was made a sniper instructor, he would definitely be able to train a group of powerful snipers for the Red Eagle. Traffic police? Maybe even better to recruit him. They were the special forces team, the pinnacle of the disciplinary forces. Xiao Changqing also had his own thoughts. At the same time, he cursed the Jiang Yun City Bureau. Such talent, you're burying them in the traffic police department? Since you don't need them, give them to us. When I go back, I'll report and make sure Director Zhang brings him over to us. This kind of fierce person can bring unimaginable combat capabilities to our criminal investigation team. What special police, what special assault team, step aside. Both of them had their own thoughts, but they didn't show it, just murmuring in their hearts. At this moment, Xiao Changqing noticed Su Lin's eyes. His eyes. Unable to help himself, he exclaimed, because he found that Su Lin's bloodshot eyes, almost bloodshot pupils, were still wide open, as if staring at the sky. Hong Wan Han also noticed this and his expression slightly changed. He. Shu. Suddenly, there were a lot of footsteps behind them. Both of them turned their heads almost simultaneously and saw two teams rushing out from the jungle, one on the left and one on the right. One of them was their own special police brigade from Nanlin City, with dozens of fully armed personnel, each with a loaded gun. They were fully armed, and the flashlights on their helmets illuminated the surroundings. The other group of people were dressed in plain clothes or police uniforms, holding police pistols and flashlights. Su Lin. Su Lin. Are you still there, kid? Su Lin. Huang Weihan searched while shouting, his voice filled with extreme anxiety and panic. He had heard from Director Xia that mercenaries had entered the frog forest and their numbers had reached dozens, engaging in a fierce battle with the military and police of Dasha. Su Lin's safety was his top concern now. Lao Su, Lao Su. Su Gu, Su Gu. A group of police officers came over shouting, causing the special police officers who came with them and others to frown. When Xiao Changqing heard the voice, he shouted with some doubt through the night, Huang Weihan? Old Huang, who is it? This voice, Xiao Changqing? Huang Weihan suddenly realized, then shouted and ran towards them, followed quickly by about 20 or 30 members of the criminal investigation detachment. In a short while, they arrived in front of Xiao Changqing and Huang Weihan. When the flashlight shone on the ground, they saw Su Lin lying there with wide open eyes. Su Lin, you. Huang Weihan's heart turned cold, he couldn't speak for a moment, and hot tears welled up in his eyes. He couldn't die in peace. Old Su. 
Chen Hua also mourned in sorrow. Everyone in the criminal investigation detachment also approached, calling Su Lin's name and sobbing softly. Cough, cough. What are you howling for? I'm not dead. At this moment, Su Lin lying on the ground couldn't help but weakly curse. In that moment just now, he entered a very strange state. It was as if his entire soul had been drained, with no consciousness. Although his eyes were open, he couldn't see anything or hear any sound. It wasn't until Huang Weihan shouted that he woke up. Tired? Of course tired. The high-intensity pursuit in battle had almost exhausted all his energy and spirit. At this moment, he didn't even have the strength to lift his hand. Huang Ji, is that you? He grinned and showed a wry smile, as if he had caused quite a mess this time, almost getting himself killed. It's me. It's me. Huang Weihan quickly knelt in front of Su Lin, grabbed his hand, and said with a choked voice, You, you didn't die. Su Lin. Huang Ji, couldn't you hope for me a little? Don't worry, the king of hell won't come to collect me in the next hundred years. Ha! Hiss. Su Lin gritted his teeth, and when he laughed, it pulled at his wound, causing him to involuntarily take a few breaths of cold air. You brat, it's good that you didn't die. I knew you wouldn't be so easily glorious. Huang Weihan breathed a sigh of relief. If he could joke, it meant he was fine. Chen Hua, Zhang Gong, Hu Gang, and the other three team leaders also came forward and greeted Su Lin. Huang Weihan noticed his eyes and asked, Su Lin, what happened to your eyes? It seemed that there was something wrong with his eyes. If Su Lin had survived but lost his sight, it would be an unacceptable blow to him. So Huang Weihan was very worried now, this kid might not be able to accept it. Su Lin, it's nothing, I just used my eyes too much, it'll be fine in a couple of days. No one knew better than him that this was actually a side effect of the Hawkeye skill. If it was during the day, this side effect might be less, but after all, it was at night. Long distance observation and search for a long time severely damaged his visual nerves. Even if Hawkeye was strong, it had its limits. The limit was two hours, and he had just used it for nearly two hours. If he exceeded that, his eyes would probably suffer permanent damage. Now, rest for a while, and it should heal. Huang Weihan didn't say anything more after hearing this. He looked at Xiao Changqing and asked, Old Xiao, what exactly happened? Such a big operation, didn't you report it to the higher-ups? With this kind of battle, you only have a few people? Xiao Changqing, Old Huang, don't talk nonsense. We didn't expect to encounter so many enemies. Huang Weihan nodded and asked again, How many casualties did you have? Xiao Changqing, casualties? None, not even one. What? None of your people were injured. So it means only Su Lin was injured, right? You guys are really something. Huang Weihan was somewhat indignant, his tone was not friendly, and then he said, What about the ambulance, did it come? Ambulance. Yes, yes, I'll call an ambulance right away. Just as Hong Wenhan heard that there was no life-threatening danger, he had already forgotten to call an ambulance. It was only when Huang Weihan reminded him that he remembered. Damn it! What's the point of calling now? Huang Weihan was really angry. What are these people from Nanlin City doing? He took out his phone directly and contacted Xia Weihai. When the call connected, he immediately said, Hello, Chief Xia, Su Lin is injured. The situation is unclear at the moment. We need to send him to the hospital immediately. I suggest sending a helicopter. Wait. Xia Weihai on the other end of the phone didn't waste any words and hung up directly to contact the helicopter. At this moment, Xiao Chengqing's face became somewhat shocked. As far as he knew, there were only three police helicopters in the entire Jiangyun city, and they were not easily deployed. Who would have thought that with just one phone call from Huang Weihan, the big shots on the other end would agree directly? He suddenly felt that there might be no hope of poaching people. Wallen Village had a population of only two to three hundred people. The vast majority were elderly people left behind. The young people had basically gone to work and live in the city, only returning to visit their elders during holidays. If there were no elders, they wouldn't come back. As the elderly passed away one by one, Wallen Village became increasingly lonely. But today, Wallen Village was already bustling in the early morning. In fact, since last night, the villagers of Wallen Village had heard the dense sound of gunfire. Many elderly people hadn't slept all night and got up early in the morning. Some people even got up in the middle of the night and stood at the highest point of the village, looking towards the border. As the village closest to the border in Haiyuan province, there were often border guards patrolling here, and there were frequent battles to combat various crimes. They were used to the sound of gunfire on the border. The elderly had seen everything, and even some of the elders in the village had personally participated in wars. Their understanding of this border, their knowledge of the country's history, and the sense of national pride and honor in their hearts far surpassed that of contemporary young people. Having lived for so many years, they had seen everything. 
Even if there were so many corpses in front of them, the elderly were not afraid. Hong Wenhan and Xiao Changqing had no choice but to bring the bodies into the village. After all, the only road for vehicles to enter was through the mountain village road of Wallen village. It was impossible to carry them out, right? Child, have some breakfast. Yes, yes, child, my family cooked a big pot of eggs, come and have some. Officer, here are some local specialties, take them back to eat. The elderly took out their family's specialties one after another. For them, these were the most precious things. Hong Wenhan and Xiao Changqing definitely couldn't accept them, so they politely refused one by one. Fellow villagers, thank you, we don't need it. Thank you, we're not hungry. Sir, we have discipline, we can't eat. In the end, unable to withstand the enthusiasm of the people, they simply brought their brothers to a wasteland outside the village. Boom, boom, boom. After about half an hour, the sound of helicopter rotors resounded in the sky. A blue and white police helicopter appeared in the sight of the crowd. Xiao Changqing looked at Huang Weihan with a shocked expression. Even though he knew that this guy had called for a helicopter, he couldn't help but be moved. However, as the helicopter slowly descended and one big shot after another jumped down from it, Xiao Changqing's eyes widened and he couldn't speak for a while. The first to come down was Guo Liang, the director of the East City branch of Jiang Yun City, wearing a white shirt with the rank of third level police supervisor. Then another person jumped down, and the corner of Xiao Changqing's mouth twitched. Deng Jigua, the director of the West City branch of Jiang Yun City. He was also wearing a white shirt with the rank of third level police supervisor. But the person who came down next was truly intimidating. Xiao Weihai, the director of Jiang Yun City Public Security Bureau, the top big shot in Jiang Yun City, wearing a white shirt with the rank of second level police supervisor on his shoulder. These three individuals can be said to be the top three in the police world of Jiang Yun City. As soon as they arrived, they immediately ran up to Huang Weihan and Chen Hua, who were carrying a stretcher. They saw Su Lin lying on the stretcher with wide open eyes, bloodshot eyes, and a face that was blood red. The three couldn't help but feel a shock, their faces changed. This, is it a sacrifice? Huang Ji, there's quite a commotion here. I heard the sound of helicopter rotors, Su Lin said with a smile. Although he had his eyes open, everything was a blurry blood red, and he couldn't see anything. You scared me, I thought you had died gloriously. Xia Ju breathed a sigh of relief when he heard Su Lin speak, his voice trembling slightly. Xia Ju, even you came? Su Lin was taken aback. Enough, stop talking nonsense, let's go to the hospital first. With your condition, even if you don't die, you'll be disabled, Xia Weihai said impatiently. Su Lin said, Xia Ju, please speak properly, I still have to get married. You brat, Xia Weihai didn't waste any more words with him, waved his hand, and Huang Weihan and Chen Hua immediately carried him onto the plane. Then a few big shots followed suit. Xiao Changqing saw the scene and felt a bit bitter. Three big shots personally came and cared so much about him. With the police reaching this level, did he still need to worry about his future? Wait, why is this guy wearing a traffic police uniform? Is the Jiang Yun City Public Security Bureau so overbearing? With someone so brave, you put him in the traffic police team, have your talents already been exhausted like this? Su Lin fell into a deep sleep. His eyes finally closed slowly. In a daze, it seemed like someone was stitching up the wound on his waist. It was unknown how long had passed, when he opened his eyes, he suddenly found himself in complete darkness. Just as he was about to get up, a hand suddenly pressed against his chest. Don't move, the doctor said your corneas are severely damaged, you need to rest for a few days, preferably without exposure to light. When this voice came out, Su Lin's scalp tingled. Why is it you? A faint and elegant fragrance entered his nostrils, very pleasant. Only to hear a slightly tired voice in front of him, why can't it be me? You have no relatives or friends in the city, if I didn't take care of you, you would probably be dead by now. Sitting in front of the hospital bed was none other than the charming Yen Yao. Su Lin said, speak properly, what do you mean dead? I was fine to begin with, just a bit tired. Well, I'm fine now. If you're busy, you can go. I'll just make a phone call to my friend, he said, preparing to find his phone and call Zheng Chao. Anyway, no matter what, he couldn't afford to provoke this woman. If he got involved with her, he might end up dead. But when he reached out with both hands, he suddenly touched a pair of soft and boneless smooth jade hands, which startled him. His mouth twitched, and he quickly retracted his hand. What's wrong? Afraid I'll eat you. Yen Yao's face turned red, she glanced at the man in front of her, her mouth curled up and said, as the CEO of a company, I personally came to take care of you. You're still being picky. Believe it or not, I'll tell the doctor to give you a shot. Su Lin. A woman's heart is the most poisonous. All right, Su Blind, let me ask you a question. Yen Ya put away her joking expression and asked seriously, is it worth it to do all this? 
I heard that Huangji said it was very dangerous this time, you almost didn't make it back. Su Lin, I didn't think that much. Looking at the bodies of those who were killed, and my brothers sacrificing themselves in front of me, if I don't catch the killer, what's the point of wearing this uniform? Aren't you afraid of death? Yen Yao's voice trembled slightly. Afraid? Who isn't afraid of death? Su Lin immediately replied, but as a police officer, there are always things we must persist in. Yen Yao, then if I'm in danger, will you come to save me? Su Lin, sister, I'm good at saying nice things. I will definitely save you, even if it means sacrificing my own life for your safety, I am willing to do so. Yen Yao's eyes were slightly red, but she smiled in an instant. All right, I really believed it. Su Lin, ah, uh, do you have any misunderstandings? It would be the same with anyone else, we are police officers. You bastard, I'll bite you to death. Suddenly, a scream of despair came from the hospital room. At this moment, a group of people appeared in the corridor, their synchronized footsteps drawing everyone's attention. The group walked towards Su Lin's hospital room. At the forefront was Xiao Weihai. At this moment, Xiao Weihai appeared somewhat humble, constantly smiling and saying something to the people behind him, while leading them towards the hospital room. Huang Weihan walked at the back, like a transparent person. In fact, he wished he was really transparent. He didn't see Guo Liang from the Dongqing branch and Dang Jigua from the Xiqing branch, both of whom were like little followers, constantly accompanying with smiling faces. Xiao Weihai had just arrived at the door of the hospital room when he suddenly heard a scream from inside, a scream so intense that it was comparable to being tortured. His face changed, and without even knocking on the door, he pushed it open and rushed in. The two big shots who were surrounded by a group of people also did the same, almost pushing the doorframe down. After they entered, they saw a young man lying on the hospital bed with gauze covering his eyes. Then, a woman who was unbelievably beautiful was biting the young man's left wrist, their eyes locked onto each other, leaving everyone stunned. Yan Yao looked at the sudden intrusion of the group of people, and finally reacted in the next moment. She quickly let go of the food in her mouth, and her cheeks instantly turned red. Um, Uncle Xia, I. She wanted to speak, but didn't know how to explain, so she could only fiercely pinch Su Lin's arm. However, she found that this guy's arm was too strong, and she couldn't pinch it. Although Su Lin couldn't see with his eyes now, he clearly felt that there were many more people in the room. He immediately asked, who is here? Ahem. Xia Bureau. Xia Weihai coughed lightly. Xia Bureau. Su Lin recognized the voice and called out. Xia Weihai smiled and said, you kid, it seems like you're recovering quickly. The way you shouted just now was full of energy, which reassures me. Without waiting for Su Lin to speak, he turned and looked at a man with thick eyebrows, a square face, and a dignified expression, and said, Director Chen, this is Comrade Su Lin that I told you about. Comrade Su Lin, hello. The dignified man immediately stepped forward, shook Su Lin's hand, and said, Comrade Su Lin, you have done a great service for us. A great service? Su Lin was puzzled. He only wanted to avenge Dili, but he didn't expect to have done a great service. Yes, you have done a great service. Chen Ying who smiled and patted Su Lin's shoulder, saying, You don't know, the woman you caught is very important to us. Especially the thing she had in her hand, it has brought great gains to our anti-drug police officers. With that sales network, we can dismantle almost half of the drug trafficking and sales gangs in Haiyuan province. Upon hearing this, Su Lin couldn't help but be moved. He could be sure that the woman known as Golden Rose was very powerful and important to some people, otherwise they wouldn't have sent so many mercenaries to rescue her. But he didn't expect that she actually held a huge crystal meth sales network in her hands. If nothing unexpected happened, the several people killed in Villano. Six were also related to this. Leader, this is my duty. He spoke up. Being able to strike at the crystal meth sales network was equivalent to saving millions of families. He had an obligation to combat this thing that was most hated by people. Its harm was too great, and if left unchecked, it could even undermine the foundation of the country. Emon Ange, who was next to Ing Zhang, was one example. That small country, the police almost die every day, and the sugar traffickers can beat the officials out of shit. It can be imagined that in such an environment, the common people have no sense of security. Good. 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 Chen who said three good in a row, and then said, you take good care of your injuries, and when you recover, I will personally award you a medal of merit. Yes. Thank you, leader, Su Lin said with a smile. Um, leader, do you think we should replace the funds and vehicles of our city bureau? Xiao Weihai took the opportunity to ask with a smile. Su Lin has made achievements, so naturally they should benefit from it. Let's not talk about it. The old cars of the criminal investigation detachment must be replaced, right? Also, a batch of firearms from the city bureau should also be replaced. Well, 
Their communication tools should also be replaced, and some drones should be purchased. Xiao Weihai, you really know how to take advantage of opportunities, Chunning Hu saw the expression of this old subordinate, and he knew what he was thinking. Xiao Weihai was afraid that he would not agree, so he quickly said, It's true, old leader, you see our current conditions, it's really difficult. We don't have any advanced equipment. The SWAT team doesn't even have a spare tire for their assault vehicles. Look at this time, if we had one more helicopter, Xiao Su wouldn't have suffered such a serious injury, right? It's difficult to make a good meal without rice, and slow support will cause big problems. I don't want our comrades to sacrifice because the support is too slow in the future. Ah, okay, you kid, don't pretend with me. As for the helicopter, don't even think about it. Our provincial department only has six helicopters, and it's already good if your Jiang Yun city has three. I can allocate a batch of police cars for you, and I can also allocate a sum of money for you to buy whatever you need. He he. Okay, old leader, thank you. Thank you, Xia Weihai smiled flatteringly. However, at this moment, Yen Yao, who had been silent on the side, suddenly asked innocently, Uncle Xia, is the city bureau really that poor? Also, why can't the basic equipment of the city bureau be better than that of the provincial department? Xia Weihai. He quickly gestured to Yen Yao. Miss, please don't speak nonsense. I just got it. What if you anger the old leader and he doesn't give it to me? Ha ha, little girl, I don't know if Jiang Yun City Bureau is poor or not. But there is no rule that the equipment of the provincial department must be better than that of the city bureau. Chunning Hu couldn't help but laugh. Yen Yao nodded immediately and said, that's good. She looked at Xiao Weihai and said, Uncle Xia, if I remember correctly, a police helicopter should cost around 40 to 50 million, right? And various police vehicles, I think the standard should be around 300,000 per vehicle, right? In that case, on behalf of our group, I will donate 10 Z9 police helicopters and 300 police vehicles to the Jiang Yun City Bureau. I will have my assistant contact you later. Click. Click. Everyone stared with wide eyes, their jaws dropping. What does it mean to be extravagant? She just said 10 Z9 helicopters, which is at least over 400 million plus 300 vehicles, at a price of 300,000 each, that's another 100 million. 500 million donated to the city bureau, wouldn't the equipment of the city bureau take off? Su Lin's scalp tingled when he heard this. Rich lady, can your father agree to this kind of spending? Ah, uh, niece, are you serious? Xiao Weihai was stunned by the 500 million, and it took him a while to come back to his senses. He stared at Yen Yao with wide eyes, and his heart couldn't help but beat faster. Yen Yao, of course. As an ordinary citizen, I also hope that our society becomes more stable and crime decreases. Only by living in such an environment can we feel safe. However, her tone changed, and she looked at the boy sitting on the hospital bed and said, Uncle Xia, the most important thing is to provide support faster in the future. After all, time is life. Hmm. Xia Weihai glanced at the boy on the hospital bed and a hint of understanding rose in his heart. No problem, he smiled and said, let me first thank Director Yen on behalf of all the brothers in the police force in Jiang Yun City. His eyes turned red. Chenning Hu stood aside, his eyes filled with envy. Why doesn't the provincial capital have such a wealthy woman? Even if she doesn't have 500 million, even if it's just 100 million, or even 50 million, it would be fine. His gaze shifted away from the wealthy woman and fixed on Xiao Wei Hai. The top police officer in Jiang Yun City felt uneasy under his gaze, sensing that something was about to happen. Um, Xiao Su needs to rest, so let's talk outside. Xiao Wei Hai said. Then he turned his head and shouted, Huang Wei Han, where are you? Here, Director Xia, I'm here, Huang Wei Han quickly squeezed out from behind. You stay here to take care of Su Lin. Yes, Director. Xiao Wei Hai looked at Yen Yao and said, Director Yen, let's go to my office first to discuss the details of the donation. Don't worry, with Huang Weihan here, Su Lin will be fine. Yen Ya glanced at Su Lin on the hospital bed and nodded, okay? When everyone left, Huang Weihan sat in front of the hospital bed, took out a banana from the fruit basket, peeled it and took a bite, muttering to himself, you're lucky, kid. TSK TSK, why isn't there a wealthy woman to dote on me? Get lost. Su Lin scolded irritably, then continued, don't make up relationships, she has a good relationship with Director Xia. Pa, do you believe that? Huang Wei Han spat. I believe it. Su Lin nodded. You're pretending. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Both of them couldn't help but laugh. They only quieted down when a nurse came in and warned them. Su Lin spoke up. Huang Ji, what about Dili? Huang Wei Han fell silent for a moment, then said, posthumously award him first class merit and hold a memorial service on the 19th. Su Lin nodded silently. The average lifespan of police officers in Disya is less than 48 years old. 
Drug enforcement officers are even younger, around 41 years old. They bear the responsibility of maintaining social stability and security, while sacrificing their own young lives. In this line of work, they constantly face danger. On the day of the memorial service, come pick me up, Su Lin said in a low voice. Okay, Huang Weihan nodded. The hospital room fell silent. No one felt good about the sacrifice of their comrades. Even though Su Lin had only known Qin Dili for a few days, he was deeply impressed by this honest guy and felt immense sorrow. But, this is the fate of a police officer. Perhaps he will also have such a day. Leaning against the bedside, his heart heavy, Su Lin took a deep breath. After a while, he suppressed the sadness and pulled up the system interface. Regardless of anything, he had to become stronger. To protect his comrades, his family, and every kind-hearted citizen. System, calculate points. Congratulations, host, for killing a mercenary and earning 329 points. Congratulations, host, for killing a mercenary and earning 350 points. Congratulations, host, for killing. The prompts in his mind kept jumping, with more than 10 notifications appearing, and Su Lin saw his points jump to over 3,800. At this moment, the last notification also appeared. Congratulations, host, for capturing the criminal Jean Megui and earning 990 points. 990 points, just 10 points away from breaking a thousand. It can be seen that Jean Megui's crimes are too numerous to list. But no matter what, he successfully captured her. It is absolutely impossible for this woman to leave De Xia alive. System, extract skills. He silently said in his mind, and then a burst of light appeared on the system interface. After a while, a prompt appeared in his mind. Congratulations, host, for obtaining a single attribute enhancement card for strength. Strength attribute enhancement card, increases strength by 30%. A prompt appeared in his mind, and the next moment Su Lin felt as if a surge of heat had rushed into his body. Not only did he feel completely refreshed, but even the pain from his wounds was diminished. He clenched his fist lightly, feeling as if he had an endless supply of strength. Come again. With excitement in his eyes, he gave the command once more. Congratulations, host, you have obtained a physical stamina time card. Endurance time card doubles physical stamina within two hours. After the time limit expires, there are no side effects. Another time card, it was another time card. He had already experienced the Gun King time card before, and it was awesome. The physical stamina time card, as the name suggests, enhances physical stamina. He didn't need this thing for now, but he believed he would eventually make use of it. Without saying anything, he continued. Congratulations, host, you have obtained a brand new skill, movie emperor. Movie emperor, skilled in acting, proficient in various character portrayals. Commonly known as, play any role. What the hell is this? Su Lin heard the system's prompt and almost jumped up from the bed. Movie emperor? System? Are you trying to make me act? His mouth twitched, feeling like he was meeting this damn system for the first time. No, he had to get to know the system again, this thing was sometimes unreliable. Shaking his head weakly, he continued to choose skills, this was also his last chance to draw. Congratulations, host, you have obtained a brand new skill, Lock God. Lock God, from today onwards, you can say goodbye to keys and passwords. With just a pair of hands and a set of tools, there is no lock you cannot open. Su Lin. I'm clearly a police officer, and you give me lockpicking skills. What kind of joke is this? System, I just want to ask you one question. Do I need to file a case at the station to learn this skill? This is frustrating, but since the skills have already been drawn, what can he do? Looking at the countless lock-related knowledge in his mind, Su Lin wanted to curse, but ultimately held back. He had a feeling in his heart that the system was leading him down a point of no return. After resting in the hospital for three days, Su Lin finally removed the gauze. When he opened his eyes and saw the colorful world again, a satisfied smile appeared on his face. He then attended Qin Dali's memorial service and donated all his savings from these years to Qin Dali's wife. The child was still young, and no matter what, the child of a hero should not suffer. Regardless of what others thought, he was a bachelor who could feed his whole family. Moreover, he didn't really care about money. After resting for another two days, Su Lin ended his sick leave and went to the criminal investigation detachment. His organizational relationship was officially transferred to the criminal investigation detachment, and his position was deputy chief of the criminal investigation detachment. At 22 years old, he held the rank of deputy division chief. At least in Jiang Yun City, if not the entire Dasha, he was the first person to achieve this. Su Lin went to the logistics department of the municipal bureau and received his uniforms under the guidance of Huang Weihan. 
There were spring and autumn uniforms, winter uniforms, duty uniforms, multifunctional uniforms, long and short sleeved shirts, undershirts, raincoats, training uniforms, and so on, totaling more than 10 sets of clothes. Su Lin chose one set of short sleeved shirts and changed into it directly. However, just as he was about to remove the shoulder patch and replace it, Huang Weihan stopped him. You don't need to wear this, he said with a smile. Su Lin was taken aback and looked at Huang Weihan, then at the old police officer in charge of logistics. Huang, you're not telling me that I have to start from scratch when I transfer to the criminal investigation detachment, are you? Jokingly, he had earned his rank of deputy division chief with his life. If this didn't count, then what was the point? Seeing that his face was turning dark, Huang Weihan immediately knew what he was thinking and said with a smile, You brat, what are you thinking? Don't worry, the bureau will personally award you your rank later. That's more like it, Su Lin nodded. After all, he was a hero, and the bureau awarding him his rank was only right. Let's go, Lao Yu, Huang Weihan greeted the old police officer in the logistics department, who raised his head and pushed his reading glasses up, smiling, Huang, take care. Then he looked at Su Lin, who was holding a pile of new uniforms, and muttered softly, this is getting more and more excessive. So Young, a deputy police commissioner, must have gotten in through the back door, right? Ah, the world is getting worse, where is the dedication we had back then, when we would sacrifice our lives for our beliefs? The two of them didn't hear what Lao Yu said, otherwise they would have argued with him. After leaving the logistics department and arriving on the first floor, Su Lin looked at the police badge standing in the middle of the hall, his expression solemn. This wasn't his first time entering the municipal bureau, but it was his first time coming in as a criminal investigator. With a different identity, the significance was naturally different. Let's go, if you want, you can go to the third floor conference room first. I'll go to the detachment and arrange some work, Huang Weihan said, about to leave, but suddenly turned around and took the pile of clothes from Su Lin's arms, I'll put them in the office for you first. Okay. Su Lin nodded. When Huang Weihan left, he went to the large conference room on the third floor. As soon as he entered, he saw two police officers making tea and tidying up. One of them was sitting on the side, young and with a single star on his shoulder, indicating the rank of third police commissioner. Are you new here? The third police commissioner saw Su Lin and first glanced at his shoulder, realizing that he didn't have any rank insignia, which made him puzzled for a moment. Then he assumed that this young man must be a new intern, because only newcomers would have nothing on their shoulders. But, even if he was just an intern, shouldn't he have at least a single bar? He didn't think much about it and raised his hand, saying, Don't just stand there, hurry up and help, the leaders will be here soon. Let me tell you, this time there are big shots from the ministry directly coming down, so be careful. Su Lin was stunned for a moment. Was he being asked to do work? Fine. He didn't feel like saying anything, so he would just do some work. Anyway, since we're all idle. But, everyone is working, what's the matter with you commanding over there? Don't you have work to do? He looked at the third-level police inspector and furrowed his brows slightly. That commanding attitude really made people uncomfortable. Are you questioning me? Don't you see what level I am and what level you are? The third-level police inspector stood up directly, pointing at Su Lin and scolded him. Then, in a somewhat sarcastic tone, he said, This is the city bureau, not a local police station. I advise you to open your eyes wide and learn how to behave. Su Lin's face instantly darkened. Thank you for your kindness but I don't need you to teach me how to behave. It's you who should learn how to be a police officer. He said coldly, the world is big, and all kinds of birds are found. Most likely, this person didn't enter through proper channels, but relied on connections. Otherwise, how could their quality be so poor? You. All right. Very well. Daring to speak to me like this, I see you. The third level police inspector was about to lose his temper, but the office door was pushed open again. Huang Weihan walked in first, then glanced at the almost ready conference room and stood straight on the side. Clatter, clatter. Footsteps sounded, and figures walked into the conference room one after another, instantly bringing a sense of dignity. Leading the way was a middle-aged man with an olive branch on his shoulder and a shining silver national emblem in the middle. Su Lin's pupils contracted. The olive branch didn't completely surround the national emblem. This is the deputy chief police supervisor, a high-ranking official at the deputy ministerial level. Following closely behind was the top guy from the Haiyuan Province Public Security Department, Chen Inghu. Then there were Xiao Weihai, Guo Liang, and a group of high-ranking officers in white shirts. After seeing so many high-ranking officials enter, the third-level police inspector hurriedly gestured for the two police officers to leave, then looked at Su Lin without moving. His face darkened, and then he walked up to Su Lin angrily. What are you still doing here? He pulled Su Lin. 
If he offended the big shots in the department and it affected him, not only would he be in trouble, even his backer as the deputy director of the city bureau office would be finished. What are you doing? Xiao Weihai sternly reprimanded as soon as this guy moved. The third level police inspector was startled and quickly let go. Director, I. It's none of your business, leave. Xiao Weihai said coldly, yes. That guy quickly left as if fleeing. Su Lin didn't pay him any attention, glanced lightly, and then withdrew his gaze. Leader, this is Xiao Su, Su Lin. Xiao Weihai smiled and said to the middle-aged man with the national emblem on his shoulder. The latter raised his eyes and stared at Su Lin. Their gazes collided in the air, Su Lin remained calm and composed, without any change on his face. Young man, not bad. The big shot smiled and nodded, then walked forward and proactively extended his hand. Fong Ziyuan, you can call me Deputy Fong. No, I'd rather call you leader. Su Lin was somewhat flattered. Fong Ziyuan, are you sure? This is your only chance. Ah, ha, Deputy Fong is fine. Su Lin immediately understood. How could he refuse the goodwill of the big shot? With just these two words, their relationship instantly became closer. From now on, when he goes out, he can consider himself having connections in the department. Who would dare to bully him? Ha ha ha. Young man, I've read your file and also looked at the case files you've solved. You're very smart and capable. Fang Ziyuan laughed heartily and highly praised Su Lin. However, after a two-second pause, a gleam of light appeared in his eyes as he said, but my favorite is still your battle on the border. In that battle, you showcased the prestige of our great Xia public security, and the glory of our police. All right, enough with the nonsense, I don't have much time, let's get started. Fang Ziyuan beckoned to Xiao Weihai, who immediately walked over and took out a document and a red box from his pocket, handing them over solemnly. Su Lin, here. Su Lin immediately straightened his body, his expression solemn. Fang Ziyuan opened the document, cleared his throat, and then read it out loudly, Police Department, Document No. 102. Comrade Su Lin has shown bravery and outstanding performance in a series of actions, including the major theft case on September 26, the murder case on September 28, the major drug case, and the border pursuit, bringing glory to our country and setting an example for the police. After research and decision by the Jiangyun City Bureau, and submission to the Provincial Department for approval, Comrade Su Lin is awarded the first class merit once. We hope Comrade Su Lin will continue to work hard to maintain public security and fight against crime. When the order was read out, Su Lin's head buzzed, and he couldn't help but tremble. First class merit. He had been awarded the first class merit. Joy, shock, and excitement exploded in his heart. But when he thought of the sacrifice of Qin Dali, he couldn't help but feel a little sad. It was said that it was not easy to achieve merit in Dasha. Third class merit is awarded standing, second class merit is awarded lying down, and first class merit is awarded to the family. In that case, he was definitely an exception. Apart from the additional first class merit after sacrifice, the number of first class merits awarded by the entire police department in a year was also very few. Xiao Weihai's face was full of excitement, his face flushed as if he had drunk three caddies of liquor. The others in the Jiangyun city police community were also similar, their faces glowing. With such a young man, their Jiangyun city police community was definitely going to rise. They could have whatever they wanted in the future. When Fang Ziyuan hung the medal on his chest, Su Lin finally reacted and immediately stood at attention and saluted. He was still as excited and surging as a wave. It all made sense now. Why Deputy Director Fong came personally? It turned out to be to award him the first class merit. At the city bureau level, only third class merit could be awarded. For second class merit, it had to be reported to the provincial department and approved before it could be issued. As for first class merit, only the department had the authority to issue it. What else? Fang Ziyuan smiled and pressed down Su Lin's hand, then read out the next order. Comrade Su Lin, during your service in the Criminal Investigation Brigade of the Jiangyun City Bureau, you have shown outstanding performance, solving multiple major homicide cases and capturing multiple fugitives. You have been awarded the rank of 3rd level police supervisor, with the rank of deputy division chief. When the order was finished, except for a few who knew the inside story, everyone present gasped. 3rd level police supervisor, deputy division chief. This rank and promotion were truly abnormal. Su Lin had been in the police force for less than a month, and he had spent more than half a month in the traffic police brigade. But with his merits, he had directly been promoted to this rank. And just over half a month later, he received another first class merit, completing another leap, from police inspector to police supervisor. Don't underestimate this one rank, because it was a rank that others might not achieve in their lifetime. The main thing was the position level, deputy division chief. 
You should know that a general third level police supervisor was at most a regular officer, but he had almost jumped up one level to the rank of deputy division chief, on par with Huang Weihan. Of course, in the eyes of Xiao Weihai and the others, this was normal. Because when Huang Weihan appointed Su Lin as the deputy team leader of the Criminal Investigation Brigade, it had already been decided that he would be a deputy division chief. Now, it was just an official announcement after the department's approval. Come, the rank. Fong Ziyuan beckoned. Xiao Weihai immediately handed over the prepared rank with both hands, and Fong Ziyuan took it and personally put it on Su Lin. Clap, clap, clap. Thunderous applause filled the meeting room. Su Lin saluted the crowd, his face flushed, and he was also extremely excited. Young man, keep up the good work. I look forward to you catching more criminals, maintaining public order, and giving us citizens a peaceful and harmonious living environment. Yes, I promise to complete the mission. Su Lin shouted in a deep voice. Ha, let's go. Fong Ziyuan obviously had something to do. After patting Su Lin's shoulder, he left the police station under the escort of Xiao Weihai and others, heading straight to the airport. The crowd dispersed, leaving only Huang Weihan and Su Lin in the meeting room. Su Lin touched the military medal on his chest, then looked at his shoulder insignia and grinned. Huang Weihan looked at this guy and couldn't help but smile bitterly and shake his head. Comparing oneself to others can really be infuriating. He had the rank of second lieutenant on his shoulder, while the guy in front of him was already a first lieutenant. The problem was that he was 35 years old this year, a whole round older than Su Lin. A promising future, he silently said to himself. This was a kind of affirmation for Su Lin. Let's go, Huang Ji, back to the branch. Su Lin carefully took off the medal and put it in a box. Right, back to the branch. There happens to be a case I want to discuss with you. This case is simply unbelievable. Huang Weihan nodded. Su Lin immediately became interested upon hearing that it was an unbelievable case. He loved this kind of case. The two of them walked out of the meeting room and saw three figures coming towards them. Coincidentally, those three people also looked over. Among the three, the one in front was surprisingly a third-level police inspector, followed by two first-level police officers. When the gaze of that inspector fell on Su Lin, he trembled all over, his face instantly turned pale, and large beads of sweat continuously poured from his forehead. A third-level police inspector? How is that possible? He's so young, how could he be a third-level police inspector? But when he saw Huang Weihan next to him, he was absolutely certain in his heart that he had just kicked an iron plate, and he might be in big trouble this time. Sure enough, Su Lin glanced at him lightly and said, Huang Ji, investigate this person thoroughly. I think he's suspicious. Huang Weihan's eyes instantly lit up upon hearing this. Su Lin had already gained a reputation in their criminal investigation branch, known as Eagle Eyes. If he determined someone was guilty, there was not a single innocent person among them. Since this guy said there was a problem, then there definitely was a problem. Don't worry, I guarantee a thorough investigation. The two of them said as they left, leaving behind the guy with a pale face trembling in fear. Back at the branch, as soon as they entered, they saw a group of familiar faces. Applaud, welcome the deputy branch leader. Chen Hua shouted loudly. Clap, clap, clap. Applause resounded. Su Lin's face was a bit cold, and he said in a deep voice, cut it out, get to work quickly. At first, it seemed intimidating, but the next second he burst into laughter. Everyone burst into laughter, enjoying themselves. After chatting for a while, he went to Huang Weihan's office, accompanied by Chen Hua and three team leaders. Take a look. Just submitted from the East City Brigade. Huang Weihan's expression was solemn as he handed a file to Su Lin. In the past seven years, we have had a total of 12 similar cases in Jianyun City. Seven years? 12 similar cases? Upon hearing Huang Weihan's words, Su Lin knew that this case was definitely not simple. He quickly opened the file bag and took out a document that was about two centimeters thick. On the first page of the document was a young man in his 20s, who seemed to have just graduated from university, with a youthful and vibrant look on his face. Su Lin looked at this young man, who was about the same age as himself, and his gaze moved down to see information about him. Lin Yun, recent graduate of Haiyuan University, from Jiangyun City. He went home to apply for a job at a company and went missing four days ago. As he looked through the pages of information, Su Lin gradually furrowed his brows. This Lin Yun could be considered an outstanding student, even applying for graduate school at Haiyuan University, and according to his teachers, it was almost a sure thing. Such an outstanding academic achiever, a well-behaved and obedient child in the eyes of parents, is considered to be in a different league by many. The sudden disappearance of such a person with full criminal responsibility is indeed somewhat suspicious. But it's just suspicious. After all, it's normal for an adult to go missing for two or three days. 
In modern society, this situation is very common. Not to mention young people in their 20s, even middle-aged people in their 40s or 50s may choose to leave home because they can't bear too much work and life pressure. Su Lin once read a report that said 14. 9% of people who make such choices when facing problems, unverified, please do not inquire further. So, it's not strange. But the family of this Lin Yun said that he went out only after receiving a strange phone call and has not returned since. Su Lin frowned. Nothing can be seen from this file, so he looked up and wanted to ask Huang Weihan about the details of the other cases and what exactly happened. Just as he looked up, he saw Huang Weihan holding a thick stack of case files and looking at him with a smile. I know you need the detailed information of these cases, I have prepared them for you a long time ago. Also, Deputy Su, from now on, I will be your assistant. Just tell me if you have any requests. Su Lin. He said, Huang, make me a cup of tea, use the old tea in the tea canister behind your cabinet. As soon as these words came out, Huang Weihan's eyes widened. How did you know about my tea? I swear on my conscience, that tea was brought back by me from my hometown in Fuzhou province. Although it's not tea from those thousand-year-old mother trees, it's at least several hundred years old. Su Lin smiled, Huang, good things are meant to be shared. Do you think you hit it well, without considering what kind of work we do? Ah, I just defended against that old fox Xia Bureau, but I didn't expect to be caught off guard by you. Huang Weihan shook his head, turned around, and went to his office to get the tea leaves. Soon, he brewed a cup of tea and the strong aroma of tea immediately filled Su Lin's office. Drink it quickly, but don't tell Xia Bureau. Huang Weihan couldn't help but remind him. Su Lin shook his head and remained silent. At this moment, he was already attracted by the case files in his hand. Zhang Shui, 45 years old, male, from Jiangyun City. Water plant worker, went missing on his way home from work in March 23rd years ago, and there has been no news since. A photo of a seemingly honest and honest man was pasted on the first page of the case file, followed by the details of the disappearance and the investigation at that time, all in the file. Usually, there are often reports of missing persons, but in the past five years, we have almost found all the missing people in Jiang Yun City. Even if we only found their bodies, we have confirmed them. Only these twelve, disappeared without a trace. Huang Weihan said. Su Lin nodded and continued to look at the files. The disappearance occurred in March of this year, and it has been more than half a year now. The family and the police have been searching, but there has been no news, as if they have evaporated from the earth. Nowadays, technology is very advanced, and surveillance cameras are everywhere. But just like Zhang Shuyi and the recently missing Lin Yun, there is no surveillance footage of the two, and no one has seen them. Is there something supernatural? Su Lin's brows furrowed, and he ignored Huang Weihan, continuing to open the third file. He Hong, female, 38 years old, full-time mother. A woman, 38 years old, a full-time mother, also suddenly disappeared without any signs. From a social perspective, these three people have no connection at all. Su Lin even felt that these three people had no possibility of knowing each other. A college student, a water plant worker, and a full-time mother, their social classes hardly provided them with an opportunity to meet. There really are ghosts. Su Lin's eyes sparkled, and he immediately opened the fourth file. Wang Bin, male, from Jiang Yun City, 41 years old, delivery driver. The fourth one. There still wasn't any common point between them. Su Lin carefully looked at every word on the file, but there was hardly any direct connection. Then came the fifth, sixth, seventh. After finishing all twelve files, Su Lin rubbed his temples and remembered the cup of tea next to him. The tea had already gone cold, and Huang Weihan had left without him noticing. He picked up the cup and took a sip, then took out all the photos and pinned them on the whiteboard in the office. Twelve people, the oldest being 53 years old, and the youngest only 14. The first one reported missing was a person named Han Shenchen, a second-generation migrant worker, 27 years old. He had come out of a nightclub and was driving home. The next day, his car was found on the side of the road, but he was nowhere to be found. Thinking about one person after another going missing, with no leads from the criminal investigation division, Su Lin felt a tingling sensation on his scalp. This was such a major case that he felt immense pressure. And after looking through so many case files, he himself had no clue. But that was normal too. He wasn't the only smart person in the world, and if the clues were so easy to find, the case wouldn't still be hanging here. Finished reading. While contemplating the photos on the whiteboard, the door was knocked, and Huang Weihan walked in with a takeout meal from the cafeteria. How is it? He looked at Su Lin, his eyes filled with hope. Su Lin shook his head. You haven't found anything in all these years, and you expect me to figure something out in a few hours? Dream on. I'm not a god. Ah, uh, I see. Huang Weihan's eyes dimmed slightly. Seven years, twelve people missing, 
and all of them mysteriously vanished without a trace. They still hadn't found any leads, and he felt guilty towards the families of those who had reported the cases. Su Lin took the food box from him and looked at the whiteboard, recalling the information he had read. The families of Lin Yun and six others said they received phone calls before the disappearances. The other six people were not with their families when they went missing, and by the time the cases were reported, the longest disappearance had been close to a month. The times of disappearance are uncertain, but mostly in the early morning, afternoon, evening, or late at night. The approximate locations of the disappearances cover almost the entire Jiang Yun city area. Jiang Yun city area. Su Lin suddenly looked up, swallowed the food in his mouth, and rushed to the whiteboard. He closed his eyes and thought for a moment, then based on the locations of each person's disappearance, drew a rough map. Any discoveries? Huang Weihan instantly became restless. He had been pondering as well, but Su Lin's sudden actions startled him. He didn't say anything, just watched as Su Lin finished drawing a rough shape. Twelve people, three disappeared in the jurisdiction of the East City Subbureau, four in the jurisdiction of the South City, one in the North City, and four in the West City. He drew street maps around each location and marked a red dot at the last known whereabouts of the missing individuals. Su Lin connected all the red dots into a line, and a complete red line map appeared. The entire red line looked twisted and had no discernible pattern. Huang Weihan was confused, while Su Lin took two steps back and looked at the red line map without saying a word. Finally, the former couldn't help but ask, Xiao Su, is there a problem with this? Su Lin shook his head and said, hard to say, but I always feel there is some connection. I'm not sure what the connection is though. Seeing him shake his head and say he didn't know, Huang Weihan's hope that had just risen instantly disappeared. He said, I'll have Hu Gang and Chen Hua come over to take a look. Maybe they'll have a different perspective. Okay. Su Lin didn't refuse. Huang Weihan walked out and shouted towards the hall, all three captains, come over here. Soon, the three of them walked into Su Lin's office. After listening to Huang Weihan's account, they looked at the patterns. After looking for a while, scratching their heads, they couldn't figure out anything. Huang Weihan asked, Xiao Su, is there any connection between them? Su Lin replied, there is no special connection. Huang Weihan wondered, but I'm curious, why are all these people registered in the city? As soon as he said this, everyone frowned slightly. They had analyzed this case more than 50 times and knew this fact. However, no one could prove any inherent connection. Su Lin looked at them and said, What I want to say is, if they were kidnapped, then the criminals must have their own motives. No matter what their motives are, I think the risk of taking action in the city must be much higher than in the suburbs and countryside, right? As soon as he said this, the four of them were stunned. Yes. Why didn't I think of that? Huang Weihan slapped his thigh. The city is densely populated and full of surveillance cameras. It would be too easy to expose flaws and clues when trying to take someone away. But it's different in the countryside. It's sparsely populated there. As long as you quietly knock someone out and take them away, hide in a remote place, and then leave from another location, hardly anyone would notice. This is definitely a major point of suspicion, and Shen Hua and the others became excited. They looked at Su Lin with fanatical eyes. He truly deserved the reputation of having sharp eyes. He could magnify even the smallest problem and grasp a hint of a clue. Although it was only a small clue, it was currently their only lead. But this clue is basically useless. Su Lin shook his head again and sighed, we have no way to connect the cases. Even if they all disappeared in the city, it could still be a coincidence, right? They didn't even know where those people had gone. This clue was not a clue at all. Su Lin lightly tapped his chin with his index finger and after a moment of silence, he said, Huang Ji, try to find the similarities among these missing people, preferably something common among all 12 of them. Once we find a common point, the case will be halfway solved. Okay. Huang Weihan nodded, realizing the truth in Su Lin's words. He immediately said, I will send people out to investigate their social backgrounds and trace their family histories. I don't believe we won't find a common point. Soon, Huang Weihan went out with the three captains to search for clues. Su Lin looked at the whiteboard and continued to eat his lunch. Currently, the only common point couldn't provide any leads, but it still achieved a breakthrough from zero. He pondered rapidly in his mind, what else could connect them together? As time passed, it was evening when a group of brothers who had gone out for interviews returned. Including Huang Weihan, everyone had their heads down, showing some helplessness and weariness on their faces. Some were even chased away by the families of the missing persons. Others didn't obtain any clues and felt disappointed. After all, except for Lin Yun, the others had been missing for at least six months. It was understandable that their families were anxious. Looking at Su Lin's gaze, Huang Weihan shook his head and smiled bitterly, there are basically no leads. Even if we ask, it's similar to what we knew before. 
In fact, this result was expected. After all, they had conducted interviews at least 20 or 30 times before and gained nothing. Then investigate on your own, Su Lin said. Everyone nodded. Since there were more missing people, they had to investigate thoroughly. Su Lin looked at the exhausted appearance of everyone and didn't mention working overtime. He sat down alone and slowly organized the case files. In the blink of an eye, two days have passed. Everyone has been busy investigating the missing person's case, trying various methods to investigate the social relationships of the missing individuals, but there has been no significant progress. Su Lin also personally went to investigate, but after visiting several places, he did not obtain any useful clues. It must be said that this is the most difficult case he has ever handled, much more challenging than Zhang Jinbin's case. In the office of the Criminal Investigation Division, everyone looked dejected. Huang Weihan shook his head with a bitter smile, it's the same every time. Investigating this missing person's case is always like this, how similar the scene is. Bang! Suddenly, Su Lin slammed the table. Since we can't find anything from their social connections, let's start from their birth. Birth, education, work. According to their life trajectories, I don't believe we won't find anything. As soon as these words were spoken, everyone's expressions couldn't help but change. How much work would that be? Although there are only 12 people, from birth, that's at least more than 10 years, and the oldest one is over 50. I'm afraid even the doctors who delivered them are no longer around, right? But since Su Lin has given the order, we must investigate even if it's difficult. The next morning, after everyone had rested, they regained their spirits and started working again. The first thing they did was to investigate their birthplaces, hospitals, and so on. Then they checked the schools they attended. Another three days passed, and the entire criminal investigation division turned their lives upside down, but still, there were no discoveries. In the afternoon of that day, Huang Weihan came to Su Lin's office and said, Xiao Su, why don't we put this case on hold for now? We can't waste all our time on just one case, the criminal investigation teams below need support, some of them can't handle it anymore. Su Lin frowned upon hearing this. He felt frustrated and unwilling to give up like this. Bang! Just at that moment, the office door was forcefully pushed open. Deputy Chief Su, why aren't you answering your phone? It was a detective, one of Hu Gang's subordinates. Su Lin picked up his phone and saw that it was on silent mode. There were seven or eight missed calls, all from Hu Gang. What's going on? He asked. We found it, we found their common point. They all had medical examinations at the same health center, the earliest one was eight years ago, and the most recent one was Lin Yun, less than a month ago. Bang! After that detective finished speaking, Su Lin put the blanket he had just picked up back on the table heavily. Huang Weihan stood up abruptly and slammed the table, the two of them exchanged glances, both seeing the excitement in each other's eyes. After nearly a week of hard work, their efforts paid off, they finally found a real clue. Compared to the previous discoveries, this was the real deal. Xiao Lu, which health center is it? Su Lin asked in a deep voice. Sishan Health and Wellness Center, Xiao Lu immediately replied. Sishan? Sishan. Su Lin and Huang Weihan both spoke one after another, but the latter's tone was filled with astonishment. What's going on? What's different about Sishan? Su Lin looked puzzled, looking at the startled team leader and asked. Huang Weihan composed himself and said, Health centers in society are generally privately owned profit-making institutions. But this Sishan Health and Wellness Center combines medical examinations and recuperation, and they have the world's top medical team. Most importantly, the Sishan Health and Wellness Center is a non-profit organization. Or you could say it's a low-profit organization. The fees they charge are similar to hospitals, but both the hospital conditions and medical teams are better than hospitals. And inside their wellness center, there is a welfare recuperation institution that is very famous throughout Haiyuan province. In this recuperation center, more than half of the residents are retired senior cadres, and some are retired founders of large enterprises. Of course, ordinary people can also enter, but the threshold is relatively higher. Listening to Huang Weihan's description, Su Lin narrowed his eyes. A terrible thought emerged in his mind. If there were internal traders, how many people would they control in the center that covers the entire medical examination, treatment, and recuperation? Although retired senior officials and founders of companies no longer hold power, their connections and influence are still enormous. Huang Ji, what kind of threshold do ordinary people need to enter the sanatorium? Su Lin asked. Huang Weihan replied, they need to sign a lifelong medical contract and create a health record. In other words, from that moment on, you will need to receive medical treatment and consume at their recuperation center for the rest of your life, and the price will exceed about 10%. Su Lin frowned slightly, as this condition didn't seem too excessive. However, he always felt that it was a trap. 
What lifelong medical contract and health record? There is no such necessity. Even official insurance doesn't have such mandatory regulations, so why do they? After pondering for a moment, he raised his head and asked, the last question, who is the creator of this recuperation center? Huang Weihan clapped his hands and said, you hit the nail on the head. The founder of Sisan Sanatorium is Wang Lida. As soon as the three words Wang Lida came out, Su Lin's expression changed slightly. If he remembered correctly, this Wang Lida should be the richest person in Jiangyun City, a super tycoon with nearly 80 billion in assets, and a top-notch wealthy businessman in Dasha. What do you think, should we investigate or not? I'll follow your lead, Huang Weihan asked, looking very serious. Wang Lida is not easy to deal with. He is not only a businessman but also a representative with many honors and the kind of person who can move the whole body with just a slight movement. Ordinary people may be in awe when they see them, but people like them may not take criminal investigations seriously at all. Investigate. Why wouldn't we investigate? Su Lin answered without hesitation, then continued, if we don't investigate, wouldn't all our work be in vain? How can we give an explanation to the families of the missing persons? Good. Then let's investigate. Huang Weihan gritted his teeth. He definitely supported Su Lin. Although this kid was his subordinate, he had to admit that he was one of the people he admired the most. Although he was older and had experienced numerous big and small cases, he had to admit one thing. When it came to solving cases, he was no match for this kid. I'll call Zhang Hua and send a team over first, Huang Weihan decided and immediately prepared to take action. Su Lin said, wait, no need for that. None of you should move. You've all been serving in the detachment for so long, I guess your names and photos have been seen enough by people. Then he looked at Xiao Lu and said, Xiao Lu, you've only been in the detachment for less than two months, so it's you. Let's go together and see the situation first. You want to investigate secretly? Huang Weihan understood. It's not exactly investigating secretly, just going to take a look first. Don't worry, I know what I'm doing, Su Lin said, smiling at Huang Weihan's worried expression. Bring a gun, Huang Weihan said, feeling somewhat uneasy. Got it, Su Lin nodded, then took a pistol and magazine from the safe in his office. Soon, he and Xiao Lu arrived outside and got into a black Volkswagen surveillance vehicle, heading towards Sishan. Deputy Captain Su, where should we park later? There's only one road to Sishan, no matter where we park, it seems like we'll be discovered, Lu Jin asked. Su Lin looked at Lu Jin, looking puzzled. Why not go inside? Ha? Huh? Go inside? Lu Jin was stunned. How could they investigate if they went inside? Su Lin said, Lu Jin, we're here for a scheduled medical examination, not to investigate a case. Do you understand? Oh, oh, I understand, I understand. Lu Jin nodded hurriedly, his face showing excitement. He said, it has to be Deputy Su's team, they have more experience than us. Su Lin replied impatiently, don't flatter, be smart later and don't speak recklessly. The main thing is not to sell your own identity. Got it. Lu Jin nodded vigorously. The people in the team said that following Deputy Su's team to investigate the case didn't require using your brain, just be a tool. He planned to do just that. As they entered Sishan, the traffic gradually decreased and the air became clearer. Hills, green shades, murmuring springs, and the sounds of birds and fragrance of flowers. Looking at the surrounding scenery, even Su Lin couldn't help but admire it. It was like a paradise. But the premise was that there were really no problems here. If there were problems, then, it would be a hellish place. The car slowly entered the gate of the health center, and the security guards at the entrance immediately came forward to inspect. After stopping the car, they asked Su Lin and the others to get out. Sorry, no entry for foreign vehicles. What are you here for? The security guard in uniform, holding a baton, looked at Su Lin sharply and asked. Su Lin got out of the car and squinted slightly as he looked at the security guard. Nyo Wei Hao, evil value 450. Charges, suspected intentional injury, intentional murder, currently a B-level fugitive. This person is extremely dangerous and cruel. Special note, danger level 4 stars. When Su Lin's good and evil I saw this prompt, his back started to feel cold. It seemed that his guess had come true. Even a security guard at the gate was a B-level fugitive. Was this a coincidence? Su Lin didn't think so. He looked deeply at Neil Wei Hao and smiled, Hello, sir. We saw your promotional advertisement and came here to sign up for a physical examination. Promotional advertisement? Sign up for a physical examination? Neil Wei Hao's face darkened. He coldly said, Even if you want to sign up, our vehicles are supposed to pick you up. Why did you come on your own? Su Lin felt a pang of anxiety and thought he had been too hasty. He hadn't done enough research before coming here, which was a lack of experience. He glanced at Lu Jin beside him, who had a bewildered look on his face and didn't say anything, just staring at him. 
Great. Another person who doesn't want to use their brain. Su Lin thought to himself and said, Sir, we really didn't know. We thought we could come directly for the physical examination. Don't worry, we brought money. Can we make an appointment here? After he finished speaking, Niu Wei Hao furrowed his brow. This excuse left him with nothing to say. A cold and fierce light flashed in his narrow triangular eyes. He said, fine, park the car outside, but you can go in. Okay, thank you, sir. Su Lin nodded with a smile, then asked Lu Zhen to park the car properly. The two of them walked into the vast sanatorium. At first glance, it was full of greenery and fresh air, truly a place that made people feel relaxed and happy. It must be said that recuperating in this place could really give people a very positive mindset and contribute to their physical and mental health. As Su Lin and Lu Jin entered the health center, Niu Weihao, at the entrance, had the other two guards watch the gate while he went into the office alone. He quickly pulled up the surveillance footage and took screenshots of Su Lin and Lu Jin. However, when he tried to take a screenshot, he realized that Su Lin's face had never been exposed, at most it was only half of his profile. He didn't pay much attention to it, picked up an internal phone in the office, and dialed a number by pressing seven zeros in a row. Hello, boss, two suspicious people have entered. I've taken screenshots of the surveillance footage and sent them over. Good. Keep an eye on their movements. A deep voice came from the other end of the phone. Yes. Nyo Weihao hung up the phone and immediately opened a hidden software on his computer to send the pictures of the two individuals. In less than a minute, the phone on the desk rang. Hey, boss. One of those two people is a criminal investigator from the criminal investigation division, and the other one's face is unclear, but I guess they're also police officers. I will immediately have them stop all work and move to a safe place. You find a way to distract them and buy some time. All right, sir. Nyo Weihao's face darkened, indeed there was a problem. Then the person on the other end of the phone's tone became somewhat cold and laughed. The newly built building to the west is nice, take them there for a stroll, but don't make a big fuss. Understood. A sinister smile appeared on Nyo Weihao's lips. Su Lin and Lu Jin were unaware that they had been discovered. They arrived at the reception building of the health center, and someone immediately received them and took them to the appointment counter for medical examinations. After completing these procedures, Su Lin and Lu Jin exchanged glances and said to the receptionist, Your health center is so big, can we take a look around? Of course, sir, but please follow our staff for the tour. After all, our health center also has its privacy. The staff member said with a smile. Su Lin nodded and said, Thank you, don't worry, we will definitely follow closely. He had already observed the entire reception center, and everyone, including the waiters, had a guilt value of less than 10, meaning they had no criminal records. Not only that, but there were also several doctors who hurriedly passed by, and they were also white names in the eyes of good and evil, not red names. This was the case for dozens of people. He couldn't help but doubt, could it be that he was mistaken? Was the beton he met at the entrance just a coincidence? Thinking in his heart, it was too early to draw conclusions, so he decided to observe further. Hello, sir, let me show you around our health center. Just at that moment, a male staff member walked in from outside with a smile on his face. Su Lin narrowed his eyes, and sure enough, he saw another red name in the eyes of good and evil. Sun Xiaozhong, guilt value 89. Charges, suspected intentional injury, fighting, provocation, etc. Currently a fugitive in multiple cases. He was only a fugitive, not a wanted criminal, but he couldn't underestimate him. Su Lin remained calm, nodded, and said, thank you. Then he and Lu Jin followed the guy named Sun Xiaozhong and began their tour of the health center. Over there is our recuperation area. As long as you sign a lifelong contract with our health center, you can enter the recuperation area when you get old. The entire recuperation area is well equipped, with dedicated medical staff accompanying you. That building over there is our medical examination building, also where you made your appointment. Our equipment is top-notch in the world. And that area is our newly opened surgical area. Our health center has hired many outstanding domestic and foreign experts in various fields such as neurosurgery and oncology. They are definitely the top medical team in Haiyuan province, or even the entire Dashia. As they walked along, Su Lin's gaze narrowed slightly. This Sun Xiaozhong seemed to be casually guiding them, but in reality, he was deliberately leading them to the newly opened surgical area. If it wasn't for his suspicion, then there must be something wrong with this surgical area. Why did he bring them here? Pondering in his heart, he didn't hesitate and followed Sun Xiaozhong into that area. Along the way, he saw many surveillance cameras, but they were deliberately avoiding the lenses, at least not letting their faces be captured. Soon, they arrived in that area. Wang Xiaozhong said, Sir, would you like to go in and take a look? Our equipment will definitely impress you. 
At this point, not to mention Su Lin, even Lu Jin became somewhat alert and asked, What's so interesting about the equipment? We're not doctors, we don't understand those things. Old Su, let's not look, okay? He signaled Su Lin with his eyes. However, Su Lin smiled and said, Look, why not take a look? We can broaden our horizons. Ha ha, Mr. Su is right. Shall we go in together and take a look? Let's go, let's go, and take a look. Su Lin raised his hand to signal the other person to lead the way. Su, Lu Xin wanted to speak but was interrupted by a signal from Su Lin. Regardless, let's see what the other party wants to do first. He has the skills of a close combat king, plus various skill bonuses, and he even carries a gun. Even if the other party really attacks the two of them, he is not afraid. Soon, Sun Xiaozhong led them into the building. As soon as they entered, Su Lin noticed that something was wrong. The interior of this building did not look like a hospital ward or an operating room at all, but more like a prison. The walls were very thick, and every room had a burglar-proof door. The rooms seemed to be soundproofed, and the windows had double-layered glass. There's a big problem. Su Lin narrowed his eyes. Just then, Sun Xiaozhong suddenly ran ahead and quickly reached a heavy iron door, opened it, and walked out. Boom! Boom! In the next moment, the iron doors at both ends of the corridor closed instantly, and the doors of the hallway were completely sealed. Su Lin and Lu Jin were locked inside. Sun Xiaozhong glanced at the closed iron door, a cold smile appeared on his face. He picked up a walkie-talkie and said, I have locked those two people inside the building. You can start now. It's over, we're completely done for. Vice Captain Su, what should we do? We can't get out. Right, call Huang Ji and ask him to rescue us. No signal on the phone, we're really screwed this time. Lu Xin was a little panicked, constantly pacing back and forth, his expression filled with anxiety. Su Lin, on the other hand, calmly took out his phone and checked it, confirming that there was indeed no signal. It was obvious that they had spared no expense in this place, even installing signal jammers. And most likely, this place had an independent power supply system and security system. If they wanted to escape, there was probably only one way, which was to open the door in front of them. He looked at the lock hole on the door and the electronic password, his expression becoming solemn. It seems that it's time for me, the lock master, to take action. With a smile on his face, he slowly approached and carefully examined the type of lock. It was a multi-bolt lock, which had the advantage of multiple insurance metal rods. Once locked, it was difficult to force open unless the door was smashed. Of course, unless you had the key. Su Lin walked over, glanced at the lock, and then looked up at Lu Jin. Vice Captain Su, why are you looking at me? I definitely can't open it. Lu Jin raised his hands, indicating his helplessness. At this moment, he had regained some composure. After all, he was a criminal investigator, and he still had the necessary mentality. Su Lin looked at the smaller pieces of metal, such as pins or harder plastics. Ah, uh, Lu Jin hesitated for a moment, then shook his head somewhat awkwardly and said, Vice Captain Su, what do you think of this? He took out a dental floss from his pocket and said, the only thing that's relatively hard is this thing. Su Lin saw the dental floss and a smile appeared on his face. Perfect. Dental floss, sharp on one end, and thick enough, just a little short. But with Su Lin's lock master skill, it should be enough. He immediately took the dental floss and inserted it into the lock hole, gently manipulating it, while using his left hand to take out a promotional brochure from Sishan Health and Wellness Center and stuffed the cover into the gap of the door, gently pushing. Click. Three seconds later, with Lu Jin's face full of astonishment, the door lock made a crisp sound. However, Su Lin didn't stop. This thing had several insurance mechanisms, and if they weren't all opened, it couldn't be unlocked. He continued to manipulate the lock core, pressing his ear against the door. After about 10 seconds, there was another click sound, and the second lock opened. Three minutes later, as all five locks were pushed open, the gate slowly opened outward. Su Lin looked ahead and saw another door lock of the same type. Damn! They're doing an escape room with us? Lu Jin stared, his face full of resentment. Su Lin smiled. Previously, he might have panicked, but now that he had tested his lockpicking skills, he wasn't worried about being trapped. Any lock would do. Click. One minute later, the second door opened. Then the third, the fourth, and Su Lin and Lu Jin opened four locks in reverse order. Including the wasted three minutes at the beginning, they took less than ten minutes. Click. When the last door opened, sunlight shone on the two of them again. Lu Jin. He looked at the man beside him in disbelief, wanting to ask, Brother, were you a burglar before? But at this moment, Su Lin looked ahead with a cold expression, holding a walkie-talkie and saying something. Suddenly, when he saw Su Lin and the others coming out, his face changed drastically. Ah. Officers, sorry, the door just broke. 
I'm calling my master to come and fix it. I didn't expect you to come out on your own, huh? Sorry, sorry. Sun Xiaozhong looked nervous and spoke to Su Lin and Lu Jin, but he kept his hand on the talk button of the walkie-talkie. Needless to say, he was sending a signal to someone else. Humph, your health center doesn't seem that great. Even the door locks are broken. I will definitely complain to the health department about you. Just you wait. Lu Jin pretended to say fiercely. Su Lin patted his shoulder inside, stop talking, we've been exposed. What do you mean exposed? Lu Jin was stunned. Su Lin said, didn't you hear how he addressed us just now? He called us officers. Damn. As soon as these words came out, Sun Xiaozhong's face changed drastically. He immediately turned around and tried to run, but Su Lin was faster. He caught up from behind and kicked him hard, knocking him to the ground. Revealing their identities as police officers was definitely a big mistake. Ah, what are you doing? Even if you're police officers, you can't just beat people up. Help, someone help. This guy was pinned to the ground by Su Lin's foot. He tried to get up but couldn't, so he immediately started shouting for help. Some people appeared from the front, and when they saw the scene, they approached and started accusing Su Lin. Su Lin narrowed his eyes, his gaze sharp as he scanned the crowd. The eye of good and evil activated, and there were no red names. They had been deceived by Sun Xiaozhong. Lu Jin, handcuff him. Su Lin said in a deep voice. Okay. Lu Jin immediately stepped forward, took out handcuffs, and snapped them onto Sun Xiaozhong's wrists. So it was the police arresting someone. You scared me, I thought there was a fight. Let's go, let's disperse. Everyone, go back to work, stop watching. The crowd dispersed. However, at this moment, a person with cold eyes quickly approached, accompanied by two burly and fierce-looking individuals. Su Lin's eye of good and evil swept over them, and they all had red names, with a sin value of over 100. Let go of him. The person was Niu Weihao. He showed no courtesy to Su Lin and Lu Jin, and immediately rushed towards Su Lin, throwing punches. Stop, I'm a police officer. Su Lin shouted angrily, raising his hand to show his identification. Police? I don't believe you. Beat these troublemakers to death. Niu Weihao was clever. He didn't care about Su Lin's identity and started fighting directly. Even if he was caught later, he could claim ignorance. But he never thought that Su Lin had seen through everything he had done in the past with just one glance. Boom! Facing Niu Weihao's fist, Su Lin suddenly rushed forward, raising his elbow and fiercely striking his chest, sending him flying more than a meter away. Then, with two flying kicks, he directly kicked away the two people Niu Weihao brought with him. It was at this moment that he caught a glimpse of a young man sitting in a wheelchair in front of the building ahead, being pushed out by someone. Lin Yun! Su Lin had a photographic memory and had been studying the files continuously these days, so he naturally knew what Lin Yun looked like. Seeing him now, he was certain in his mind that this case was done by someone from the Sishan Health Center. Lin Yun was an important witness and must not be harmed. He immediately drew his gun and shouted, Stop, or I'll shoot. The young doctor who was pushing Lin Yun was startled when he saw Su Lin draw his gun, and quickly let go and took a few steps back. Su Lin coldly glanced at the doctor and activated his ability to discern good from evil, finding that the doctor had a clean record and no criminal history, which relieved him. He turned his head to look at the three fallen Niu Weihao, who had been hit with full force and were basically incapacitated. Su Lin pointed his gun at Niu Weihao while taking out his phone and dialing Huang Weihan's number. In the criminal investigation detachment, Huang Weihan was pacing back and forth with a worried and anxious expression on his face. At this moment, Xiao Weihai walked in and seeing him in such a state, he immediately asked, What's going on? Why are you so restless? Ah, uh, Director Xia, it's nothing, I'm fine. Huang Weihan quickly waved his hand, not daring to tell the truth. Where is Su Lin? Xiao Weihai ignored him and asked, looking at Su Lin's office. Huang Weihan replied, He's out investigating a case. Investigating a case? What case? A missing person case. What, a missing person case? Xiao Weihai's face was full of shock as he asked, Do you have any leads? Huang Weihan nodded, Yes, we have leads. They went on an assignment today. Where is the target? Um, about that, Director Xia, it's better if you don't know. Just as his voice fell, the phone on the desk rang, and seeing that it was Su Lin calling, he immediately answered. Then he heard Su Lin on the other end say, Huang, mobilize the entire criminal investigation detachment, contact the sub bureaus and the special police brigade to assist us. Okay. Huang Weihan excitedly shouted, if Su Lin was calling for backup, then there was only one possibility, the case was almost solved. Watching Huang Weihan go to call people, Xiao Weihai narrowed his eyes and asked behind him, wait, where are you guys going? Sishan Health Center. Huang Weihan left these words behind. Oh, damn, what did you say? 
Xiao Weihai's exclamation came from behind. Hearing the six words Sishan Health Center, Xiao Weihai's expression froze, and he quickly chased after them. Huang Weihan, stop, what's going on? Everyone knew that the Sishan Health Center couldn't be easily touched, after all, the people living there were not ordinary. It wasn't that Xiao Weihai was afraid, but it was troublesome, countless troubles. Besides the troubles that came from society, there could also be orders from above. There were too many retired leaders in that place. Huang Weihan stopped in his tracks, turned around, and said, Director Xia, Su Lin has already found a lead, and they went there today, there's likely something big going on. Xia Weihai furrowed his brows, his face extremely serious. After a few seconds, he gritted his teeth and raised his head, Go. Whatever happens, I'll take responsibility. Remember, you must catch the criminals red-handed, otherwise I won't spare you. Yes. Huang Weihan saluted with a grin, then turned and walked out. Soon, the criminal investigation detachment, as well as the criminal investigation brigades of various sub-bureaus, and the special police brigade, all mobilized. They quickly assembled and headed towards Sishan. In Sishan, Su Lin controlled the scene with a solemn expression on his face. Lin Yun sat slumped in a wheelchair, his head shaking rhythmically, his eyes vacant, clearly not in the right state of mind. He approached and asked a few questions, but Lin Yun just kept laughing, completely unresponsive. Vice Captain Su, what's going on? Lu Jin asked in astonishment. Lin Yun's family reported him as a college student, but this doesn't look like a college student, right? There's only one explanation, someone did this to him, Su Lin said with a serious face, then he looked up and glanced into the distance. Not far away, a group of doctors hurriedly approached, anger evident on their faces. Who are you, and why did you touch my patient? The bald doctor in front coldly questioned, his eyes filled with anger and a hint of evasion. Su Lin activated his ability to see good and evil, and with one glance, he saw that they were all innocent, at most a few who had accepted bribes, but no records of illegal activities, including the leading doctor. He felt slightly relieved and asked, Doctor, can you please explain what's going on with this patient? What's going on is not a reason for you to detain my patient, the doctor said with a grim face. Su Lin replied, he's not just your patient, he's also the missing person we're looking for. What did you say? The doctor frowned upon hearing this. How could a missing person from the police suddenly appear in the Sishan Rehabilitation Center? He turned to a student beside him and asked, what's going on? Who admitted this patient? It was Dr. Young Foam, the student replied. Where is Dr. Young? I saw him this morning, but he suddenly left at noon without saying anything to anyone. Call Director Sure. The doctor said directly. Yes, sir. In no time, the student's call was connected, and after explaining the situation to the person on the other end of the line, a doctor wearing a white coat, standing less than one, seven meters tall, with black framed glasses, arrived. La Ma, what's going on? The person looked at Su Lin, his gaze slightly freezing, then turned to the previous doctor. At this moment, Su Lin stared intently at the middle-aged doctor, his eyes filled with anger and killing intent. Sure Jin Long, evil value 1020, extremely heinous crimes. In just a few words, there was no evidence of his crimes, but there were four words, extremely heinous crimes. Those who are generally referred to as extremely heinous are often the kind that can be directly executed upon capture, and this short middle-aged man was among them. But what annoyed Su Lin was that the system suddenly failed him, giving him four words, extremely heinous crimes, without providing anything useful. Wasn't it just playing with him? Did it want him to directly tell the man, you have committed extremely heinous crimes, I will execute you? Nonsense. Without authentication or evidence, it was simply impossible to convict someone. So he didn't rush to express his attitude, but instead threw a special mark at Sher Jianlong. Director Sher, you've come at the right time. This police officer says that my patient here is the missing person they're looking for. What should we do now? Young Fong admitted him, but I heard he took a leave of absence? Sure Jin Long replied, yes, dr. Young Fong did take a leave of absence. Don't worry, I'll handle it. He then walked towards Su Lin, politely saying, this police officer, we really didn't know he was a missing person. I suspect dr. Young Fong saw him wandering the streets in a confused state and brought him here for treatment. You should also understand that we are a non-profit organization, and charity is our original intention. If Su Lin didn't know this guy's identity, he might have believed him, but at this moment, he wanted to slap this bastard twice. We need to take the person with us, Su Lin said in a low voice. No problem, Sure Jianlong nodded, then pointed to the four thugs lying on the ground and said, but these four, we don't need to take them back, right? They are suspected of assaulting the police. Do you want to take them back? Su Lin did not directly reveal the identity of the other party but instead accused them of assaulting the police. Officer, they really don't seem to know your identity. 
Ignorance is not a crime, right? Sure Jim Long still had a smile on his face, showing no expression. Su Lin's mouth curled into a cold smile and asked, Are you sure you want to protect them? I. Seeing his smile, Sure Jin Long felt a sense of danger and immediately stopped speaking. He just glanced lightly at the four people on the ground with a calm expression. Nyo Wei Hao and the others gritted their teeth and remained silent. These guys knew very well that if they didn't speak, they might still survive, but if they did, it would be certain death. The boss's power was definitely beyond their imagination. Take them away. Su Lin reprimanded. Wait. A indifferent voice sounded, and two more people walked towards them. One was wearing expensive suit, about one, eight meters tall, with a dignified demeanor and an air of superiority. Behind the middle-aged man was a young woman, like a secretary. Su Lin squinted at the two of them, the secretary was not a problem, but the middle-aged man had a problem. Wang Chi, criminal score 522, suspected of multiple kidnappings, forced labor, murder and corpse disposal. A criminal score exceeding 500 was definitely a serious criminal, even a death row inmate. It's getting more interesting. Su Lin's mouth slightly curled up. All sorts of people were coming out, and he was completely certain in his heart that there were major problems with this health center. Those missing persons were definitely related to this place. But this Wang Chi was definitely not the mastermind either. With a thought in his mind, he threw out another special mark. Wang Chi was obviously much tougher than the previous Shi Jianlong. As soon as this guy appeared, he coldly questioned, Officer, I demand to see your credentials. Su Lin raised an eyebrow. According to their discipline, if the party being dealt with needed to see credentials, then it was necessary for them to present them. It wasn't mandatory, but Su Lin didn't hesitate at all and directly took out his own credentials. Criminal Investigation Division of the Municipal Public Security Bureau, Deputy Division Chief, Su Lin. You're Su Lin. Seeing Su Lin's credentials, Wang Qi's pupils visibly contracted. In the entire Jiang Yun city, ordinary people definitely didn't know much about the name Su Lin and even if they knew the name, they didn't know who he was. But for certain special groups of people, the two words Su Lin were like thunder in their ears. The target of these special groups was very clear. Either they were official personnel or people within the police system. Apart from these, there was only one type of person, someone with ulterior motives. Su Lin smiled and looked at Wang Qi, who clearly belonged to the latter. Deputy Division Chief Su, hello, I've heard your name for a long time. Wang Qi smiled and reached out his hand, but Su Lin ignored him and said, can we leave now? Yes, please go ahead. Wang Qi immediately changed his previous aggressive posture and made way for Su Lin and the others, indicating that they could leave. If it were any other criminal investigator, even the three captains directly under the division, they would have directly detained the person first before deciding. But after seeing Su Lin's identity, he changed his mind. This guy was capable enough to take down Zhang Jingsheng and Li Mingyu, and that was enough to prove his abilities. Coupled with a series of arrests of wanted criminals in major cases, especially hearing that he had solved and captured a mercenary assassin together with Nanlin City, the higher-ups specifically requested to meet him. Such a person should not be easily offended, otherwise there would be endless trouble. Su Lin smiled and then pushed Lin Yun's wheelchair, leading Lu Jin and walked outside. Lu Jin pulled Niu Wei Hao and the others up and pushed them forward, and no one dared to stop them. Russell just at this moment, the sound of chaotic footsteps appeared from the corner of the building in front, followed by a large group of people rushing over. These people are fully armed, wearing helmets and masks, and holding various firearms such as assault rifles. They are clearly members of the special police force. In addition to the special police, a group of detectives wearing bulletproof vests also appeared. Huang Weihan ran at the forefront, with the captain of the special police team, Sui Dong, by his side. The two rushed over in a hurry, but when they saw that Su Lin had nothing at all, pushing a wheelchair out from inside, and Lu Xin was still with three criminals behind him, their expressions changed. Su Lin, you. Huang Weihan looked at Su Lin, about to speak, but suddenly saw Lin Yun being pushed in a wheelchair, and his face instantly changed. Is this Lin Yun, found him? Su Lin shook his head, gave him a subtle look, and said, let's talk about it later, contact a doctor, and give Lin Yun a full body examination immediately. Okay. I'll go right away. Huang Weihan nodded. He had received Su Lin's message. Since he said to go back first, it naturally meant that they couldn't move the Sishan Health and Rehabilitation Center at the moment. Captain Sui, thank you for your hard work. Su Lin looked at Sui Dong and said, No problem, it's just a short distance. If you need anything in the future, just call me anytime. Sui Dong waved his hand and said with a smile. Jokingly, following Su Lin meant having need to eat. This was the most widely circulated saying in the current Jiang Yun City police circle. 
When he was in the traffic police team, the traffic police team was full of oily food. After joining the criminal investigation team, in less than a week, the criminal investigation team also became full of oily food. He wanted to follow Su Lin all day long. It wouldn't be long before he could move up a bit and report to the Provincial Public Security Bureau. Over a hundred people withdrew outside, Su Lin stood in front of the car, turned his head and looked at the eight-story building in the middle of the Sishan Health and Rehabilitation Center. He always felt like there were a pair of eyes staring at him. A faint smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. He immediately got into the car and the car quickly left. After Su Lin and the others left, Wang Chitsai took out his phone with a gloomy face and dialed a number. Dad, they're gone. Hmm, I saw it. A voice came from the phone, old and somewhat tired. Damn it, Lin Yun was taken away by him, and there are also Niu Wei Hao and three others. Will he find out about us? Wang Chitsai gritted his teeth, his face full of viciousness, and said, Otherwise, should we have someone take care of him? As he said that, he made a gesture of slitting his throat. The person on the other end of the phone was silent for a few seconds and said, No, he can't be touched. Once he is, the police in Jiangyun City will go crazy. By then, our troubles will be even greater. Then what should we do? Wang Chitsai asked unwillingly. Don't worry, he won't be able to investigate for long. I will arrange for some people to cause trouble for him. By then, he will only be able to protect himself and won't be able to touch this case again. As for that deputy captain Huang Weihan, I will also have someone inform him. We can't delay any longer on this end, find a target immediately. Remember, there can't be any more problems. Okay. Wang Chitsai nodded and hung up the phone. In the car, Huang Weihan and Su Lin sat together in the back seat, Lu Xin drove, and quickly left the Sishan Health and Rehabilitation Center. Huang Weihan asked, Xiao Su, did you find Lin Yun at the Health and Rehabilitation Center? What do you think? If we didn't find him here, why would I ask you to come and support? Su Lin glanced at him impatiently, asking such a stupid question was pointless. Why didn't we search? Huang Weihan asked. Su Lin replied, what's the rush? Give them some time to make a mess on their own. I think they must be trying to deal with me or the entire criminal investigation team right now. He was confident because he had previously taken down Zhang Jingsheng and Li Mingyu. With Wang Lida's power and position, he would definitely make the first move. Regardless, they would definitely reveal their true colors. It would be even better to catch them red-handed later. As for searching now, he didn't think it would be useful. Even if they caught Xiu Jin Long, it wouldn't matter. They wouldn't be able to accuse the mastermind behind it all. Okay, you have the final say, Huang Weihan shrugged. The two of them were rushing back in a hurry when Su Lin's phone rang. Hello? Su Lin, this is Xiao Weihai, Xiao Weihai said on the other end with a serious tone. Su Lin was instantly stunned upon hearing the seriousness in Xiao Weihai's voice. Xiao Bureau, what's the matter? Xiao Weihai said, Su Lin, I am officially notifying you that you have been suspended. It has been discovered that there are 20 million yuan of unexplained assets in your account, and you must provide an explanation for this. Damn. After saying that, Xiao Weihai angrily slammed the table, his voice almost deafening Su Lin's ears. Su Lin was also shocked and said, these guys are fast. It seems that Wang Lida's influence is even stronger than I imagined. Also, inform Huang Weihan, he is also suspended for investigation, Xiao Weihai said again. What? Huang also took bribes? Su Lin looked at Huang Weihan with surprise. Huang Weihan's face turned pale. This was like dismantling the two pillars of their criminal investigation team. Yes, three million yuan, Xiao Weihai said. What? Xiao Bureau, what did you say? Three million yuan, why should I have three million yuan? Huang Weihan felt humiliated. Su Lin had twenty million yuan, and he only had three million yuan. Who the hell do they think they are looking down on? Hey, you're fast. Su Lin hung up the phone, smiled, and winked at Huang Weihan. Huang, it seems that your rank as a second level police inspector is not as valuable as my third level police inspector rank. You still have the mood to laugh? Aren't you worried? Huang Weihan blared at him. Trouble. Now they have two inexplicable sums of money under their names, and anyone can see that there is a problem. But even though there is a problem, they will definitely send people to investigate from above. The Anti-Corruption Bureau of the Procuratorate probably already has people waiting at the entrance of the Municipal Bureau. Su Lin shrugged, is worrying useful? Don't worry, the innocent will prove their innocence. At most, it will just delay the progress of the case. No matter how they investigate, we. Su Lin suddenly raised his head. Delaying time? Four words appeared in his mind. The other party knew that there was no way to really bring him and Huang Weihan down, but they still did it. Could it be that they just wanted to discuss the two of them? No, that's impossible. 
Their opponent is very powerful, and such people are generally very arrogant. They wouldn't bother using such ineffective methods. So, there is only one explanation, the other party is buying time, they will definitely take action. Su Lin immediately pulled up the system panel, and the special marked page showed that Xiu Jianlong and Wang Qi's locations almost overlapped. He immediately opened the video and found that they were both standing in a dimly lit room, and there was a person sitting in front of the window, facing away from the two of them. Since there was only video and no sound, Su Lin couldn't hear what they were saying specifically. He he, the rabbit is indeed anxious, Su Lin's mouth curled up, revealing a smile. From now on, he must keep a close eye on the movements of these two guys. Once they show signs of leaving the Sishan Health and Wellness Center, he must track them immediately. Beep beep beep. While he was contemplating, the car had already entered the parking lot of the municipal bureau. The sound of a horn sounded, and in front of their car, three cars from the procuratorate were parked. Su Lin was awakened by the horn. He looked up and saw that more than ten people had already gotten out of the three cars and were quickly walking towards their car. Huang Weihan's face turned green. He didn't expect it to be true. These guys came really fast. Su Lin, on the other hand, smiled, opened the car door, and got out of the car. Seeing this, Huang Weihan shook his head inside, then also got out of the car. Huang Weihan, Chief of the Criminal Investigation Division of Jiangyun City, Su Lin, Deputy Chief of the Criminal Investigation Division of Jiangyun City, I am Deputy Director Li Yichuan from the Anti-Corruption Bureau. Now I officially inform both of you that someone has reported you two by name for accepting bribes. And the amount is huge. Now please cooperate with our investigation. A middle-aged man with a bald head wearing an anti-corruption uniform walked up. This guy showed a mouthful of yellow teeth, two triangular eyes, and a smile that seemed to be there and not there on his face. Su Lin was a little confused, and he suddenly remembered someone, Dean Chen, who studied foreign languages. This is really like him. Both of you, come with us. Li Yichuan said to Su Lin and Huang Weihan. Two police officers immediately stepped forward behind him, ready to handcuff the two. Wait, what do you want to do? A roar sounded, and Xiao Weihai quickly ran down the steps from the gate, pointing directly at Li Yichuan's nose and cursing, Li Baldi, let me tell you, if you dare to handcuff today, I dare to investigate you thoroughly. I don't believe that you have no problems at all? Hearing this, Li Yichuan's face immediately darkened. Su Lin and Huang Weihan, upon hearing this, directly gave a thumbs up to Xia Ju. Get lost. Xiao Weihai glared and said, I said, it's best to catch them red-handed, but now, their counterattack is beyond your imagination. Fast and ruthless, you can't handle it. Su Lin said, Xia Ju, sorry, we really didn't expect this. Oh well, let's just investigate, it's fine, we are innocent. As he said that, he gave a signal to Xia Weihai. When Xia Weihai saw Su Lin's expression, he suddenly had some thoughts. Just as he was about to step forward, he suddenly heard a roar in the sky. Thump thump thump. The roar of helicopter rotors made everyone present unable to help but look up. They watched as two helicopters in the distance approached continuously and then landed on the rooftop helipad of the municipal bureau. What's going on? These aren't our helicopters. Xiao Weihai was stunned. And right after this, a luxury car slowly drove in from outside the gate, and two women got out of the car. Leading the way was a charming and wealthy woman, her high heels tapping on the ground, her swaying figure captivating. Behind the wealthy woman was her bodyguard, Qing Jie. Oh, Yao Yao is here. Xiao Weihai saw Yan Yao get out of the car and immediately smiled and greeted her. He finally understood where the helicopters came from. Yan Yao glanced at Su Lin, her eyes flickering with a bright light, and smiled charmingly. Then she looked at Xiao Weihai and said, Uncle Xia, I brought the helicopters for you. The first batch of two helicopters, please accept them. Okay, okay, okay. Xiao Weihai nodded repeatedly, delighted to the point of losing his bearings. He completely forgot about Su Lin and Huang Weihan's situation. Yan Yao smiled and turned to face Su Lin, playfully blinking at him and said, You don't have to worry about rescue being late anymore. Su Lin, in return for my concern for you, can you treat me to a meal? The wealthy woman smoothed her long hair hanging in front of her chest. She was wearing a tight pink shirt today, paired with a black stockings pencil skirt on the lower half, showcasing her enchanting figure. Su Lin was about to speak, but unexpectedly, Li Yichuan next to him directly said, I'm sorry, he is currently under investigation by us. Ha! Huh? The wealthy woman's face darkened, and she coldly looked at the bald man in front of her, asking Su Lin, what's going on? Su Lin didn't speak, but Huang Weihan stepped forward and explained the whole process, mentioning the 20 million, the 3 million, and also expressing his frustration. 20 million? Are you that cheap? The wealthy woman laughed, then disdainfully glanced at Li Yichuan. 
She picked up her phone and dialed the number of the financial director, saying, Hello, director he, check how much funds are left in our group's account. Yes, it's urgent. After speaking, she reached out and started touching Su Lin's body. What are you doing? Su Lin quickly stepped back. Don't move. Yin Yao glared at him. Then he found his wallet in the pocket of his coat, and in Su Lin's puzzled gaze, he took out a bank card. 21 billion 450 million, right? Okay, transfer 21 billion to the bank card with the number, yes, now, immediately, right away. After speaking, Yan Yao hung up the phone. Everyone present widened their eyes, looking at the wealthy woman in disbelief. She once again refreshed her own arrogance. Huang Weihan glanced at Xiao Wei Hai, and the two unconsciously pouted, feeling a sense of frustration. Su Lin. Pressure point. Madam, if you keep doing this, I really can't handle it. Li Yichuan and a group of people also looked at Yan Yao in astonishment. They had a question in their hearts, who is this woman? Ding dong. At the next moment, Su Lin's phone rang. He took it out and looked at it, his eyelids twitching. Yan Yao took his phone and opened the message interface, the bank's transfer reminder and balance directly in front of Li Yichuan and the others. Come, take a look. 20 million, what's that? Now, do you have to say he took a bribe of 21 billion? The wealthy woman said aggressively. You. You. This still doesn't prove that his 20 million is not a bribe. In any case, this person must come back with us for investigation. Li Ichuan gritted his teeth, his heart pounding. Okay. You wait for me. The wealthy woman picked up the phone again. Hello? Director He, no matter what method you use, transfer the remaining 45 million to a bank account under the name of Prosecutor Li Ichuan, yes. Damn. Li Ichuan was scared and jumped up. This woman was stunningly beautiful, but her methods were even more ruthless than theirs. This was definitely a clear attempt to frame him. Madam, you are framing our public officials, which is illegal. Li Ichuan angrily said. Yen Yao, if you dare to touch my man, not to mention framing, I will kill you. Do you believe it? Before she finished speaking, a hand gently rested on her shoulder. I'll handle it myself. Su Lin glanced at her gratefully, but hiding behind a woman was not his style. He took a step forward and said to Li Ichuan, I can accept the investigation, but it must be at the Criminal Investigation Division of the Municipal Public Security Bureau. Li Ichuan's face turned pale, staring at Su Lin, while Su Lin stared at him without blinking, a hint of mockery in his eyes. After a while, Li Ichuan said with a grim face, Fine, you can go to the Criminal Investigation Division, but you must be under our surveillance. Okay. Su Lin nodded. He couldn't help but feel a little emotional. The people he dealt with were getting more and more ruthless. He had just been investigated not long ago, and now he was being framed again. However, the more formidable the opponent, the more excited he became. Because it meant that he had seriously threatened them and that they were about to reveal their true colors. Give me a few minutes. Su Lin came to the wealthy woman and said, You go back first, I can handle this matter myself. Really? The wealthy woman hesitated. Really? Su Lin nodded. The wealthy woman said, Okay, then I'll wait for you at your house. What? Su Lin was stunned. He hadn't been home for several days. What did she mean by this? The wealthy woman smiled, took out a bunch of keys, and handed them to Su Lin, saying, I changed the lock for your house. The old lock was of poor quality and not safe. After she finished speaking, she opened her palm, revealing a silver white key in her tender and white hand. You. Su Lin stared at her. Let's go, go home. The wealthy woman didn't give him a chance to speak, turned around, and got into the car with her bodyguard Qingjie. Kid, you're awesome. Huang Weihan walked up to Su Lin and gave him a thumbs up. Xiao Weihai couldn't help but cover his forehead and said, It seems that my old comrade's daughter can't be protected. Su Lin glanced at the two of them and didn't say anything. After entering the municipal bureau, Su Lin and the others returned to the criminal investigation detachment and were immediately taken to a small conference room where they were questioned by Li Yichuan and others. Huang Weihan pretended to know nothing, while Su Lin spoke directly, I have two. One billion in my account, do I need your twenty million? This sentence almost choked Li Yichuan. These two guys weren't afraid of being investigated at all, they were simply two ruffians. Or rather, they were confident in their innocence. After a thorough investigation, they gained nothing, and everyone's stomachs were growling with hunger. When they arrived at the cafeteria in the municipal bureau, Captain Chow pointed at them and said, Without meal cards, we won't serve you. Li Ichuan's eyelids twitched, he gritted his teeth, wishing he could smash the municipal bureau. In the end, they had no choice but to order takeout. On Su Lin's side, Xiao Weihai personally brought him and Huang Wei some food. Xiao Su, what's the result of the investigation? Xiao Weihai asked in a deep voice, ignoring the two inspectors standing behind him. 
The situation is serious. Among the four people we arrested, one is from Bitong, and the other three are fugitives. By the way, Director Xia, how is Lin Yun doing? Su Lin didn't avoid mentioning the two inspectors. The situation is not optimistic. The doctor said he has been taking a special medication for a long time, which has caused severe damage to the frontal lobe of his brain, resulting in irreversible damage to his memory and intelligence. Even if he is cured in the future, there will still be sequelae. Xia Weihai said. These bastards deserve to die. Su Lin's face turned pale, then he raised his head and said, Director Xia, investigate from several aspects. First, the black market organ trade. Second, I think there's something wrong with that DR. Ma. Third, check on that Niu Weihao, he has blood on his hands. Su Lin spoke while writing and handed the document to Xiao Weihai. At this moment, the two inspectors standing behind Xiao Weihai memorized every word they said. Xiao Weihai picked up the note written by Su Lin, nodded, and walked out of the office. When he returned to his own office, he immediately took out the note and carefully read it. He had just noticed that what Su Lin wrote was completely different from what he said. Opening the note, he saw a paragraph written on it, secretly seal off Sishan Health Center, they are making a move. Wang Qi and Shi Jianlong are big problems. Someone, Hu Gang, Chen Fei. Xiao Weihai rushed out of the office and went to the criminal investigation detachment. At this time, everyone in the criminal investigation detachment was downcast, full of resentment on their faces, and some even cursed loudly. Suddenly, they heard someone shouting at the door, and immediately looked up. The three captains stood up and walked over. Gather everyone immediately, secretly seal off Sishan Health Center. Remember, it must be kept confidential. Everyone, hand over your communication devices. Yes. The three of them saluted at the same time. The operation began silently. Hu Gang and the others gradually led their teams to various jurisdictions, claiming to be handling previous cases. However, after arriving at their destinations, they would quietly turn around and head to Sishan. Over 40 vehicles were parked in a small town outside Sishan. Everyone got off the cars and infiltrated Sishan, secretly sealing off the entire health center. While they were sealing off the center, Su Lin noticed that the red dot representing Wang Qi on the special marked map suddenly started moving. His expression changed, and he sat up abruptly from the sofa. Finally, he's making a move. Su Lin watched Wang Qi's movement on the map, a look of excitement on his face. He enjoyed this hunting feeling. Moreover, he could accurately control the prey's movements, completely chasing them from a god's perspective. This feeling of being in control made it hard to resist. Huang Weihan saw him sit up suddenly and also raised his head in confusion. They had been bored all afternoon. Unfortunately, Li Yichuan's men were watching their every move, which was very annoying but there was nothing they could do. It's nothing, I'm just wondering how Wang Qi will act. He had a serious expression on his face. He had already discussed the issue of Wang Qi and Shi Jianlong with Huang Weihan, and made it clear that these two individuals were their targets. However, at this moment, he was starting to feel a bit anxious. He could track Wang Qi's movements, but because it was late at night and the surroundings were pitch black, he couldn't determine how many people were with this guy. After thinking for a moment, he took out a cell phone. It wasn't his own cell phone, but one that Xiao Weihai had secretly given him before leaving. Since they were about to take action, they naturally needed the intelligence information from the person who had personally been inside the health center. However, what Xiao Weihai didn't know was that Su Lin had more than just intelligence. He dialed Xiao Weihai's phone. Hello, Xiao Bureau, how's it going? Su Lin asked. Xiao Weihai replied, Xiao Su, we've already started the operation. There are about 200 people, and we've surrounded the entire Sishan. So far, we haven't found any suspicious individuals. Good. Su Lin nodded, glanced at the special marked map, and said, pay attention to the southwest direction. I feel something is off over there. During the day, I discovered a dense forest, and my intuition tells me that something is not right there. Okay. I understand. Upon hearing this, Xiao Weihai immediately hung up the phone and picked up the walkie-talkie to start commanding the operation. After Su Lin finished the call, he sat still in his seat. Huang Weihan thought he was contemplating and didn't disturb him. This case was discovered by Su Lin himself, so his investigative thinking was very important. However, as time passed, Su Lin's expression became increasingly grim. In the system interface, the special markings were moving rapidly, but according to his observations during the day, it was a jungle, and even driving wouldn't be that fast. Something's not right. He furrowed his brows. He slowly raised his head, and Wang Qi's marker was about to leave Sishan. Why hadn't Xia Bureau and the others taken action yet? He took out his cell phone and dialed Xia Weihai's number again. Hello? Xia Bureau, have you found anyone? He asked. 
Xiao Weihai replied, No, everything is normal on our end. I've arranged dozens of criminal investigation brothers in the southwest direction, and it's been almost an hour, but we haven't found anything unusual. Su Lin said, Xiao Bureau, they're most likely not traveling on the ground. Not on the ground? Xiao Weihai was stunned. He stood in the mountains and, prompted by Su Lin's suggestion, subconsciously looked up at the starry sky. Xiao Su, you mean they're not traveling on the ground, but in the sky? Not in the sky either. Su Lin shook his head directly. At this moment, he had zoomed in on the close-up footage, and Wang Qi was driving a car. Due to the angle, he could only see a two-meter radius around Wang Qi. This guy was driving an off-road vehicle at a high speed, and it seemed like there were many bends ahead as he kept turning the steering wheel. Underground. Su Lin squinted his eyes and said two words. Underground? Xiao Weihai was shocked. Su Lin asked, Xiao Bureau, when the Sishan Health Center was being built, was there any tunneling? Or, does this underground passage already exist? I'm not sure about that. Wait a moment, I'll check. Xiao Weihai immediately hung up the phone and started investigating. After making several calls, he couldn't find any information about a tunnel. When he called Su Lin to inform him, Su Lin straightforwardly said, Xiao Bureau, if they've really taken action, I estimate that they've probably already left our Jiangyun city. Come back first. Contact the cities around us and share their photos. Forget it, so as not to alert the enemy. Su Lin stopped halfway through his sentence. He had just exposed his identity in front of Wang Qi and was tricked by that guy. If the other party knew that the police were already onto him, he might completely disappear. Xia Bureau, I need to go out. Su Lin gritted his teeth. The situation was a bit tricky, and he needed to take action. He had originally thought that with the ability of the special markings, he could easily track and pursue remotely, but now it seemed that he had to go out. I'll figure something out. Xiao Weihai said, then hung up the phone directly. He leaned against a big tree, touched his chin, and waved to Chun Hua. Xiao Chun, you immediately return to the branch and cause trouble for Li Tuzi. Remember, you must bring Su Lin out for me. Understand? Yes, Chief Xia. Chen Hua immediately saluted and excitedly left with his dozen or so brothers. The rest of you, return to the town and wait for further orders. Xia Weihai waved his hand at the others. Although Su Lin had told them to withdraw, Xia Weihai felt that this kid would definitely cause trouble once he came out, so he decided to temporarily station them in the town. However, to avoid drawing attention, he had everyone dispersed around the outskirts of the town. Municipal Bureau, Criminal Investigation Branch. Su Lin stood up and signaled to Huang Weihan, who immediately stood up. Brother, what's the matter? Huang Weihan asked, addressing Su Lin as a brother. In his heart, he had nothing but admiration for this kid. Not only did he admire his investigative abilities, but also his skills in picking up girls. How did he manage to do it without doing anything? Rich women would willingly throw themselves at him. We're ready to leave, Su Lin patted his shoulder and said. Leave? How? Li Tuzi's men are watching outside. Unless we fight our way out, Huang Weihan said. Su Lin replied, no need. Bang. Just as the sound fell, angry shouts could be heard from outside the door. Li Tuzi, you actually ate my instant noodles? Chen Hua returned to the office and saw Li Tuzi eating instant noodles as soon as he entered. Without saying a word, he immediately pressed his head down into the noodles. Bang. Li Tuzi's head was pressed into the noodles, splashing soup everywhere and causing the instant noodle cup to shatter. Ah. Li Tuzi struggled to stand up howling in pain, frantically wiping the soup and noodles off his face. Kid, what are you doing? Li Tuzi angrily cursed. What am I doing? That was the instant noodles my girlfriend gave me. I didn't eat them for two years, and you dare to eat this bowl of instant noodles? I'll beat you to death. Chen Hua tried hard to hold back his laughter, and immediately rushed forward, his eyes red as if he wanted to devour someone. Li Tuzi was dumbfounded. Wasn't it just a bowl of instant noodles? Was it worth beating someone up over it? Li Tuzi was dumbfounded. Wasn't it just a bowl of instant noodles? Even if it was given by his girlfriend, it was still just instant noodles. He could have given it back to him. But when Chen Hua rushed over and threw a punch at him, he finally realized that things weren't that simple. Bang! Li Ichuan's left eye socket was heavily punched, and he felt his vision darken, almost being knocked out completely by this punch. Chen Hua had been holding in his anger. These guys were full and had nothing to do, investigating anyone would have been fine, but they chose to investigate Su Lin? They should know that Deputy Chief Su was like a god who led them to success. Under these circumstances, they absolutely couldn't tolerate it. Even without Chief Xia's orders, Chen Hua was ready to beat up Li Tuzi to vent his anger. Especially after seeing him eat his instant noodles, he had even more reason to do so. Bang! Bang! 
Chen Hua swung his fists and Li Tuzi instantly lost his bearings. But he was very cautious, specifically targeting areas that wouldn't cause much harm but would double the pain, such as the ribs, armpits, cheeks, and eye sockets. These were his main targets. Ah, I was wrong. Stop, stop, help, the police are beating people, help. Lituzi shouted for help, and the group of Lituzi's men who heard the commotion immediately ran out of the nearby office. Seeing their deputy bureau chief being chased and beaten, how could they stand by and do nothing? They immediately rushed over to help. All right. So you think you can outnumber us, huh? Brothers, beat them to death. Chen Hua was surrounded by several people and took a few hits before grinning and shouting loudly. This was the opportunity he had been waiting for. If these inspectors didn't fight back, then his performance would have been in vain. Damn it, how dare you hit our captain. Brothers from the criminal investigation team 3, attack. Fuck, beat them to death for me. Charge, bang bang, crash, clang. Ah, ow, stop. Please stop, we surrender. No need to fight anymore, we admit defeat. Ow. Oh. The screams echoed throughout the entire office area. Compared to their combat power, those pampered guys couldn't possibly be a match for the detectives. In no time, one by one, they were all knocked down, wailing in agony. The entire hall was filled with scattered files and other items, a pitiful sight to behold. Even more pitiful were Lituzi and his subordinates, ten people in total, including Lituzi himself, all with swollen faces and bruised noses. Especially Li Tuzi, even his own mother wouldn't recognize him. His eyes were swollen and pitch black, his nose swollen, and his cheeks puffed up like balloons. There were even three or four bumps on his head, oozing blood. Woo woo. Li Tuzi opened his mouth, and two front teeth fell out. My teeth, you bastards. Who the hell did it? Show yourselves, I'll. Li Tuzi's speech was slurred, but he tried to open his eyes and curse at Chen Hua and the others. Suddenly, everyone took a step forward, and Li Tuzi instinctively shrunk his neck quickly retreating a few steps backward. My midnight snack, my girlfriend gave me instant noodles. Brothers, forget it, I'll treat you to a midnight snack. Damn, what bad luck. Chen Hua spat fiercely, leaving a face full of grievances, and walked away. Li Tuzi and the others were on the verge of tears. Clearly, we all have swollen faces and bruises, and you guys didn't suffer a thing, yet you still put on a face as if we bullied you. You beasts. In the evening, there weren't many police officers on duty at the municipal bureau. When they heard about the situation in the criminal investigation department, they all came to see. As a result, Chen Hua opened the door with his men, and one by one, they walked out with smiles on their faces. Let's go, Xiao Wang, let's have a midnight snack. Chen Hua said to a police officer on duty. No, Captain Chen, I'm still on duty. What happened inside? The police officer asked. Nothing much, we were just dealing with some rats. Chen Hua didn't care, as they were in the right. When they reached outside the municipal bureau, Chen Hua immediately turned his head and looked at a figure hidden in the crowd. Deputy Director Su, Director Huang, Director Xia is waiting for you in Shuangyang town, Chen Hua said, putting away his joking expression and showing a serious look on his face. Let's go. Su Lin didn't waste any words and headed straight for a car. He opened a specially marked map, and Wang Chi had already left Jiangyun City and entered the territory of Donghua City. Donghua City was also one of the major cities in Haiyuan province. Su Lin had no intention of asking Director Xia to contact their brothers in Donghua City for assistance, instead, he chose to wait quietly. As long as that guy didn't show any signs of leaving the country, they would let him do as he pleased. The most important target was Shi Jianlong at the Sishan Health Center. About half an hour later, Su Lin met Xiao Weihai in Xuanyang town. At this time, he was dressed in casual clothes, with a bulletproof vest on the outside. Director Xia, Su Lin saluted and reported. You're here just in time, now you take command, Xiao Weihai immediately handed over the command to Su Lin without hesitation. Su Lin shook his head, Director Xia, I'll go and check the southwest direction first. It's better if you take command. All right. Xiao Weihai didn't refuse. Su Lin glanced at Huang Weihan and said, Old Huang, let's go. Chen Hua, you bring your team with me. After saying that, they rushed towards the route that Su Lin had determined based on the special markings of Wang Qi's movements. In just over 10 minutes, Su Lin looked at the surroundings and could almost confirm that there were no traces of vehicles or people passing through here. This is getting interesting. Su Lin sneered and said to Huang Weihan and Chen Hua, let's go back. Time passed unnoticed, and soon it was dawn. All the members of the criminal investigation department were ready to disband, but Su Lin didn't let them leave. He arrived in the town and found several local elderly people to understand the situation. Elders, are there any tunnels below here? I remember when I was young, the elders in my family said that during the war, 
they launched sneak attacks on the devils in the tunnels. These tunnels seem to have been useful for fighting the monkeys. Elders. After asking several people, an elderly person finally told him that there was indeed a tunnel below, but it was not built during the war, but rather a later missile civil defense project. Unfortunately, the project was abandoned halfway and has been in use ever since. It is said that the tunnels are interconnected and all made of reinforced concrete, very strong, and definitely a huge underground fortress. The elderly person also said that the entire Jiangyun city was built based on this underground base. Bang! After listening to the old man's words, Su Lin slammed the table suddenly, and a red line diagram appeared in his mind. He understood, finally understood. Why did those people disappear without a trace? Why did Lin Yun suddenly appear in Sishan? It was all because there was a huge underground structure in the entire Jun Yun city. Su Lin pulled out the system, on the special marking interface, a red dot was quickly moving towards Jun Yun city. Wang Qi, he's back. If Wang Qi moved, it meant that their operation had already begun. Although Su Lin was not sure what these guys were doing, it definitely wasn't anything good, with a probability of almost 90% of being harmful and unreasonable. He immediately opened another interface of special markings and quickly found another target, Shi Jianlong was also on the move. This guy's trajectory was not large, but when Su Lin zoomed in on the image, he found that he was pushing a man with gray hair into an operating room. The entire operating room was filled with some body samples. Limbs, hearts, brains, kidneys, and so on. Almost all organs of the human body were there, immersed in a liquid, still in a fresh state. Su Lin's face was even colder than these organs. Even through the special marking image, he could clearly distinguish that there were at least three people's worth of organs here. In addition, he also found three human heads, immersed in the liquid, lifelike. His eyes narrowed slightly, revealing a fierce look. The three heads belonged to two of the twelve missing people, and one was a child under ten years old whom he didn't recognize. These bastards were simply despicable to the extreme. Soon, a group of foreigners and several Asians appeared in the image. They helped the gray-haired man onto the operating table. Sure Jianlong had already turned and walked away. Although it was only a momentary image, Su Lin still clearly saw that the person lying on the operating table was none other than Wan Lida, the richest man in Jiang Yun City. Sure enough, Su Lin had already guessed that the missing population had been taken away and their organs sold, but he didn't expect Wan Lida to be one of the beneficiaries of these organs. However, he quickly figured out the cause and effect. It was probably the original intention of the construction of the Sishan Health Center to establish such an organization. The so-called top medical team from abroad, the world's top, was just a bluff. Even if their team was top-notch, it was probably only for organ transplants. Xia Bureau, prepare for action. We can call for the support of the armed police and special police. Su Lin spoke up. Xia Weihai's expression changed when he heard this. Since Su Lin said so, it meant that there was conclusive evidence and absolute confidence. So he asked, how certain are you? Su Lin replied, 50%. What? Only 50%? Huang Weihan widened his eyes and said, don't joke around, we're going after Wan Lida, isn't 50% too low? However, Xia Weihai shook his head and said, for someone like Wang Lida, 50% is already very impressive. He looked at Su Lin and asked, the missing half, is it the evidence? Upon hearing this, Su Lin thought to himself that it's no wonder he's an old fox, he guessed right away that he didn't have any evidence. And it was true, someone like Wang Lida, how could they easily leave behind any evidence? Not to mention just a few days, even if it was a few years, it might not yield any results. But, he felt that even without evidence, Wang Lida would still tell him the situation, because, he wanted to cut off any hope this guy had of staying alive. What's the use of catching someone without evidence? Huang Weihan asked. Su Lin smiled and remembered a line from a famous spy TV series he had watched in his previous life, spoken by a cannon fodder villain that he liked. Do we need evidence to catch people? Even if there's no evidence, isn't there still interrogation? These two sentences not only made Huang Weihan's face turn black, but even Xia Weihai's as well. Was he a bandit or a police officer? What he said, wasn't he ashamed? I'll contact the armed police and the special police. Xia Weihai also knew that time waits for no one, so he immediately went to contact the armed police and the special police. Just as he started to take action, the armed police and the special police quickly assembled and rushed towards Sishan. An invisible pressure appeared once again. First, the members of the armed police were directly ordered by the provincial headquarters to return. Then the captain of the special police detachment of the provincial public security department personally gave the order for all the special police in Jiangyun city to go to the provincial headquarters for a practical assessment and depart overnight. The two most important forces of the criminal investigation detachment were directly removed. 
When Xiao Weihai received the news, his face became extremely ugly. However, before he could complain, a call from the second in command of the provincial government came to his phone. The caller was the second in command of the provincial government, and he said just one sentence, What are you messing around for? Withdraw immediately. Wang Lide in Sishan is nominated by the province as the representative of private entrepreneurs to Kyoto this year. He is a representative of the people and absolutely cannot have any accidents. Otherwise, just take him out. Su Lin was sitting in a commuter bus, holding a piece of bread in his hand and taking a few bites casually. His gaze looked towards a hill in front of him, and he pulled out a special marked map from the system and glanced at it. Almost there. In less than 10 minutes, Wang Qi should pass by that place. Their operation could officially begin. Old Huang, hurry up, get ready to go. Su Lin patted Huang Weihan beside him. Upon hearing this, Huang Weihan immediately got off the bus excitedly and checked his weapons and equipment. Su Lin also checked his own police pistol, the magazine was full, and he had two spare magazines. Bulletproof vest, high-intensity flashlight, expandable baton, and so on, everything was fully equipped. Then the two of them arrived in front of a wall on the hillside and touched the freshly cleared cement wall, exerting all their strength to slowly push it aside. This place was told to Su Lin by an old man, and this wave of visits was definitely fruitful. Inside the tunnel was originally pitch black, but after the sunlight shone in, it immediately became bright. Su Lin took a look, it was about 3 meters wide and nearly 5 meters high. This place was the best hiding tool for Wang Lida. Coming in and out of the tunnel, no matter what he was transporting, ordinary people wouldn't notice. If it weren't for his special marking skills, it would probably be impossible to dig out something that had existed for decades even if they dug 3 feet into the ground. Buzz. A faint buzzing sound suddenly came to mind. Su Lin pressed his ear against the wall and listened quietly for two seconds. They're here, get ready to move. Over a dozen members of the criminal investigation team immediately entered the tunnel, and then they sealed the entrance, turning the entire tunnel back into darkness. About one kilometer away from them, a commercial vehicle was speeding. Inside the vehicle, two high school students who were tied up had a look of despair. They wanted to shout for help, but when they thought of the terrifying methods of the man driving the car, they didn't dare to make a sound. 800 meters, 500 meters, 300 meters. In the blink of an eye, the car was less than 100 meters away from Su Lin and the others. This position happened to be the entrance to the Sishan Mountain, and the tunnel ahead was less than 1. 5 meters wide, making it impossible for the car to enter. Therefore, the speeding business car began to slow down. Screech! The sound of brakes echoed as Wang Chi got out of the car, opened the back seat, and said to the two high school students, Get out! It's your fate, don't blame me! Hey, Wang Qi, why don't you say that Wang Lida deserves to die, instead of blaming others? A mocking voice sounded, and Wang Qi's body instantly tensed up. He quickly turned his head and saw a face full of ridicule. Hey, surprised? Unexpected? Outside Sishan, Xiao Weihai held the phone and quickly dialed Su Lin's number. No answer. He tried calling Huang Weihan, but still no answer. Then he laughed. I heard the order from the province, and I tried my best. But they have already taken action and I can't do anything about it. Old Xia, are you really okay? A middle-aged police officer approached, with a worried expression on his face. He was the deputy director of the city bureau, named Zheng Guixin. He had just returned from studying in the province, and as soon as he returned to the office, he rushed to Sishan in a hurry. When he heard that Xia Weihai was going to harm Wang Lida, he almost went crazy. But when he heard that Wang Lida was related to the missing people and saw the rescued Lin Yun, he gritted his teeth and followed along without saying a word. When Xia Weihai heard Zhang Wuxin's words, he grinned and said, What's the matter? It's normal for the phone not to get through during a mission. By then, I can also show them the call records. Okay, you have the final say. Zhang Wuxin nodded and said somewhat regretfully, Really couldn't get through? What a pity. I wanted to join them in the operation. Enough, old Zhang. Don't overestimate yourself. We're both 50 years old. Can't we stop competing with young people for credit? Even if you have the intention, you don't have the ability, right? So, just give it a rest. Xiao Weihai said jokingly, then made a call to the second in command of the province. What? They've already started? Xiao Weihai, what have you been eating? Just wait, the leader wants to talk to you personally. When Xiao Weihai heard the furious words from the other end, a cold smile appeared on the corner of his mouth. Then the person on the other end of the phone changed, and a low, hoarse voice sounded. Xiao Weihai, no matter what method you use, stop the operation immediately. Otherwise, I'll remove you from your position. Xiao Weihai, yes. Leader, I'll go right away. 
He immediately shouted loudly, then hung up the phone and casually handed out cigarettes to Zhang Guixin, both of them wearing sly smiles as they smoked next to the car. In the tunnel, Wang Qi looked at Su Lin with a pale face. He had wanted to resist, but Su Lin kicked his leg and broke it. Then he saw the beams of flashlights appearing from the darkness, as well as the dark muzzles, and he immediately became frightened. Su Lin, Wang Qi, I'll give you a chance. Tell me, what is Wang Lida waiting for? Wang Qi gritted his teeth, stared at Su Lin, and shouted, You'll never get a word out of me. If you have the guts, just kill me. Kill you? Don't worry, it won't be long. Su Lin sneered. Since he wouldn't confess, there was nothing more to say. He ordered Captain Zhang Gong to immediately take Wang Qi away. As for himself, along with Huang Weihan and the others, they quickly rushed towards the interior of the tunnel. After about half an hour, they reached the end of the tunnel. The entire end of the tunnel was brightly lit, connecting to a clean and tidy disinfection room. Everyone cautiously walked towards it, but as soon as they entered the disinfection room, Su Lin suddenly felt a strong sense of danger. He quickly took two steps back. Bang! Gunshots rang out, followed by the appearance of more than ten gunmen at the entrance of the disinfection room. Each person held pistols, automatic weapons, and more, directly firing at the criminal investigators. Rat-a-tat-tat. Bang. Fierce firepower kept Su Lin and his team from lifting their heads. Damn. Such intense firepower, these guys could rob a bank with it. Huang Wei angrily cursed. Su Lin leaned against the door of the disinfection room, his expression calm and composed. Ever since he started using the Gun King's time card, his mind had gained a lot of knowledge about firearms, including adjusting his mindset during combat. It could be said that at this moment, he was calmer and more composed than anyone else. He listened to the gunshots coming from the disinfection room and silently counted to three in his mind. In the next moment, he jumped up and leaped from the left side of the disinfection room to the right, firing three shots in mid-air. Bang! 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 Three gunmen fell to the ground. Congratulations, host, for killing a desperado and earning 360 points. Congratulations, host, for killing a desperado and earning 330 points. Three shots, directly earning 1,000 points. At the same time, the system also informed Su Lin of the identity of the other party, a desperado. There was no need to warn or negotiate with such people, they could be directly eliminated on the spot. Su Lin went into a rage, and Huang Wei Han and the other criminal investigators were not to be outdone. They took the opportunity to shoot at the opposite side, even if they couldn't hit, it would still create chaos. Coupled with Su Lin and Huang Wei Han, who were both skilled marksmen, they quickly took out seven of the desperados in a short period of time. Even desperados would feel fear and terror. When they realized they were at a disadvantage, the remaining five desperados quickly retreated. Su Lin led the criminal investigators and quickly launched an assault, taking less than 10 minutes to completely eliminate the group of desperados without any casualties. Charge! He changed his magazine, waved his hand, and kicked open the door of the disinfection room, revealing a white space. The interior space resembled a sterile room and a hospital. They encountered no resistance and passed through the sterile room, entering an area divided by glass partitions, which was the operating area. Su Lin squinted his eyes and ensured Jin Long's line of sight, this was the place. When Su Lin and his team turned a corner, they immediately saw a group of busy doctors and the middle-aged man lying on the operating table, already prepared for wound cleaning surgery. The foreign doctors' faces changed drastically when they saw Su Lin and his team enter with guns. But they were just doctors, not desperados, so they didn't dare to resist and all crouched down. More than 20 people were brought outside the operating room, lined up against the wall, and crouched down, covering their heads. Su Lin looked at the figure slowly sitting up on the operating table, a cold smile appearing on his lips as he walked in. Chairman Wang, nice to meet you, he grinned. Wang Lida, the chairman of the Kunder Group, controlled an empire worth nearly a hundred billion, with assets spread across various industries such as food, clothing, housing, transportation, and the internet. He was a true business tycoon. But at this moment, he was a patient struggling on the brink of death. He no longer had the power to dictate the world, nor the calm and composed demeanor. All that remained were the resentful and vengeful eyes. Deputy Chief Su, you've won, Wang Lida said weakly, leaning against the operating table. Yes, I've won, Su Lin looked at Wang Lida, activating his eye of good and evil, and then a chilling red light appeared above his head. Wang Lida, Sin Value 2504. The system's reading, the highest in history. There was no need to look at the others, just seeing this Sin Value was enough to know that this person deserved to die a thousand deaths. Su Lin's eyes were sharp as a knife as he coldly looked at Wang Lida and said, Wang Lida, 28 lives. A person like you is not worth pitying in death. Unlike the Golden Rose, 
Many of the people she killed were evil, so they didn't count towards the sin value. In terms of the number of murders, Wang Lida is not even worth mentioning in front of Jean Megue. However, Jean Megue's guilt value is only 990 points, while Wang Lida has more than 2,500 points because all the people he killed were innocent civilians. It is because of this that Su Lin became furious and couldn't help but want to twist this guy's head off. And when the accurate number was spoken from his mouth, Wang Lida's face immediately changed. It seems that Wang Qi has confessed, Wang Lida looked deeply at Su Lin and shook his head with a sigh. Well, if it were me, in the face of irrefutable evidence, I would also choose to save my own life. Even if. It means betraying my own father. What does it matter? His expression was very calm as he spoke, as if he were talking about something unrelated. After finishing speaking, he calmly looked at Su Lin, his eyes showing no ripples. Su Lin was very patient, his face cold and indifferent, staring straight at Wang Lida. After a full minute, the latter slowly spoke, Deputy Chief Su, do you believe that I established the Sishan Health and Wellness Center with the intention of benefiting society? Su Lin replied, I don't believe it. Businessmen are profit-driven, they are all people who eat others without spitting out the bones. I would rather believe in ghosts than people like you. Ha ha ha. Cough cough. Wang Lida laughed, followed by a series of coughs, until his face turned pale and he almost choked, before slowly stopping. No matter what you think, my original intention in establishing the Sishan Health and Wellness Center was indeed to give back to society. Even before, I have always been doing good deeds to give back to society, donating at least tens of millions of dollars every year, much more than what many people earn in their lifetime. But, good people don't live long. Eight years ago, I was diagnosed with early-stage liver cancer. And the best treatment method was to remove part of the organ, which would greatly damage my quality of life. At that time, I recruited a group of top medical professionals who suggested that I get a kidney transplant so that I could live a healthy life. So you thought of killing innocent people to harvest their organs and prolong your own life? Su Lin asked coldly. Wang Lida replied, it's just one person. How many people have I saved? How much contribution have I made to society? Why can't you come and save me? Just an ordinary worker, if he dies, he dies. As long as I'm alive, I can create greater wealth for society and save more people, isn't that right? Su Lin said, nonsense. Your life is a life, isn't an ordinary person's life also a life? Who said that because you have made a great contribution to society, you must exchange other people's lives for your own? Did they agree to it? If making contributions to society means that society must repay you, perhaps those who have benefited from your kindness would rather have never received anything. Because people like you are not worthy of their respect. Wang Lida said, you can't represent everyone. Su Lin replied, you're right, I can't represent everyone. But, I can represent myself, I can represent our police force in Jiang Yun City. We are committed to eradicating evil. People like you who claim to be saints are actually no different from scum, pretending to be righteous and noble, but in reality, you are full of evil deeds. Only by getting rid of people like you can society be peaceful and the people be safe. Wang Lida looked at the woman's roar, still very calm, and said, No, you can't kill me, no matter what, I won't die. Even now, there are still people who will come to save me. Su Lin's expression slightly froze at these words. Who gave this guy such confidence? Wang Lida said, Whether you believe it or not, as long as you bring me back, by tomorrow morning, I can walk out of your city bureau, and it will definitely be the bureau chief who respectfully sends me out. Su Lin narrowed his eyes and said, You're very confident? Yes. I am confident because I have enough leverage. Wang Lida casually said, As for you, perhaps starting tomorrow, you will be transferred to a less important department, or even kicked out of this team. Do you believe it? After hearing these words, Su Lin couldn't help but feel a chill. If the richest man in Jiang Yun City dared to say such things, it meant that he had his own powerful trump card, even capable of covering up the crimes he had committed. Could that hand have such power? Su Lin didn't believe it, and a hint of madness appeared in his eyes. Such a person must be eliminated, for the sake of justice. So he coldly looked at Wang Lida and asked, Chairman Wang, I'm curious, who did you sell those organs to? If you really made money from smuggling organs, then I truly look down on you. Upon hearing this, Wang Lida's eyes showed a hint of surprise. It seems that Deputy Captain Su is a smart person. Indeed, selling a few organs can only fetch so much money. To me, that amount is like a drop in the bucket, a few hundred thousand. What's the difference from the one or two dollars in your eyes? My organs have great value, but as for where they are specifically used, Deputy Captain Su doesn't need to worry about it. He had no intention of speaking further, instead casting a contemptuous glance at Su Lin and closing his eyes. From Su Lin's conversation just now, this shrewd business tycoon sensitively sensed a hint of doubt, 
and then directly concluded that Su Lin had not interrogated Wang Qi, or rather, his own son had not betrayed him. So when Wang Lida was halfway through his words, he stopped speaking. Su Lin, on the other hand, smiled faintly and gently patted the operating table where Wang Lida lay, slowly saying, I wonder how many retired leaders have laid on this operating table. With just a few words, Wang Lida's face instantly changed, and he opened his eyes wide. Is it hard to guess? Su Lin sneered and said, Sisan Health and Rehabilitation Center, where surgeries, physical examinations, and recuperation are all integrated, and many retired personnel live here, including many who held important positions. If I'm not mistaken, these people are your true trump card, right? Because each of them has a vast network of connections, even reaching the capital is not impossible. Only with this can you have such confidence. To be honest, when Su Lin thought of this answer, he felt a bit creepy. Sisan Health and Rehabilitation Center was like a huge pawn that could control everything. No wonder Wang Lida had always been smooth sailing, because the power he had gathered behind him was truly terrifying. After Su Lin exposed his trump card with a single sentence, Wang Lida was briefly shocked but quickly regained his composure. He smiled indifferently, shook his head, and said, Even if you know, what can you do? Can you arrest all those people? Don't forget, some of the disciples trained by those people have already entered the provincial government and hold important positions. Su Lin also smiled and shrugged, saying, How to deal with those people is a matter for higher-ups. My job is to bring you to justice. I've said it before, even if you arrest me, I will still come out and scathe tomorrow. Is it meaningful? It's better to release me now and let me complete the surgery. As long as I'm alive, I guarantee a lifetime of medical resources for you and your entire family, Deputy Captain Su. Deputy Captain Su, do you even know what I mean by these medical resources? Su Lin replied, I know, very well. However, I won't become a beast that disregards others' lives for my own selfish desires. Wang Lida, you've got the wrong person. Besides, you're too confident. Who said I want to arrest you? What do you mean? Wang Lida's expression suddenly changed. Su Lin slowly raised the corners of his mouth, turned around, and said to Huang Weihan behind him, Old Huang, prepare to disband the team. Chairman Wang said we can't arrest him, so we won't. Let's go, let's go, disband the team. Huang Weihan has been listening to the conversation between the two people. When he heard Su Lin's words, he immediately understood what he wanted to do. So he waved his hand directly to the crowd and said, Don't forget to take those foreigners back, as well as those doctors. By the way, have all the ground operation brothers been captured? Report, Huang Ji, we have captured all of them. This Shi Jialong still tried to run, but Chen's team shot him in both legs. Several detectives dragged Shi Jianlong, who was like a dead dog. There were two blood holes in his calves, and blood was flowing out. This kind of injury couldn't kill him in a short time. As for the medical teams hired from abroad, they didn't dare to resist at all. The detective brothers stared at them fiercely, with their guns loaded at all times. If they dared to resist or escape, they would be greeted with bullets. Under the leadership of a group of detectives, they lined up and walked outside. Wang Lida was calm at first, but as each person walked out, his face became extremely ugly. No matter how strong his city was, he couldn't withstand the torment of waiting for death. Su Lin had already noticed that Wang Lida had health problems. To be precise, this guy, who was full of evil, was experiencing organ rejection after a liver transplant, which was very dangerous. Without professional surgery and stable medication, he wouldn't last even three days, let alone 24 hours. Letting him stay here was letting him wait for death and experience the despair before dying. No, you can't leave. Deputy Su, Captain Huan, you can't leave. No, don't. Save me, please save me. Wang Lida finally shouted in panic. His eyes became frantic, no longer calm and composed. But Su Lin didn't seem to hear him at all and continued to walk outside. Huang Weihan walked beside him and asked in a low voice, Are we really leaving like this? Su Lin replied, What do you think? Huang Weihan said, I don't think it's right. We're making a mistake. Su Lin said impatiently, What's the mistake? If we don't transplant organs for this person, he won't live for a few more days. Do we have to match his organs and perform the transplant? Huang Weihan shrugged, That's true. But it's cheap for him. Su Lin said, No. This is the cruelest judgment for him. Facing the fear of death can completely break a person. I can guarantee that the torment he will experience during this time is the most terrifying. Huang Weihan said, But, you're right, we're making a mistake. So let's wait for two hours and then take him back. Su Lin sneered. As law enforcement officers, they certainly couldn't break the law. He didn't really intend to leave this guy here to die, just to torture him a bit and vent his anger. After coming out of the underground operating room, Su Lin and his team arrived on the surface. Chen Hua's third team had already controlled everyone. 
Not only the medical staff at Sishan Health Center, but also the people who were recuperating here, there were hundreds of them, and more than 90% of them had an air of arrogance. They saw Su Lin and Huang Weihan leading the team and began to accuse them. Bastards, who do you think you are? Why are you controlling us? We are not your prisoners. Huang Weihan, you have too much guts. Where is Xiao Wei Hai? Let him come and see me. Outrageous. You are too outrageous. I'm going to call the city and find out who gave you the order to treat us like this. The scolding voices kept ringing. Su Lin stepped forward, looked at the group of people in front of him, and said, I don't know how many of you have used organs from victims, but I can tell you clearly that your good days are over. Perhaps you have once worked for the welfare of the people and made contributions to society. But since the moment you accepted Wang Lida's arranged surgery, you are no different from the innocent harming Wang Lida. If you have a bit of conscience, a bit of faith, then please step forward voluntarily. Think about those innocent people, think about the organs you use, who allowed you to survive. Since you are alive, why don't you have the courage to bear your guilt? Compared to human life, what does bearing guilt amount to? For the rest of your lives, you should all seek redemption. 28 lives, who can bear the weight? Come, tell me, who can bear it? Su Lin pointed at a group of people, angrily rebuking. Many of them showed expressions of confusion, while many others had their faces changed drastically, their eyes filled with fear. There were also many people with remorse written all over their faces, lowering their heads and not daring to say another word. I am ashamed of the training from my superiors, ashamed of the people, arrest me. At this moment, a person walked out from the crowd. Huang Weihan's pupils contracted, shouting in disbelief, Secretary Luo. Luo Yucheng, who once held the position of the third in command in the province, an absolute figure of power. He also did not expect that this person would be among them. Xiao Huang, I am ashamed of the people, for the second half of my life, I will leave it to the law. Secretary Luo said, step by step, walking towards Huang Weihan, extending his hands. Su Lin nodded secretly, these people were simply afraid of death, their conscience not yet extinguished. Perhaps some of them did not know that Wan Lida kidnapped others and then killed them to harvest organs for them in exchange. But in many cases, even if they knew, they would pretend not to know. It was shameless, but it allowed them to feel justified. Su Lin directly tore off their fig leaf, and they could no longer ignore the condemnation brought by their conscience. Two hours later, Su Lin entered the underground operating room and brought out the terrified Wan Lida. The crowd regrouped and returned to the city bureau. Just as they entered, Xia Weihai hurriedly walked over, holding a phone and said, a call from the province. Su Lin took it, his voice deep, hello, Deputy Chief Su, right? I am the director of the provincial office. You must release Wang Lida to me. Otherwise, you will bear the consequences. The other party's words made Su Lin's face become extremely cold. There really were people daring to come and rescue her, simply lawless. He directly roared, I don't care who you are, get lost. Hanging up the phone, he handed the phone back to Xiao Weihai, who looked at him in confusion for a while before reacting and said, Xiao Su, you're too impulsive. By doing this, you will get yourself into endless trouble. Su Lin said, what trouble? I have people above me. You have people above you? Xiao Weihai was stunned. When did this kid have such strong connections? Su Lin smirked, took out his own phone, and dialed a number. Soon, the call connected. Hello? On the other end, a majestic voice came through. Su Lin immediately spoke, Deputy Fong, I'm being bullied, can you do something about it? Xiao Weihai heard the words, Deputy Fong and almost got excited, slapping his thigh. Right. He forgot that Su Lin was highly regarded by Deputy Fong and even left him a phone number. What he said was right, there were indeed people above him, and they were almost at the top level. Although not as high-ranking as a provincial official, coming from the capital, they were naturally one level higher than the local officials. In other words, this deputy Fong was on the same level as the old officials in Haiyuan province. Could someone like him be afraid of Wang Lida's network of connections? Definitely not. However, at this moment, deputy Fong on the other end of the phone seemed somewhat displeased after hearing Su Lin's words. This kid suddenly called him out of the blue, saying he was being bullied? You come to me when you're being bullied, Xiao Su, you disappoint me. Deputy Fong's tone was somewhat low with a hint of distance, apparently thinking that he had overestimated Su Lin. Upon hearing the words of the big shot, Su Lin almost exploded with anger and said, you're just talking without considering the consequences. I'm just a small deputy captain of the municipal bureau, and the big shots in the province always make me responsible for the consequences. This captain can't do it anymore. He started throwing a tantrum, basically meaning that if you don't get this done for me, I won't do it anymore. From the province? In the vice minister's office of the police department in Kyoto, Fong Ziyuan frowned as he held his phone. 
He asked in a deep voice, what exactly is going on? Su Lin immediately reported the case he was currently investigating to the big shot. In fact, the moment he learned about the 28 lives lost, he knew that this case had entered the ranks of major cases, and the Wang Lita group's madness could not be suppressed. But if the big shots in the province wanted to suppress it, there were still various ways to do so. So he didn't go through the province at all, but went directly to Vice Minister Fong. If Vice Minister Fong couldn't give those deceased a fair outcome, then he would rather not be a police officer. Bang! After listening to Su Lin's words, Fang Ziyuan smashed the water cup on the table into pieces and shouted angrily, Beast! Lawless, absolutely lawless! You dare to come and ask for people, tell me, who is it? Su Lin felt the anger of the big shot, his mouth curled up, and he winked at Xiao Weihai, saying, the director of the provincial office, I don't know the specific name. Alright, I got it. The big shot said and hung up the phone. But immediately he came back to his senses and said, you just handle the case, if anyone comes to you, let me know, I'll take care of it for you. Okay. Su Lin smiled happily and hung up the phone. It feels good to have someone above you, just give a heads up if there's anything, and see if those bastards dare to call me. As soon as he hung up the phone, a call came to Xiao Weihai's mobile phone. Hello? Director Chen. Xiao Weihai answered the call as soon as he saw it. What's going on? The office actually asked me, in the name of the second in command, to suspend Su Lin, and said they want to release the representative from Haiyuan province. Xiao Weihai didn't waste any words and immediately recounted the case Su Lin had just mentioned to Chen Hu. When the latter heard these words, he was extremely shocked, it was simply shocking. What a Wang Lida, tell Su Lin that whoever dares to come, report to me immediately, I will investigate right away. In one word, no matter who comes, the person cannot be released. I will report to the department right away. Chen Hu exploded in anger, but his words were interrupted by Xiao Weihai. He said, Director Chen, there's no need for that. Su Lin has already contacted Vice Minister Fong, the big shot said to let him work with peace of mind, it doesn't matter who comes. That's good. Chen Hu said, your Jiangyun city will be famous again this time. The criminal investigation brigade won't be able to escape a first class merit. Ha! Thank you, Director Chen, thank you. Xiao Weihai couldn't stop smiling. He hung up the phone and said to Su Lin, let's go, Xiao Su, let's celebrate your success, I'll treat you. Creak. Just as the two were about to enter, a car suddenly arrived at the entrance, and the sound of brakes was piercing. As soon as the car stopped, a middle-aged man in his fifties got out of the back seat, wearing a black professional suit, exuding an aura of authority. As soon as he got out, his gaze locked onto Xiao Weihai and Su Lin. On the other side of the car, a police officer got out, carrying an olive branch and two four-cornered starflowers on his shoulder, the rank of a second-level police supervisor. He was on the same level as Xiao Weihai, but the other party's background was higher than Xiao Weihai's. Seeing the person, Xiao Weihai hurriedly approached and greeted, Provincial Secretary Yang, why did you come in person? And Deputy Director Li, what wind blew you here? Although he had a smile on his face, he was actually quite nervous. He knew exactly why the other party had come. Sure enough, the next moment, Deputy Director Li coldly said, if I didn't come in person, your Jiang Yun City Bureau would probably be turned upside down, right? Xiao Wei's corner of the mouth twitched slightly, and he smiled and said, what are you talking about, Deputy Director Li? I don't understand. Stop talking nonsense, I want to know what crime Wang Lida has committed, Deputy Director Li said coldly. Xiao Wei was about to speak, but Su Lin stepped forward and said, Leader, we are still investigating this. His problem is very serious. Still investigating? Does that mean there is no evidence? Deputy Director Li's face was full of anger as he pointed at Su Lin's nose and scolded, You are the Deputy Director of the Criminal Investigation Subdivision of the Municipal Bureau, right? I am officially notifying you now. Suspend your duties and accept investigation. You haven't clarified the matter of 20 million yet, who allowed you to come out? Also, release Wang Lida immediately. Cannot release. Su Lin ignored the other party and said, We have found some evidence. Are you sure you want me to release the person? Deputy Director Li looked at the person next to him, Yang Shang, who nodded imperceptibly. He immediately turned around and said, Yes, release the person immediately. Su Lin said, Cannot release, what I say goes. Yang Sheng couldn't help it anymore and said coldly, I said, does it count? Su Lin smiled, waiting for these two sentences. He picked up his phone and dialed a number. Hello, Deputy Fong, I have something to tell you. Our second in command in Haiyuan province and Deputy Director Li from the provincial department told me that even if Wang Lida is suspected of killing 28 people, they want me to release the person. And I have been suspended. If you have anything, find Director Xia. That's it. I'm going home. 
When these words came out, Deputy Director Li and Yang Shang's minds exploded. This bastard was too ruthless, he was digging their graves. Clearly, he had already figured it out, suspected of 28 murders, and still said there was no evidence, damn it. Su Lin looked coldly at the two of them, with a cold smile on his lips, as if saying, I'm digging your graves. Yang Shang and Deputy Director Li's faces turned extremely ugly. Although they didn't know who Su Lin was calling specifically, the words Deputy Fong made them think of a terrifying existence. The people in Jiang Yun City were not afraid of them at all. There were no high-ranking officials with the surname Fong in the province. So, both of them almost simultaneously thought of one person, especially Deputy Director Li, who was originally part of the system and knew very well who that person in the ministry was. It's over. Deputy Director Li's face became paler and his lips began to tremble. Yang Sheng's face was also terrifyingly gloomy. He and Deputy Fong were at the same level, but today's matter was too big. A case involving 28 lives, it would definitely cause a huge uproar. The best outcome would be his own retirement. Thinking of the many political enemies he had built up over the years, once he fell, the days ahead would definitely not be so good. Su Lin looked at the two of them, with a faint smile on his lips. He couldn't be bothered with these two guys and turned around to walk back to the office. Gentlemen, I'm going back now. I'll probably be busy next. I'm sorry I can't entertain you. Xia Wei also straightened his back. Su Lin was really good. He was capable, and there were people protecting him from above. Their Jiang Yun City Bureau was truly taking off this time. In the following days, the Jiang Yun City Bureau directly cleaned up the entire Wang Lida group, especially those involved in the Sishan Health Center case. None of them escaped, they were all arrested. The next step was interrogation, and Su Lin did not participate. These past few days were really tiring, so he took a week off and drove the Hongqi car assigned to him by the detachment and went straight home. Just as he arrived at the familiar doorstep, he suddenly remembered that his door lock seemed to have been changed. After searching in his pocket for a while, he finally found the key. He opened the door and walked into the house. The furniture and everything else seemed untouched, but there were many women's daily necessities. His mouth twitched. He really got involved with someone. But to be fair, that woman really had nothing to complain about when it came to him. He still has two. One billion in his account, as for the twenty million, he had already handed it over to the bureau. With two. One billion, he earns millions in interest every month. Of course, he hasn't touched any of that money. He picked up his phone, wanting to call Yen Yao, but found out she was already on a call, so he didn't bother to call again. He would just give it back to her in person later. Since he had nothing to do during his break, he decided to go home and visit. It was already mid-October, he originally planned to go back on October 1st, but as a criminal investigator, they didn't have proper holidays. Once they got busy, they couldn't care about anything else. He hadn't seen his parents much in his life, so he valued family very much. He planned to buy some things and visit his parents in his hometown. Su Lin checked his salary card on his mobile banking app, and the balance was close to 30,000. In addition to the 4,000 salary he just received, there was also a portion of subsidies, which was the bonus. These days, he solved two major cases in a row, and the wanted criminals filled up the detention center, so the bonus wasn't much. Anyway, according to his own thinking, salary wasn't important. With his abilities, even if he caught criminals and received bonuses, he could still become wealthy. With money, without saying anything else, he would first buy some nourishing supplements for his parents. He drove to the supermarket, and in less than half an hour, he bought thousands of yuan worth of nutritional supplements and tea, then drove back to his hometown. Guanhua County was about 260 kilometers away from Jiang Yun City, and it took over three hours to drive on the highway. At one o'clock in the afternoon, Su Lin exited the highway and arrived in the county town. Compared to the prosperity of Jiang Yun City, it was slightly less developed here, but that was only in comparison. It was now the third decade of the 21st century, and the economy of the entire Dashia had improved a lot, and the county town had also developed. Skyscrapers stood tall, and housing prices kept rising. Su Lin's hometown was in the old city area of the county town, a house he bought 20 years ago. The name of the community was very suitable for the times, called Xingfu Li, Happiness Lane. As soon as the car entered the community, it was stopped by an old man at the entrance. Which family? The old man habitually lowered his head to look into the car, and when he saw Su Lin, he immediately grinned, revealing a mouthful of yellow teeth. Grandpa Hu, are you still in good health? Su Lin asked with a smile. Grandpa Hu lived downstairs from him, and it was said that after retiring, he voluntarily became the gatekeeper of the community. Because he used to be the head of the security department at the mechanical factory, he was very strict in management, and it wasn't easy for foreign vehicles to enter the community. 
In fact, the residents of Xingfu Li community were mostly retired employees of the county mechanical factory, so the neighbors were very familiar with each other. If something happened to any household, it would spread within half an hour. Just like when Su Lin got close to Jiang Yun City Police Academy, his parents were proud for a long time. Lin Zi is back, oh, you've become a leader? Come in, come in. Grandpa Hu smiled, his face full of wrinkles from wind and frost. Su Lin took a pack of cigarettes from the back seat and handed it to Grandpa Hu, saying, Grandpa Hu, when I was in junior high school, I stole two cigarettes from you. After you caught me, I said I would give you a pack in return. Today, I've come to fulfill that promise. Ha ha, you little rascal, did you only take two cigarettes from me? I remember, you and the two boys from the Zhao and Zhang families, used to come to my security office every day for cigarettes. Grandpa who laughed heartily, not being polite, and took them directly. They weren't good cigarettes, Su Lin bought them himself, they were just over 30 yuan a pack. Of course, he could also come into contact with some good cigarettes and alcohol on normal occasions, but he never took them. He wouldn't even smoke someone else's cigarette. In his opinion, the social obligations in Dasha often burden oneself. Others could owe him, but he would never owe anyone. Little brat, go home quickly. Grandpa Hu smiled and said. Su Lin nodded and said, Goodbye, Grandpa Hu. The car entered the residential area and arrived downstairs. Su Lin also encountered a few neighbors and immediately greeted them politely. He carried the purchased nutritional products and went up to the third floor, knocking on the door of 301. I'm here. Soon, a voice came from inside, and then the door opened. Su's mother saw her son standing at the door, first stunned, and then shouted with joy on her face, Lindsay, why did you suddenly come back? Old man, come out quickly, your son is back. The voice of surprise instantly spread throughout the small square house. Su's father got married relatively late, marrying Su Lin's mother at the age of 37. At that time, this age was definitely considered an old bachelor. But he was different from the typical old bachelor. When he was young, he made contributions to the mechanical factory, so he missed his lifelong opportunity. It was not until middle age that he met Su's mother through a blind date, and they got married because they were compatible. They didn't conceive for the first few years, and by the time they did, Su's father was already 45 years old. Now he is 66 years old, and looking at his father's white hair, Su Lin couldn't help but feel a little sad. Time slipped through his fingers, and the brilliance of life had come to an end, leaving only the white hair. You came back just in time. I need to tell you something. You police officers need to take care of it, said Su's father with seriousness on his face. This honest old man, who had been upright all his life, had an expression full of anger. 